The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. It is time to keep your appointment. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Hornet Hill, episode 147. My name is Gav. And my name is Dan. Gav, you always sound like you're about to sort of present the equestrian uh, or, or the darts or something like that when you... Yeah, it could be the darts, couldn't it? Yeah. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to the British uh, gym at uh, gymnastics. Gym? <laughs> <laughs> gymnastics darts tournament. It's wow. darts and gymnastics. Jackie Chan, the gold medal winner, as he does a backflip and throws three darts at the same time. Has he got a bullseye, ladies and gentlemen? No, he has a boo. Let's get up the next <laughs> gymnast and throw darts at the same time. Um, it's episode 147. Um, there's a couple of special things on this one, Gav. Firstly, Happy New Year! Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, Happy New Year ghouls, to everybody. non-gendered people, ghosts, goblins, aliens, and everything else. And everybody in between. Um, yes, it's our first episode of 2024. It's um, the first episode of the year. Uh, it's great. It's still a bit chilly out there, so you can still have an excuse to watch Kurt, um, Kurt Russell's The Thing. Or John Carpenter's The Thing, whichever you prefer. Did you like my little video? I did like your little video that Gav did. If anyone hasn't seen it, Gav did a little video where he spliced himself into a scene from The Thing. <laughs> so convincingly. More uh, convincingly than a lot of blue screen you see these days. Uh, well, um, I actually could have done it a little bit better. Um, I was actually, uh, just this week, downloaded like the uh, Resolve Studio, DaVinci Resolve Color, like, program the the studio version which is the full version you have like magic mask and stuff like that um so i was testing it um and what and i said to elijah i was like do you tomorrow just want to go out and i could put you in a scene of one of your favorite things like one piece you could be in there you could dress up as a pirate be in there no that sounds stupid and i was like look so i literally turned around and did it and um literally stood there did it very quickly and in half an hour i said look there you go i just put myself in my favorite movie and, oh well, that's kind of cool we still didn't do it but regardless that was the idea intention but yeah it's quite easy to do so not a green screen or nothing it's just masking masking me place me on top of the uh, actual image that's on fa- our facebook page if anybody wants to check it out <clears throat> if you can't find it ask us and we'll link you to the little link that's good fun but yeah so it's new year uh, we'll talk more about new year in a moment but also just uh <coughs> dusted off this crown oh i thought you were kissing <clears throat> me no, no, I'm dusting off the crown because it's a patron. So, first episode of the year kicks off with a patron, a uh, patron pick, and we are on our second round now. That's so funny. Um, so, the man that started it all, the man that came up with the plan, Matthew Godley, is back. Uh, he is the man responsible for us laughing Matthew until we Plenley. almost. Matthew Planley. He made us uh, almost die from laughter when we watched Hans and Gretel and the porridge donkey stealing scene um, that time around. And we did the Dracula with a big wanking werewolf in the bush. Donkey so. licking, donkey's head in the window while licking my bowl. Yeah. Wow, just, that almost killed you, didn't it? It, it just sounds like such a rude saying. Uh, so he has selected two very different films, and you'll know what they are because you've already clicked the thumbnail, but just. For the record, we will be getting gritty, down low, and our emotions will be pummeled to oblivion with a sledgehammer in the 2004 British film, Dead Man's Shoes. Oh, it's going to be an interesting conversation. A great film, though. And we are also covering the camp cult classic, try saying that three times in a row, that is the 1980 bright and glitzy color colorful shimmery and magical looking doom, 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 doom. Flash. 
Flash Gordon from 1980. Matthew Godley, you son of a gun. What have you done to us? This is brilliant. <laughs> so here's your crown. Let's just get that. On. There we go. And you are the king. The king for the episode. Uh, and we will be reading your email as we go through and your reasons was why you picked these two films and your thoughts on them. So thank you so much. And thank you to all our patrons. And we look forward to these. Uh, I've started reaching out to our patrons who are coming up next. I'm going to try and do it in the order that we did it in before. Um, so as long as everybody sort of replies, I can hopefully we can keep that moving throughout this year. But yeah, that's what we're covering this year. Yep. Uh, this episode, not this year, but like, you know, um, Gav, yes. it's new year. Have you made any New Year's resolutions? Uh, not really. Last year, my New Year's resolutions was to see friends more and go skateboarding more, and I kind of did both of them. I skated loads last year, which is good. So I could carry on trying to do that a bit. <clears throat> but this year, I haven't had much work and I've been really lazy <laughs> since the beginning. Apart from New Year's Day, when uh, Ben and John came over and we played <coughs> with Ben's very nice camera. Um, apart from that, been really lazy. Do, have you got... Like anything going on with like New Year's resolutions? Um, I to be honest with you, not really. I haven't drank for about six months now, so probably yep. intend to carry on doing that. Um, yep. And same goes for my wife, but um, I'm not really with the kids you, what, now. Are you going to stop drinking your wife? I'm going to start drinking her blood on a regular basis. Right. Um, with the kids, it's difficult to make any plans or decisions or resolutions because yeah, I might want to eat healthier, but also. I have to kind of eat on the go sometimes, so sometimes a packet of biscuits has to do the trick, really. I do the resolution stuff. It's a load of bollocks. If I've, you, I've if done you it need occasionally. To, if you need to want to do things, just fucking do them. Don't wait. Yeah. I think people see it as a good sort of breaking point, a fresh start. Yeah, for me, like, last year, like I said, I could see friends more and go skating more. That's, like, they're quite good positive things. It's not It's pushing more positive into my life. Not like, right, that's it, I'm going to stop doing it. But I guess for some people, they're like, oh, it's a good point, stop start fresh so i understand um i guess i guess i'd like to see friends more this year I, I didn't really see many people last year um i still work from home so i don't do much other than go out with the kids so it's difficult at this age really for me to socialize with people without a little monkey hanging off my shoulder going daddy 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 i need a biscuit and it's totally different for me because elijah's now to the point where he's kind of a bit like it doesn't really need to hold hands walking on the road and it's just kind of past it so I'm at point man they don't need me. are you saying so no hold my hand hold my hand to the point where it's just like oh come on give us a cuddle <laughs> so you, so enjoy it uh, because it will go yeah yeah, um, yeah I did start the year with uh, getting a tattoo though um, you did yeah, yeah sexy on my leg. tattoo evil dead leg I'm working on this big le big piece of my leg but I haven't shown it yet because it's not finished because I've got to go back and do another day on it to put the cabin in and stuff yeah I saw a little snippet a little bit of flash in the uh, video you sent me or was that something else that was something else <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well let's get into what we've been watching um and that's a good segue, actually, because uh, of a film I watched yesterday, uh, which isn't horror, but it's uh, it's very much reminded me of uh, late night Channel 4 on a Sunday evening, uh, watching European uh, uh, softcore uh, films. Okay. What, what? Uh, Saltburn, it's called. Oh, yes, yes, I've seen this, yeah. You've seen yeah, that? Alice. Well, everyone's been raving about it, and... Um, Alice had it on, and I said, I don't really want it. It's not really up my cup of tea, really. So I was prepping this episode, funny enough, while it was on. So it was on, I didn't pay too much attention to it, but um, it looked very... It, it was supposed... I, I know it's supposed to be incredibly shocking, and the bits I saw that were supposed to be shocking didn't shock me that much, but you might have a different opinion. Go for it. Tell me. Oh, oh no, it's just... Uh, uh, but I don't know, I, I kind of... In I kind of enjoyed the film as a, um, uh, I knew that the person was slowly working his way through, without trying to spoil it or anything, I suppose, work his way through people and get his own way over them. So I, I was enjoying that much for it, really. Um, it's just a strange movie, but yeah, there's lots of weird yeah, sexual things. Yeah, very strange going. sexual things, like a lot of cronenberg sexual stuff almost at times. Well, like shagging a grave. Yeah, or licking out a bath plug. But 
but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the thing was, what was interesting of it, um, and there's like full frontal male nudity, which I, I which I think is good. You I love that. You love it. In movie. I, I, well, I think it's good to have penis in film um, as much as it is anything, because, yeah. We started um, this show on the foundations of Old Man's Cock, and we stand by that. We don't stand by Old Man's Cock, so that'd be a bit weird to stand next <laughs> All right. to um, But, Poking like, the this, this shot... <laughs> laughing at it. Shot of uh, uh, the man having sex with a grave is just the... the, the, the picture and it was uh in the square format the picture was um which was really strange choice but so straight away i was just like oh okay this is cinema so everyone's watched this movie and i was like oh, okay we're watching cinema as you'd kind of class it as but that shot there it was pouring with rain the camera's just locked off for ages and then just slowly starts doing it filled behind him i was like it's like european European cinema. Um, it looked amazing you know? and it was really well yeah, produced. Yeah, I appreciated it for that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I really did. It's a strange movie. I don't um, want to offend anybody that really enjoyed it, though, but for me, it was just another one of these Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, my God, it's incredibly shocking. Um, but only if you haven't watched a lot of terrible horror movies like we have, <laughs> I suppose. <clears throat> well, it's a different thing. It's a, it's a, it's a cool kind of... A, um, who's the dude that would do all the uh, the movies? The British director, not Michael Winner. Um, God did the one with Oliver Reed as the uh, the Devils. I can't remember what it's called now. Anyway, I, that was a film I watched and had lots of. I never expected you to come things. on and say that you'd watch that. You surprise me. You surprise me every time. I know. I wasn't getting it, and they just kind of just. Uh, so I went, oh, I was going to watch that. But funny enough, another thing, I, I take taken out a subscription with Paramount Plus. Um, and that, now it's like my fourth bloody subscription, but not I'm going to keep it. It's more of a present for my parents because they were watching um, Yellowstone with Kevin oh, yeah. Costner. And it went off their regular telly, so they wanted to like watch it. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll do this. And my mum's like, I'll go halves with you. I'm like, all right, okay. So we're going halves on the subscription Amazing. a month. <laughs> Bless her. Because she, cause she can watch it. But I started watching a programme on there with uh, Sam Elliott. Oh, your favourite. Really good. He's old now. Really good. Called 1883. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've heard of this. It's supposed to be really good. Really good. Um, so I'm kind of like binging that, which is like a Western show. And I, I said to my mum, <laughs> she's like, oh, your father will love it. Um, and Sam Elliott's just leading a group of uh, immigrants uh, with their coaches across America or whatever. Just, and it just got uh, grounded up a group of cowboys to go with him um, to do it. And it's just that, getting across the water, uh, uh, smallpox, uh um, uh, Native Americans with bow and arrows and shit, and you know all that. We sort of love stuff. a western, though we do, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When well, they done, well. done and it just looks, it looks, it looks fantastic for TV. It's the you know as it is now, those are TV, but it looks like you're watching a, a full on epic because west old westerns like once upon a time in the west are generally big epic westerns. And I love that stuff. We really get absorbed in it. And, and this is fantastic. So I definitely recommend. And also on there, they've got all the new Beavis and Bite episodes. Amazing. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So me and Sarah are going to binge some uh, Beavis and Bite this weekend. Nice one. Well, talking of binging, um, I have, uh, in speaking with our buddy RJ McCready, who recently said, oh, Dan, have you watched the new Creep Show? And I had seen the new Creep Show. But... He said, oh, season three is now on Prime, blah, blah, blah. And I said, do you know what? I don't really remember a creep show. I'm going to go back and watch it. So I've been binging my way through season one. I'm about to start season two. Um, if anyone's got Prime, go check it out. It's on Shudder, actually, I believe. Um, it's so much fun and so there's so many nods. I don't think I was paying attention the first time around I watched it when it first came out. Because it came out in 2019. Well, season four is about to drop on Prime on Shudder as well. So... They're great, and they've got a lot of famous people, and not just from horror, but from all over, and lots of nods to other horror films and TV shows. So, have you watched any of the new Creep Show? Uh, uh, I remember a werewolf. Yeah, the werewolf Nazis with um, Jeffrey Coombs, isn't that one? I 
I think that's the only one I've seen. Uh, I know Joe Lynch is directing. Yeah, they're, they're really good, and because it's two episode, two each episode is two stories. So really, if you wanted to, you could just watch a twenty five minute story and then turn it off, and then go back and watch the next one whenever you want. So it's really worth watching, um, and you you chew through it so quickly. I love I love a good binge. I also binged another show which I've been raving about to everyone that will listen, which I was very late to the boat on. Um, and this kind of ties into your other podcast as well. And I watched Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix um, with Graham Hancock, the famous journalist who basically is trying to prove that man is much, much older than we thought and that pyramids and lots of other structures are basically signs of a, a, a different type of human that lived much, much longer ago than we thought. Most of them were wiped yeah. out during a great flood, which all ancient cultures and religions speak of. And that's not a coincidence. I've always believed that. And then a few of those survivors left over, whether they're from Atlantis or wherever you might want to think, they then taught, because all of a sudden mankind learned farming in like 500 years and learned civilization and building and agriculture and, you know, architecture all within very short spaces and all very similar architectures and religions they learned to go uh, to fly to the moon within like 50 years or something well don't know about that you know but <laughs> but if you haven't seen it it got, almost got banned on us netflix because um the scientific world is so stubborn and won't accept anything other than it's it's both though that and, and religion as well. as well. They won't accept anything other than the well. The story is the story. They're, that's it. They're, they're, yeah. Well, scientists have got their credentials, and they don't want to say, "Oh shit, yeah. I'm wrong," because it makes them look foolish. And then for fighting against that, on the other side, has got religious elements where you're not going to do that. You're not going to look further into that, or you're not going to do that, or that goes against what the Bible says. So that can't be true. It was it <laughs> so was labelled as the most dangerous show on well, Netflix when it first dropped. Because, because then, because if it, if you then disproved like the Bible and said, well, "See, this doesn't actually work," because this was before the Bible, then then all of a sudden that puts that in that whole idea logical thing into jeopardy. But I would highly recommend it. I believe it's about six, maybe eight episodes. But I think it's only six episodes, and they're only about forty minutes each. Uh, it's called Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix, and it's fascinating if you're into ancient aliens or just finding out a bit more about where we came from and and you know why things like pyramids and the great flood and all of these other things feature so heavily in so many different cultures and religions from around the world it's really really good show i know you recently segue covered uh pyramids on the high strangers podcast yeah. with sarah didn't you which ties yeah, into that and it's that. one of my favorite yeah. things it's so fascinating Oh yeah, absolutely, and, and uh, the discoveries I keep finding of stuff with technology, like with technology which didn't have, like clogs and like workings which were should not have been working before they'd invented yeah, the wheel. Even things like there was types but, of paper they were writing on that, and that paper was so from it, that like region. No. I don't know why they'd be like. There's absolutely no way we were the first ever on Nonsense. this planet really yeah and i'm not we won't be the last we'll probably be wiped out and i'm not sitting here saying it was aliens or you know we were bred from aliens but i'm saying that there's definitely more than just we're like a we're like in a pinball machine in space in universe the chance of us that something hitting us is quite possible we're lucky it hasn't happened again (laughs) really really good um show but the other one i watched another movie i watched at the tail end of christmas because i was still watching christmas films up until about a week ago um because i had a few on my list was one that you'd recommended and that was mel gibson fat man oh yeah yeah jesus dude that was a good film yeah if anyone hasn't seen it it's a bit like violent night but also not um it's much more serious than that yeah i was gonna try and get sarah to watch it but i don't think she's really having it i don't she, like we didn't bother. Uh, but i, really I thought mel gibson was really really good in it um the story was really good and it's kind of like john wick almost the story wasn't it a little bit as well you had a hit, hit man out yeah. to get him and stuff uh, very and i just wasn't expecting it to be that good and obviously i was going to watch it anyway 
but when you told me you'd enjoyed it and said it really threw you because you weren't expecting the way that the story went so i highly recommend it if anybody hasn't seen it fat man yeah, I did yeah, watch it's, it this year. Oh, it's great it. really really good anything else yeah. you wanted to talk about i've got one other one but um no uh <clears throat> i've been watching stuff but you know yeah. Yeah. I, the only other one I would mention is one back from 2017, which I watched the other night, and it started a little bit of a chatter on the Facebook page, which is The Evil Within uh, from 2017. Sorry. Yeah. I haven't actually seen it, but I knew the Yeah, sorry, Michael Berryman as uh, like a spooky villain in it that lives in a mirror, but um, really interesting film. I kind of was very... When it finished... I didn't love it, but also I didn't hate it. There was like this, it's a really visually striking at times and it got really daring film. It goes places that are very odd. Um, and some of it is a bit, a bit like some of the acting is a bit rubbish, but there's a really interesting backstory behind it, which is that the, the director Andrew Getty actually died before they'd finished editing it and, and nailing it down really he, he, they had been there for all the, it's his only film yeah well. and he actually died from i think it was methamphetamine overdose he was a terrible drug addict um and yeah it's just got a lot of interesting things with the backstory to it so i think that's what slightly elevates it it does sometimes uh, we've discussed this before sometimes a, a film can be okay on paper but when you actually find out the stuff that goes on behind the scenes it does slightly elevate it sometimes and make you realize the yeah. literal blood sweat and tears sometimes it goes into making stuff or the sad stories yeah. that go on behind them you know all the good things so i would recommend it um it was on prime it's on prime to watch for free with free v so you got adverts but if you wanted to check it out it's just over an hour and a half long and it's definitely worth your time maybe one you and sarah could cozy up to and watch together there's a really interesting scene with a human zipper in it which is all i'll say but yeah um, that, that was the last one i wanted to mention really um oh, oh right. so shall we one go? other thing what is the it? other thing that's special about this episode what's so special about this episode? well we've given bill murray the we've they given love. him some Brit because it's been he's had a busy year with us it's been Christmas he likes to take off the beginning of January he has a hangover for about but he's three also weeks. finishing up uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire isn't he so we've got to let him go and do the press run and all that for that so he's been busy with his proton pack busting ghosts and all that business he, he, well he told me he wasn't going to talk at the press well, jump that doesn't surprise me he doesn't talk when he's on our show Just, uh, just not oh. talk I know <clears throat> it, I remember specifically when we first met him in the bar when he was wasted and said hey guys I come on your show and we're like uh, he's not going to come on a show it's amazing we met Bill Murray and he, obviously we couldn't share the photos because he said don't share the photos so <laughs> me and you are only saying this now so obviously don't everybody listening don't tell don't Bill say about Bill and well just you know and he said we could come on a show and we went yeah, and I was like, the next day, wow, I can't believe we met Bill Murray. Here's the, those pictures of us. Look at that. Oh, my God. Look at us all, like, comparing penises. How weird that was for a drunken That's evening. Mental. But he said, don't share the pictures. I didn't expect him then to be on every episode for the past few just years. Just to introduce it and like, close what? up Word of the Strange. It's just one of those Bill Murray things. It's so weird. He says he come do it, and you're like, yeah, okay. And then he just won't go. And it's like, you can leave if you want now. You but know. we've given him the episode off, and that means... He's probably at the window trying to get well, that in. that means that I have had to go to my shed and get the tarpaulin pulled off of the old time machine because we are going to be donning our special silver suits and getting in the time machine because it time team is back, baby. Uh, time team back again. We are going to be covering the year 2023 as we, 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 we always do in the January of, um, you know, every, every episode that starts off the year. So yes, that's the other thing I wanted to mention is not only is it a patron pick, not only is it the first episode of the year, but also it's a time team episode. Jamie she will. She loves that old uh, Statue of Liberty sticking out the ground. Don't spoil it. Sorry. <laughs> well, look, let's take a break. Yeah. Let's Go make, make your some coffee. coffees because we are about to talk about Dead Man's Shoes. So here's a trailer for that, for fuck's sake. People who commit evils in God's eyes are 
not beyond redemption. I'm going to have to go back to town in a bit, mate, to sort some business out. I don't want to go, Richard. You don't have to. What did you do to him? What did you do? I don't want to get him down the house. Sorry, I'm off. See <laughs> in a bit, yeah? See in a bit. Hey, we'll find you! It's Anthony's brother, isn't it? It's Anthony's brother. You know the lads had this ridiculous idea that... Yeah, it was me. You make me very nervous, Richard. Well, you should be. If I were you, I'd get in that car and I'd get out of here, man. Because I'd hit you all. <laughs> you get to me first. He ain't going away, fellas. He's got to get it done. God will forgive them. He'll forgive them and allow them into heaven. I can't live with that. Sorry, you know who I am? The devil. Okay, so that was the trailer for Dead Man's Shoes. So before Gav gives us the synopsis, the official IMDb synopsis and details, I'll just read out the first part of Matthews, our king, our patron for the day, his email. So he starts with, Oh, to be king for a day once again. Here are my two picks for you guys to cover. Two very different films for two very different moods. I hope you enjoy. So Dead Man's Shoes, he says... I saw this film when it first came out after renting it from my local library for the week. I would have been 19 and a student around 2005. I went into this one completely blind and it blew me away. I watched it three times that week before taking it back. I did not watch it again for many, many years until last year when I was 37 and it really hit differently. As a teenager, I saw it as a film of pure revenge, and I think I processed it at a very basic level. But then as a proper adult, it really stirred up a load of emotions in me. From the very opening credit scene, where there are home movie clips of the two brothers laughing, embracing life and being innocent children, I could feel tears welling up in my eyes. Here we have two brothers not having a care in the world, and me, the viewer, knows exactly what's going to happen to both of them. At this point, I had an urge to turn the film off, in a weird sense, that if I did, the death and destruction that comes later in the film will somehow not happen, and these two brothers would grow up to be very happy adults. I did, however, not turn it off, and my emotions were all over the place from start to finish. I was laughing at the comedy of the se- some of the scenes, metaphorically punching the air when Paddy was getting revenge, and then overcome with intense sadness by the closing scenes. It's really one tense, very dark film that I honestly do think is healthy to what do not think is healthy to watch too often. The bullying scenes of Toby Cabell are particularly difficult to stomach. The standout for me, obviously, is Paddy Constantine. He is just a normal bloke of average build, but he manages to be utterly terrifying. The confrontations he has in the pub, and he's written in brackets, you, you can't. And in the street where Sun with Sonny are very intimidating. He also has a vulnerability to at the end, which really breaks your heart. Without Paddy, I do not think this film would hit the mark. The only thing I think lets this film down a little bit are the villains. They seem to be a mishmash of different actors with no real linking thread between them other than being generally unpleasant people. And also that bloody car they drive in. I'm not sure what the producers are going for with that choice. <laughs> um, finally, Toby Kebble looks a bit like that bloke from Jackass. I know he can't help it, the poor sod, but I could not unsee it. I think he means Steve-O. He looks a little bit like Steve-O. But he says, overall, this film has a big thumbs up, but you have to be in the right, right frame of mind to watch it. Thank you, Matthew. All right. Well, Gav, would you like to give us the official synopsis for this before we get involved? Dead Man's Shoes, 2004, uh, race 18, a nice tidy 90 minutes. Tidy. A disaffected soldier returns to his hometown to get even with the thugs who brutalised his immensely challenged brother years ago. Very, very quick to the point. No faking. Cooking MCs, MCs like, like a, a pound, pound of bacon. bacon. Uh, that's a very quick snopshish there. It, uh, it does say to the point. Where were you when you watched this first time? Uh, I was with 
a friend of mine who I'm no longer friends with, but it was a guy Fuck that I was, yeah, it was a guy that I've told you about him before. Um, I'm doubt if he listens to the show, but it's a guy that I was trying to write a script with many, many years ago, like 20, 25 years ago, whenever, you know, not long after this would have come out, I expect. I remember you telling me before. Yeah, and he, in some way, knew the director through someone, I can't remember how now, or had spoken to him several times. And I, 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 I saw it a little bit with him, but I wasn't paying too much attention. Then about a year later, a friend of mine said, Dan, have you ever seen this? And I said, oh, I think I have, yeah, but I don't remember it. He said, oh, my God, it's one of the best films I've ever seen. Check it out. I'm going to wear this out for Halloween this year, as in the gas mask and coat. And he did. My friend did wear that. So I watched it and suddenly thought, fucking hell, that was good. And I seem to go back and watch this. So not, I don't always feel like I'm, I need to. As Matthew said, it isn't one that is an easy watch. But I do end up going back and watching this every three or four years just because I still want to see, does it still hit in the ways that it does? And I think it actually gets better with every watch. And as you get older, and whether you become a parent or you lose people around you, it just hits more and more differently each time. To the point that this most recent watch I, uh, for this review, fucking just not me for six, man. Jesus. But yeah, what about you? Where, where, where was your first viewing of this? Uh, around a buddy's house. Uh, we used to all go around there, watch films, rent out a movie, watch it. Uh, we didn't know what it was, put it on. Um, not John? No, nope. my um, friend Phil. He lives in Berlin now. Shout out, Phil. Ah. Good tag. Good tag. Um yeah, uh, and you used to just go around there and watch movies, and we watched it, and it's just like, man, that's fucking amazing. You know, it's one of those films. As soon as you watch it, you're like, this is incredible. It's, it's kind of, uh, I would put it to equivalent of your first time watching, say, Pulp Fiction. The uh, mm. same sort of route as that, but British. Um, because And for me then, because it's funny watching it now with the, the, like, the two jokers with their poor mags, those guys... And, yeah, um, yeah. and watching that now and, and then watching it when I first watched it because I, I think if you're in England, not everyone but most people know people like these guys, these fucking dickheads yep and um, I don't know, it's a very powerful film, watching it again it was amazing the other night, I know this film so well though in my head um, it's, quite a, it's quite an expensive one to pick up uh, on DVD uh, even second hand you're looking at about 15 quid um, you know, uh, it's, I was it's very feels, lucky. It enough feels to, underrated. I was lucky enough to pick it up a fifty p in a charity shop. Yeah, uh, I, don't, oh, I don't ever see it. I've four or five years ago, I don't have it in my collection. And if I'd see it, I'd have it in my collection. And I, I'm like, I'm like going through like charity shops all the time and car boot sales. I'm always looking for like. I'm always jealous. You always get the best bloody bargains. You always find these random. Yeah, I got a good stack the other day. Didn't I have three quid? Yeah. Mm. Uh, Expendables 4 it's like has that only just come out and I got it for 50p I was like alright yeah what does that say <laughs> uh, funny enough though because I thought I remember saying to you this could be awful and I thought this is a terrible bit after I finished I went didn't mind it <laughs> just, just didn't mind it too much yeah some of it was, some of it's pointless Megan Fox is pointless and 50 cents is pointless but anyway this film here is point i was not gonna say pointless what would it be it has a point oh yeah it does it has a very sharp point yes uh you messaged me in the week said uh film gods i think possibly and it's it's one of those things even if you just look at the poster like the silhouette of him with the dead over the top of him and it's just i don't know even the poster's good the sake about this i didn't realize that paddy wrote it yeah um it had has this kind of John J. Rambo tip with him going? If you imagine this is actually My John J. Rambo. With Rambo references. He, well, this is, he's gone back to his mate's place. He died of cancer. Oh, okay, Ooh. fine. He's now gone into town, and this is what he's gone. Uh, instead, though, like he's. Do you know what I mean? He found out he had a brother. Was like, yeah, uh, because he wears a green army coat. He's from the army, but also, um, it also reminded me at times of Taxi Driver. And again, that co the coat. Yeah. And he's been compared to 
the British Robert De Niro in the past, Paddy Constantine. Yeah. In fact, the Empire Review specifically said, when this film first came out, it said he may be the British De Niro, um, quiet, but also terrifying at the same time, you know? Um, yeah. And the, the interesting thing about this, and we'll get into the director in just a moment, is the budget. Do, do you, I don't know if you know the budget. I've got it in front of me, but I don't know if you know what the budget was for this. No, what was it? Just under 700,000 pounds yeah and it didn't make much it only made two hundred and thirty thousand dollars worldwide so it, it was technically a flop a failure but this will be one that shane meadows is happy to have made because him and his buddy paddy wrote it and obviously shane directed it it's very personal to them it's grown over the years it's grown a cult status on dvd and um streaming it's very underrated I don't think I think us having it on this show will open it up to people who've not seen it. I'm hoping like uh, some of our foreign listeners from over the seas, or whatever, not based in England um, or surrounding areas, will, won't know it and will go, "Oh, what's this movie?" Because Garrett, you, know, you have to watch this. It's gonna be frustrating if you haven't seen it because we're gonna spoil it, which is a sh- bloody shame. And you should watch it. Yeah, you should watch it, and I'll say that now. Stop like, now stop if you now haven't seen it, because it. Honestly, it's such there are a great scenes, film. There are scenes in this that are sad, there are scenes in this that are shocking, and there are scenes in this that really, um, if you're a gore hound, you're going to get some great gory moments, but we don't... You want to have that surprise the first time you watch it, because some of the fucking shit that he does is just out there, man. Um, the soundtrack is phenomenal as well. Um, you know, and we'll talk about the property and about the story it's in a moment. The soundtrack, yeah, some really good hip hop in this. I played one of those tracks recently in a pub. I came on, um, I was like, oh, I was playing this the other week. But also some beautiful folk music um, and some sort of very sort of. Just some airy sort of British drumming, you know, it's just wonderful. Everything about it. And I, I said this to you when we messaged and I'm stung, stand by what I said. Every now and again, a film comes along that we review. And I always, and we have a saying on our show, if anyone hasn't heard it before, and we say this is a film God film. And what we mean by that is the gods aligned, the planets aligned, and everything about this is pretty damn near perfect um whether it's the act the actors of the two main actors in it or or the way it's shot the the location is beautiful the acting is incredible the score and the soundtrack and the the plot twists it's just it's kind of like it, it's like it walks into a room quietly knowing that it's a fucking badass and it doesn't have to sort of shout about it. It's not like a Michael Bay film that walks into the room going, yeah, everybody, look at me. This one walks into the room and sits down in the corner, just like Paddy Constantine. It's very quiet and understated. I was going to say, it's the same as him at the beginning. He's walking into the town. It's so quiet and understated. It's directed by Shane Meadows, prolific British director, um, who makes very hard-hitting British almost very realistic drama um he, he's done stuff like once upon a time in the midlands um obviously dead Man. She's, this is england is the one that a lot of people know him for uh this is england 88 he's done some tv shows and he's done a lot of he was heavily involved with um uh brit pop or brit rock as well in the 90s so you can really feel this has got a personal film for him. It's it's shot in places he would have grown up and around people that he would have grown up with. And well, I think I, Paddy's the same. Well, I do wonder uh, where Paddy's story comes from. I'm presuming that he knows something of this in this essence. Maybe not, obviously, is an actual uh, killer. Well, but... Shane Meadows is that part of it. Why? Um, because he, he knew someone... Um, that was very badly bullied, who was disabled um, when he was younger. And I think I think they died as well. Um, so he, he thought just, about he that just story. Wrote a revenge story, yeah. Yeah, and so he added to that. Uh, and also, this film wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Paddy Constantine's dad, Martin, who was dying in real life, dying, and said to Paddy. I'd really, really love it if you and Shane could do something together again because you guys work well together. So he kind of, his last wish really was that they would make this film. That's why it's dedicated 
to Martin Constantine. Um, so there's a lot of factors that just make this just brilliant, really. Yeah, and Paddy's amazing as the lead. Uh, you like him. Like you're, you're totally with him as a protagonist. Um, spoiler territory. <clears throat> I'm going to go into sports territory. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the end, uh, he kind of sort of says, though, doesn't... Uh, not very PC in 2023 or 2024 um, he doesn't really didn't really care about his brother mm. yeah but then I just I think he's saying whatever he can to get this over with and done and dusted there's a I lot to unpack with cause that because that, that is already <clears throat> at that point there you're like oh okay and, and then you're like that, I, that could actually be a thing so it's really hard to know I guess you interpret it any which way you want well, he does consider himself to be a monster, doesn't he? Um, and he, he knows he's a soldier, so he knows a monster when he sees one, and he knows he's become a monster, and maybe he always was a monster, but either way, he wants it done and dusted and, uh, and over. Yeah, it's um, it's hard-hitting, and, and maybe even a trigger warning for everybody, who, who, even if you've seen this or not, there's some t- terrible scenes of torture that get progressively worse throughout this. Um, but it's it's also... There is an element of I do have fun with this movie because you kind of I love getting on board when there's an anti-hero, you know, and whether that's someone like the Punisher of or course, Freddy Krueger. We love John Wick and the, the yeah, exactly. Thrillers, you know, uh, and we love that just how horrible and nasty the baddies are in this. And I agree with Matthew in that they are a bit cartoonish, but I think that makes it more fun to see them killed off one by one. Yeah, because I um, I want to make a film like this. I, I even said to I even said to Ben and Mark recently. I said, "Do you guys want to come in, come on with me, and we just make a revenge thriller? We just quickly get the camera, chuck it on your shoulder, and we go." <laughs> I would I, honestly. I think a lot of people saw this, including that guy that I, you know, introduced me to this, and he was a, a, a wannabe filmmaker, and he, I believe he's doing a few bits and bobs now. But this is the sort of film that you saw made, and you thought, "Well, I could do that," hmm. but but. But they went and did it, and they did it fucking spectacularly. But that's the thing, though. Oh, I could do that. And, like, yeah, I actually could do that. Um, and, you know, still might do. But you're never, ever going to make it as good as this. <laughs> no, the, it's phenomenal. It's a film God's movie. Cool, yeah. So let's get into this story, I guess, really. Unless there's anything else you wanted to add before we get into it. No, nah, because I, I will get into it as we talk. I, I do have one... Th- my i have a problem with it which i'll mention at the end one flaw in plot hole a plot hole but i'll mention that at the very end all right oh okay um okay cool so yes as matthew said you know we open up uh with a montage of baby and family videos really heartwarming um it really gets you sentimental straight away and lovely music playing over the top. And these are two brothers, as Matthew said, two brothers that look like they're you know, just having a great time. We all had that in the summer, growing up with our friends, our family, playing in the sun. I wasn't lucky enough to have a, my family to have a camcorder or anything like that, but these guys do. And yeah, it, it just looks very realistic. It probably is real, I would say. Um, it's probably from one of the uh, the writers family home movies. Yeah, 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 of course. It's easier to do that than just um, uh, uh, try and get all this other stuff. Um, funny enough, <laughs> I, I can say this now, I don't think anyone listened, in the beginning of Preternatural, there's a little bit of, a little tiddly bit of some baby footage at a, a, a party. I'm not sure who that is. It was on the, it was, it was on someone's skate video footage from their family and I was like, oh, I'm having that. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> copyright no i'm joking um well no no no, no. It's, uh, it, it, don't worry about it if the if the family from that must be for like 20 30 years ago that footage if the family find preaching actual find that and go that's us and they can see that i will be literally like yeah like i don't know i'll give you i don't know my love <laughs> give me my love wow i'll be amazed you know Anyway. Well, well, spliced into this lovely opening, we then see shots of Richard and his brother Anthony walking it, across the countryside. It is obviously brilliant coming in as a reviewer and also knowing the end. So, 
do we spoil it now and explain the ending? Well, why not? Because we've already given a it, warning. I think it's good because we've had to do this before with some films which uh, play out like this because we then like to get into it because... <laughs> As well, it, it'll be it'll be a more in depth discussion if we talk about it now. Yeah, of course. Rather than like skirt around it, uh, so let's do it. So go on. What's the spoiler, Gav? Richard it, and Anthony are walking across the countryside, but but Anthony's not actually there. He's actually he actually uh, hung himself and then committed suicide from all the bullying. So spoiler, we spoiled the film for you. We fucking warned you. And all the acid that they gave him. <laughs> and but yeah, and um. Every interaction with uh, Anthony there in and talking to Richard and back and forth is in his head. Yeah, and that was one that. of the that was one of the reasons why this blew people away. I think because you didn't really get it a was, lot of didn't get sixth a, sense type spoilers yeah, back you then. Didn't kind of get that sort of twist, especially like this. All of a sudden, you go, "What the fuck?" Because you didn't even need this twist. That's the thing. This film. Oh no, you didn't know. Is a revenge film. If it didn't have this twist. And he just got away with it, and they both walked out the town and walked out again like they walked in right at the end. You'd be like, that's fucking great. But then all or of a sudden, it, the icing on the cake is they throw this twist in, you're like, oh shit. Or even if he sort of said to Anthony, you know, here's a bag of money that I've procured from all of these guys, you know, go and find Auntie Jane or whatever, you know. But you're right, we didn't, we didn't even need this. But so essentially, this is not a ghost story. But it's a mental health, it's a story of very poor mental health, PTSD. We don't know what he's seen in the war. Um, but again, it takes us back to Rambo, you know. It t- well, so it's, it's it, yeah, if he's just like a fucking, he used to be a, a, a caretaker. And it's all, what did he see at the school? It wouldn't have any impact. Always, they're always, <laughs> they're always, <laughs> there was, there was some of the diarrhea shit and puke <laughs> all mixed together and round my mop head. And, um, but like, oh, the fact that it's always the soldier, they're always like ex soldiers, they always are, you know, because it, it is, and but it's true though, if you're gonna all of a sudden, because the, the mind wasn't designed for such uh, uh trauma. Well, I guess we're missing that. the main point here, which is if he wasn't a soldier, he wouldn't be A, as scary and confident as he is, and B, he wouldn't no. be able to take people out and be able to break in and out of houses. Yeah, he is. And they never really talk about what, what he was in, whether he was in the Marines or the SAS, but he was in a very high level of the the, the British military, yeah. where you he basically was a John Rambo, but the, a British John Rambo, you know, it's, could it's fuck guys s- up. Similar to like the guest as well. Oh yeah, great! Another great film. Um, so yeah, we don't really know, but yeah, the fact that he is though—he's a killing machine. And he so is, we need we need to bear yeah. in mind on that bombshell that you've just dropped. We need to bear in mind then that every interaction with Anthony, or any time we see Anthony, no one else will interact with him or speak with him, and it's actually all taking place. Whether he's speaking out loud to to his you know his dead brother or his imaginary brother, but when he hears him respond, that's all in his mind. And this is powering him forward more and more and more. And it's it makes it darker because sometimes Anthony says to him, I don't want to go back into town. I'm a bit scared. I want to stay here today. And he goes, that's all right. You can stay here today. So sometimes he doesn't take his brother with him, his, his imaginary brother with him, because it's too dark even for his imaginary brother to go and see the things he's going to go and do. And it just makes this film elevates it slightly more again it's just layer upon layer oh i'm doing that thing with my hand gav where if no one can see this but i'm making like a a weird sign with my hand when i'm excited about something and i do this little it's like a, looks like a duck that's mouth's been sellotaped together yeah that's what it is uh, <clears throat> uh yeah um so they these two basically start off the beginning going into they're walking into somewhere. They're not walking actually into the town, but it is uh, uh, symbolised that way visually. Then walking into the areas, basically, then walking into the story, and they decide to make camp uh, a farm. Uh, yeah, like an old barn, isn't like it? Like an old, farm. old farm out there, sort of just out on the near town. Um, and they're just sitting there chatting away, and you just get this bit with their, uh what's he called? Anthony, his brother. No, Richard. Richard. I uh, get this point where Richard says to Anthony, um, uh, God will forgive them um, and let them into heaven. And I can't live with that. Like, yeah. And you like, think, what? Like, okay, what's this all about then? And 
We should also mention that Anthony, just to add to uh, salt in the wound of him being bullied to death, he is also very mentally challenged as well. Um, and so that adds to the bullying as well. He's not very mentally challenged. He's he's slightly mentally challenged. I wouldn't say he's very mentally challenged at all. He can... He, he, uh, he can talk fairly coherently and in a certain sense and understand what's going on well it's a subtle it's a subtle um, disability but it's there you know and and it makes him an easy target for these bullies even more so because he's not able to defend himself he's very gullible he's essentially got the the child a child's mind i do i do wonder why he lives with this these guys though uh, why is he even friends with them? Well, I, I think he just sort of falls into it, doesn't he? Because well, that's what I'm presuming that he's kind of stuck there because he can't sort of think for himself. Well, but it just, they, it, that's the only bit of it. I'm a bit, I was a bit like, eh, I don't understand well, you why do, he's there. You do see how that comes about, don't you? Because at one point that guy shouts to him out the window, "Can you go and grab me some milk?" And then over many many months, he's going around there more and more, running more and more errands for them until oh, he, he starts. Well, it feels like he almost lives there, though. He's got a room and he's sleeping in, but maybe he's just crashing. There. That's not his room. That's just a room that they right. throw him throw him in with the lady. Um, I think and it's he just... doesn't mind having sex. Well, again, he's got the. It's a child's mind in a man's body. He doesn't really know. They all start cheering when that happens, and he thinks, "Great, they all like me." So I guess yeah. that was a good thing. It's a obviously though. They're still like taking a, 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 a you know, taking the piss out of him. Yeah. Well, you're right. They have this conversation. They talk about God won't forgive, etc. And we get to day one. And I like it in the movies where they do this, day one, day two, day three. It's like a countdown to something's going to happen. It doesn't always work, but I like it in this one. Um, so day one, and... it's it's. I love this bit, though. The scene opens up in a... For basically, for Dan and I, if you're not out, yeah, out of the UK and stuff, we're going to... All these sort of locations and things, we're going to know very, very well. We grew up in the 80s and all sorts, all these sort of working men's clubs and all sorts. I'm sure, Dan, you went to working men's clubs when you were a kid and shit. I've been to them recently. Um, my yeah. in-laws um, live not far from one, and we would go to one because the beer is cheap. Yeah. There's free free pool table. Yeah, I grew up it, in one pretty much. And it's just a bunch, for anyone who doesn't know, it's a bunch of sort of 60 plus men sipping beer. Um, and you sometimes get the younger rabble in there, don't you? Um, like it is in this one. Yeah, totally. Um, uh, yeah, it's like a, more of a club where it's older fellas that get together, but you do get youngers. But it's open in the daytime, we've got nowhere to go. It's, it's kind of it's the same as a pub, but a little bit more homely, is the only way I could put it. It's a little bit more friendly than the pub, I, I mm, guess. I feel. Sometimes. <laughs> kind of. I don't know. Yeah, it depends. I've seen all sorts happen. Um, but they're just sitting at the corner of the table with uh, uh, an, uh, a couple of other people and like an old fella there. And I can't... There's something I love in films. It's like when the police turn up and the safety blanket's there. I love in movies, situations like this, where I know that guy's fucking intense and gnarly and anything can kick off. But he's not got focus. I've had this in real life situations where I've been sitting somewhere and been like, oh man, that drunk guy's drunk and he is fucking intense. And if he, if he clocks your eyes and he don't like you, he's fucking, you know, it's going to be a situation. Yeah. But he, but they go and clock the focus on someone else. You're like, yes, yes. And you're home free. Yeah, wicked. It was like this. And the old guy now is a bit like, oh, I quite like it because I know you're safe. And, and he looks up because it, it's almost like he's on the same table on the same sizing. Because when he goes, this guy comes in his drug dealer and goes down to the pool table. Right, like, mate, he doing? Gets his money and stuff. And he looks over to uh, Paddy's table. And uh, Richard said to him, no. Uh, Richard? No, the other one. Anthony. One? Anthony has said to Richard, that's one, mate. That's one there. And so he, Richard, uh, oh, I'm just going to say Paddy. Paddy's just fucking staring at this dude. And Paddy has a stare on you, which you do not want to, because uh, that basically has fury and rage behind it. And you don't want to get messed with that. I've had people look at me like that. And I don't, it's not a nice thing. And he looks over to him and this guy around the pool table is like looking and he looks back and in case he looks back and it, it, the best thing about this film is it's so extremely realistic everything that happens in this film is extremely realistic even the murders happen they feel real happen. don't they it works well, realistic it, it could happen it's not like chainsaw through the head it's everything's quite realistic 
and yeah. this bit here is extremely realistic where and so he kind of just keeps looking back at him and uh, he's he knows he's not like a hard bad guy but he's looking kind of cool he's the local drug dealer well yeah he's the local but drug dealer everybody to, knows Sonny yeah. he's got to do this thing that's a local town but he's like who's this guy and he goes up to him and says you hey, right, mate what's up yeah and he's and then just Paddy's like you you cunt that's, and it's well yeah he, he sort of it. says he, so this is Herbie who's one of the, the main henchmen uh, Sonny is the main drug dealer uh, and then Herbie's one of his little cronies, yeah. And, and he clocks him a few times, and he's trying to act hard in front of his mates. And he thinks that guy is literally, if his eyes had laser beams coming out of them, I wouldn't be surprised. And he says he does does a casual, half hard man thing where he says, "You know what, mate?" He goes, "Yeah." And he goes, "It's just you haven't stopped looking at me since I came in. Anything I can help you with? What are you looking at?" And then he just explodes, doesn't he, Gav? You, you couldn't. And he says, you can barely understand what he's saying, but it's you do understand what he's saying. and intense. And, and the guy is just taken aback. But I, that's why I like the old guy next to him is just looking at him going, oh, fucking hell, he, you're up for real, aren't you? And the old guy knows, oh, I'm all right. That's what I like. We get some flashbacks now. So any flashbacks to Anthony's backstory and how he falls in with this lot, they're all in black and white. And they all have really great music set to them as well so i've already described yeah, how he kind of yeah um but, so, but also some like other kind yeah, of some folk as well um but so we already get the uh, intro of like how he accidentally did some errands for them and then got invited in so essentially and we will describe some of these things in more detail but eventually it gets worse and worse and worse first of all they they make him smoke weed then potentially smoke crack i think and then they give him acid and booze and then they force him to have sex then they try and force him to suck another guy's penis and it just gets worse and worse and worse for, for this poor old Anthony but this is all broken up into these little vignettes these little black and white we're, we're, we're talk about them as we get them. yeah we'll, we'll talk about them as we go through the other thing to mention as well which is equally heartbreaking even especially if Richard didn't think much of his brother is that his brother absolutely idolizes his big brother richard who was in the army the way he talks about him there's one scene where he's going you were always the best at football weren't you richard no one else could beat you you'd always score the goals oh yeah you're the best oh, and there's one one bit which she says everybody wanted you to hug them didn't they richard and he goes yeah not you though and he goes and anthony just says well, I didn't need to ask, did I? But also, what that's implying is I'm dead, so I can't ask you for a hug. So it's just so loaded, every scene in this, man. So the relationship between these two, that isn't even a real relationship, is phenomenally done. Mm. You know, they only brought in Toby Kebble in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and he's very... He shot, all his, he shot yeah. all his scenes in about a week, I think. Yeah, he's very good. Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. <laughs> Um, so this drug dealer walks out the uh, place and just just goes back to this uh, upstairs. It's sort of like a snooker hall type place where it's it's again a sort of place that I know very it's well. A, it's a poor lock, lock stock, isn't it? A poor man's lock stock. They, they think they're big gangsters, but they're not really. Unfortunately, it's like many towns nowadays in England. Uh, there seems to be a lot more of them now, where there's a lot of sort of, sort of you kind of boarded up places. Your places are really run down now. Um, and uh, yeah, they're upstairs. It's like basically the guys who are giving him drugs and stuff. So it's it's local gangsters, I guess, hanging out. They're listening to some decent nineties hip hop though. Yeah, yeah, totally. Are. I think it's Red Man. It might be Red Man they're listening to. I'm not sure, but um, I was digging it. But yeah, Herbie walks in. Um, and he, and he, he gives money over for what he's just picked up because we've just seen what he's doing. So we understand he's a street. Uh, a dealer and then yeah. we've got the other dealer up there who's getting the bigger stuff in obviously oh you all know listeners you all know how drug dealing works i'm sure <laughs> and they're all out there playing cards we meet sunny he's the main guy who's an ex-boxer played by gary stretch he's an ex-boxer now i was uh, wondering if he was going to say to them like um what happened but he's too cool for that and doesn't but he does tell obviously the porno brothers well he doesn't think about it too much does he um because it was a one-off thing and, that, and that's kind of it but when he comes out of the club yeah but he's also he also has to keep a slight level of hardness about but him the, re the reason he tells the porno brothers is because the second part yeah, happens of, now. of course but he does so he, still have to keep uh to a certain level to these other guys and because they would say to him why what why didn't you fucking do something about it and then, then he looks shows weakness 
So he comes out of the club where he's just met his boss, Sonny, and they've done hundred money and drugs over it. As he comes back out, who's waiting for him at the around the corner in the alleyway? Fucking Paddy not, Constantine. Not around the corner in the alleyway. At the bottom of the stairs where the door is. Literally just says, says "All right, mate." Right straight, right, right in his up face. to him, saying, "I'm so sorry about earlier." And it was. I don't really... know what came over me. I was so rude of me. I'm so sorry about that. And it's obviously would take you off guard completely because first of all you're intimidated you don't know who this is you know everybody in town who's this guy today and it's going to intimidate you then all of a sudden it's even more so it's a bit like what's his game what's going on it's good it's going to throw you off he shakes his hand he says i'm richard i'm so sorry what was your name i didn't catch it and he goes i'm herbie and he goes no what's your real name because that, that is my name herbie and he it's, goes oh again herbie i'm so sorry about that it's so funny the way he does that so i reckon that um this script was uh, uh not locked in i reckon that it was there certainly if paddy's starring in it and he wrote it he can ab lib shit oh and- gav this film is like 60 percent ad-libbed that's yeah. that's what I'm going to say because uh, the, the trivia it says you know there was mo- most of the scenes that involved the henchmen were ad libbed, yeah. which yeah. is why some of it the acting is a little ropey at times. I, I, no, but, I'd say it makes it so much more realistic. But that's why it feels more realistic. You're right. That's why. It, 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 don't think of it as acting. Think of it as ad libbing because yeah. it is. It's, uh, it's it's kind of like how I like uh, making found footage films and things. Um, I love this kind of loose loose like you've got a script locked in but really it's just beats yeah get from a to b make yeah. sure the story's told well herbie leaves this weird scene now where this guy's approached him for the second yeah, time as he leaves he runs off around the corner <laughs> he, get, he gets to the end of the alley and he wait likes until it. you're around the corner that is showing weakness fuck you know well he gets back to his mate's house but paddy uh, but paddy's character richard would have been laughing so he definitely would have smirked if he saw him run around the corner this next scene really reminds me of our humour, you and I, because we've got Soz and Tuff, two of the other henchmen now. No, and they're... Actually, no I think that that's actually a, 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 diss, a diss to both you and I. I know people like this where you're just like, fuck, or it's, it's almost... I've been in like the van, the work van with these guys, and it's just like, oh my God, your jokes are just so bad. Stop it, but, like, but... stop now. Not, not every word has to be a joke. But they're, yeah. what they're doing is, these two, Everything. Well, just before Herbie comes in, they've got a couple of porno mags each, and they are literally just reading, like, like story they, headlines they look, to each other. They're characters in a Ricky Gervais show. Or they remind me of, like, um, uh, I don't know, lots of shows, like Space. They could be in lots of British shows, do you know what I mean? But they're reading these porno headlines to each other. So they're sort of, they've got a magazine each, and one of them will say to the other one, I let five men rim me in one night. And the other one will go, oh, did you? Yeah. Me. And that's their joke, I, I like though. four cucks up me at once. Do you? Yeah. All right. And, and they're just reading these headlines. The thing, Hank, the thing is, though, that these guys, what you say, they're... T- 29, 28, 29, 30, 31. Yeah, they're too old for doing this shit, aren't they? They're too old for be sitting there of an <laughs> afternoon in the week. I know, it's a sunny afternoon. In the week, well. <laughs> both sitting there looking at porn mags each. Get What's strange. going on with you guys? At what point did you go, should we have a read of some porn? Yeah, let's do that. Like, this is really weird, guys. Why don't you go and get a job or something? <laughs> Well, Herbie, Herbie arrives, and he says, all right, lads, lads, skin up. Come on, get, get a spliff on the go. Get a joint on the go. Listen, I want to tell you something that happened today. And I, what I like about this movie is almost like you feel like you're the fucking fly on the wall CCTV footage each time. Straight away, I'm just like, because I love the way it's done this film. Straight away, you can follow it so much. You're like, is he going to exaggerate? Because I know people like this. Is he going to exaggerate the story and make him sound really hard? And he does a little bit, but does still he, keep Yeah, he makes him sound slightly less wimpy. And it just comes across so realistic again as well, yeah. Yeah, but he says to them what happened, and he says, then he's found me again, and he's come up to me and said, sorry. <clears throat> and they were like, what? That's fucking weird. Do you know him? And he's like, I've been racking my brains, racking my brains all the way here. Honestly, racking my brains. And I do think I know who it is. And they're like, well, who is it? And he goes, it's Richard. And they go, Richard? Yeah. Anthony's brother, Richard. As soon as they say this... As soon as they say the word Anthony, everybody's face. Everybody's face. As a viewer, first time round, you don't know what's happening because you don't know this of, yeah, you're just kind of just being introduced to these characters. Um, And then it goes cut straight into footage of uh, him getting wasted, uh, Anthony, with with all of these guys we've been introduced to. 
Yeah, so I put black and the, white. I put here a flashback the physical abuse stance. So they make him do drugs, um, they force him, they literally hold him down and make him do bongs. Um, he's coughing, he doesn't really want to do it, but then he's stoned and he's laughing, and they're all taking the piss. They're really all like gathered around him, all of these guys. And this is where it starts, really. It starts you know, and we keep coming back, and it gets worse. You know. Uh, so we caught to where we cut back now to Richard and Anthony. You know, Anthony's you, like, I don't want to go, Richard. Well, they're sat at the barn, and he says, um, "What do you think of the town, then, Richard?" And Richard says, "Well, it's still a shithole. It hasn't changed." But I have got to go back in a minute to sort some business out, right, Anthony? And this is where he says, "I don't want to go, Richard." He said, that's okay. You it's, don't have to go this time. Thing was, though, as soon as he said that this time around, I was like, because I haven't seen this for probably 20 years. As soon as he said that this time around, I was just like, yes, this is what, as soon as he says kicking business? time. No, yeah. not that. It's just when he says, I don't want to... I don't want to go to town. He goes, no, you can stay here. It's like, no, it's, leave the, it's like leaving the kids at home. No, oh, I'm going to town. It's this. You know that what's going to happen is, like, oh, shit, it's gas mask time. It's the elephant at the window. So we cut back to drug party. And we've got uh, Herbie. We've oh, got uh, these- Soz and Tough. And they're all snorting coats, smoking weed, drinking vodka and any you, other you cheap know, drink they can. You know, the porn videotape, because this is back in the day, obviously, it's going to be videotape. So I watch this on videotape. You know, the porn videotape would have come on and then one of them would have been like, are you jerking off over there, you dirty bastard? Yeah. It would be all and that do, sort of stuff. They do this thing where they try and get, he's like, oh, I've got a new type of coke. Um, see if you can guess where it's from. And, he, and one of the guys sniffs it and he goes, oh, I'm not sure. That's an unusual one. And he goes, let me give you a clue. It's Italian. And then eventually he tells him he's actually just snorted Parmesan cheese. <laughs> So these are the sort of jokes that they're playing on each other. I missed that. Yeah, he says, it's fucking Parmesan. He said, why you fucking bat, you dirty bastard. Can't believe you did that to me. (laughs) But he just laughs at it and then goes, right, get the real coke out. Come on, let's get on all this drugs. And they're just like getting on it. They're such fucking losers. Yeah, Herbie says, I've got to go, guys, anyway. Look, I'm having a good party, but I've got to go and see Sonny again. So... I'll see you guys tomorrow or something. Oh, see you later. I, this, when I first watched this, me and all my mates were all just sort of sitting there watching it. And it's just like, oh, that's just like the visions, uh, not the, the not the visions, the visuals of the dude with the gas mask there. And he literally walks around the corner and we're we're like on the, that side looking with him. Like, what the fuck? Well, let's describe it then. So we're in a block of flats. and So he heads out of the flat and heads down to the, the, the door that leads you out onto the car park. And as he gets to that door, what does he see then, Gav? Please describe what he sees on the other side of that door. Basically, it's just uh, a dude just standing there. Oh, we don't know it's a dude. It's a figure just standing there with a really pale, round gas mask with two big old eyes and a real long, pointed, squared off, uh, plugs rounded but squared off nose that comes down, kind of like a Star Wars figure almost type sort of thing. It's really And old. he's got his green army jacket it's on as well. It's a bizarre gas mask. It's, it's really weird looking and a green jacket completely done up um and, and bear, bear in mind though that herbie's also been smoking drinking and snorting for the last couple of hours so he's a little bit skewy anyway doesn't he have something with him like a, a weapon uh yes he has got something hasn't he because he he bangs on the glass says come here you i oh, know he just points he doesn't say anything he just points yeah, to looking, him yeah yeah and, and beckons him out i'm looking at the picture now, and that, now this this word this outfit now is definitely inspiration from Sh- Shane Meadows and Paddy would have definitely have watched a gritty 80s slasher, you know, because it really reminds me of some of those video uh, nasty uh, slashes. I'm, I'm looking at a, a, a prowler uh, or something like that. I'm looking at a black and white photograph of him standing in a, a corridor with the axe like he's just walking along. It must be someone just taking a photograph. It looks fucking scary as shit. It's all grainy and shit. It's also a little bit like um, Bloody Valentine, the, the minor from that as well. So, yeah, because yeah, you can't see the features, like you say, Gab. It's just these big round eyes. But obviously, Herbie shits himself. He runs back upstairs and he says to the guys, "There's, there's someone out there, a fucking elephant or something out there. There's a, you got to come with me. You got to come with is, me." I love this bit. The, An thing, elephant. the thing is, they they all been smoking bongs, doing coke. They're drunk. He comes up the first thing because he, he turns, jumps into the room and they're jumping around, singing and dancing, doing really <laughs> stupid fucking stuff. And they're like, what are you talking about, mate? A fucking elephant. And they're pissed off that they're kind of ruining his ho- their high. 
So they all run out. He says, they're, come with me. They're so annoyed that they've got to go out. But they're also good friends enough that they all go out to fight whatever this elephant thing is, you know, which sounds insane. So they all go out, and there's no one out there, of course. He's gone. And they go, what are we going to do? I don't know. Fucking weird. Uh, let's go back up. All right. Well, they go back up to the flat. And it's been completely ransacked. Did you? I can't remember. I, I saw what the meaning of that. What is the meaning of that word? So he's written chain smoking on the wall. C H E Y N E. Chain. Sorry, chain stoking. So chain stoking is the pattern of breathing um, that you have as you start passing away. So in hospital, when your breathing changes to a certain pattern, um, it's called chain stoking. So it means you're definitely on your way out, sadly. Um, so he's written that on the wall, which basically means you guys are on your way out. They don't understand it. They just see the writing on the wall. They see their uh, flat, their apartment has been completely trashed. Then it strikes them, oh, shit, where is Sonny's drugs? Well, what do you mean? Where You left them on the table. Yeah. No, you took them with you. They're not with me. They must have fallen down the back of the couch. And they start tearing the flat apart. And they realise they are fucked because I don't know how much it was. Probably a few hundred pounds worth. But this guy, Sonny, isn't a nice guy. And they have lost all of his drugs. And they're going to have to explain it to him. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty much fucked, basically. And, uh, and, uh, and he's just like, I'm not going home. I'm staying here. And he won't he won't leave the uh, first drug dealer so in the morning though well we also see now that gas mask is spying on one of the other guys oh, uh, yeah that, yeah and he's got a hammer he's got a hammer which so is he's just like it's brutal uh, yeah so he breaks into this guy's house and he's asleep on the couch isn't he passed out yeah and you think, is he going to smash his head in? They're all such fucking wasters, all these guys, though, aren't they? All, but each one of them's a fucking loser. But he doesn't smash his head in with a hammer while they're sleeping on the couch, these two. This is this is Gypsy, <sighs> Gypsy John and Big Owl, this is. So what he does is, instead, he pulls out a can of spray paint. And even that doesn't wake them up, because they're so wasted. And that's all we see. We're so, going to find out what he did to them in a moment. <laughs> we're, we're back with, with the first three dealers, the the, the 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 pawn brothers and the fucking dealer. And all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door, and it's these other well, hang two. on. What? It's not just the knock at the door. It's 7.30 a.m., it says on the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock hip, it. hip hop blaring. And what are they driving? A Citroen Dolly. Well, no, it's not just yet. They've had those, the other two have just turned up at their flat saying, what the fuck have you done to us? Uh, no, that's in a moment. They, they go round to Sonny's, first of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 because you've got the other two come along. It's all five of them go, don't they? Oh, no, you're right. Absolute okay, fine. So, so, so the, the hip hop Citroen, the hip hop. So at seven thirty in the morning, you've yeah. got three of them crammed into this Citroen Dolly, and Which, they're all rap, rapping know, away. Have a look what the car is. It's a pathetic it's a, car. Ridiculous. But the, apparently, they borrowed it from a friend of theirs, and that's how they saved money. And they thought it just added to the craziness of these. Oh, no, it, just, it, it just makes them more losers. Yeah, because they've and got a really they, silly they turn car. Up at the, they turn up the, and you can tell this guy's like the the leader. He's like the one all in black, leather jacket, black slicked hair. He's, he's like something big. out of EastEnders. Yeah, he, he's like kind of that sort of assertive type guy. He's a dominant man, you know. And if we know who, who he is, we've sort of seen him a little bit earlier when he was taking the collecting the money up above the snuggle. Anyway, turn up, they knock at the door, and this gag was done in Trailer Park Boys as well, which is really good because Julian had it done to him and, and then no one told him for a long well, they, time. They hear from, from their side, so they're banging on the door. Bear in mind, it's 7.30 in the morning. They're so having to wake yeah, up. The camera, the big, we're, on that, we're on the side of those guys waiting for the door to open. <laughs> he's going, oh, the fuck's knocking oh, at my door this time in the morning. Door. So he opens the door and he's going to be really fucking pissed off. Opens up the door and I've got a picture of it on open here. He's got... He's got eye, uh, mascara all over his face, eyeshadow all he's, up his face. He's got rosy, big rosy red cheeks. He's like got a clown. big, thick red clown lipstick, and he's got blue mascara underneath his eyebrows. He looks ridiculous. But he uh, doesn't know this. So he's like, <laughs> who the fuck is that? And they he's don't say the anything going, what initially. What the fuck do you want? Because they're like, oh, oh because they're, they're the thing. The, the, this plays out this is like your film god's here this plays out on so many levels how great because they're 
first thing is we don't know like we're so worried our worry and concern about losing that money over towers fact that he's got clown makeup on yeah they're thinking is this just what he does in the privacy of his own yeah, home it, let's it, not say anything that's yet why it's so good and they, they um, don't say anything but then and this is where they miss the trick but because it, in trailer park boys they do this and they get to a point where Julian looks in the rear view mirror of his car and says what the, why didn't you fucking guys tell me I had this on my face we don't see that and it's I think such it, a miss oh no I think it plays better in this though ah. because because we get a little bit more where he keeps saying to Herbie was it you that knocked on my door he goes it wasn't me it wasn't me Sonny it wasn't me and he's like who fucking was it? He goes, it wasn't me, Sonny. And they're still scared At of him. At the beginning, they still haven't said about his makeup. He doesn't know. And who. then the next scene is the three of them are sat on the sofa waiting for Sonny to come back downstairs. And he's wiping his face. And they go, you still got a little bit, just a little bit. That, that's it. You got it now. So we, I like that and, we haven't seen that they've okay, told yeah, him. Okay, yeah, all right. And then they're and, sort and, of... And there's... it just adds this comedy. Like for anyone that's seen The League of Gentlemen, it's that type of weird dark humor like that it's just very strange oh it's great humor it's not even that dark that's some cra that's cracking humor that is it's good but the thing is though we know now that they've had the discussion and said to him but we didn't see it the drugs have gone blah, blah, blah. so he comes back in and says right explain to me again and this is our info dump to see that again for the audience well just before that again just before he comes back in the room they're reading a porn mag and they're reading out so what does that mean does that mean what does al fresco mean i like it al fresco does it mean up the ar i think it means up the arse yeah it means up the arse so you've got them still they're looking at porn mags waiting for sunny to come back they in the room definitely don't have girlfriends <laughs> definitely not not that they don't pay for um no little side scene we see richard showing um anthony Look, this is what I've taken from them. That's mushrooms. That's acid. You know, I've got all these different drugs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix them all in a big bag. I'm going to send them all to space on a one-way ticket. And there's no coming back from this this spaceship trip, is there? Anthony, Anthony's going. No, no way, Richard. No. So he's mixing all these, all of these mushrooms and acid and weed and coke and everything into a very big bag, and he just pours it all into one bag. So we see him doing that. Um, I used to say to him, they're going to go space and they ain't coming back and this all sort of stuff. So what the fuck? Um, so cut back to Sonny and they're discussing what is going on. Sonny's obviously extremely pissed off. He doesn't believe he? him, obviously. Well, but I'm not surprised. He has got his he face says... painted, though. So someone has broken into his house and done that, which does give him a slight get out of joke. Well, he says, he says... Herbie, come with me. So he takes Herbie into the hallway and he says, tell me what the fuck's going on then. He goes, oh, okay, I saw this elephant man the, last night. And in the other room, it cuts back and the other guy's going, oh, I told him not to mention the fucking elephant. Why is he telling him about the elephant? That's going to wind him up even more. Because, <laughs> you know, the last thing you want to do is tell this guy, I saw like an elephant-faced man last night and then he ransacked off flat. Um but he tells him it, and Sonny actually starts to believe him a bit. You know, he's like, well, then, tell me more. Then he does say, like, you know, we think it could be Anthony's brother. And then it, then it goes to him again. But this is one point here where the film gods definitely are not shining. Fucking get rid of the accordion in this soundtrack. It's so annoying. Like, oh, I know what you mean. It's so that one depressing. Bit. Please get rid of the accordion. You could easily put some strings, or piano would have worked very well. Not an accordion. Yeah, I get, I get that. Actually, it's that's a good show. Actually, go. Yeah. Awful. Well, we get another flashback now because again, more people have been told about Anthony. I don't think Anthony's at any brother. point an accordion's welcome in any film. Mm, you're probably right. Just like bagpipes. To, if any audience uh audience listeners if um uh you any of you can prove me wrong please do with examples of really great accordion music in films <laughs> there's literally no way anyone's going to be able to prove that i guarantee it well um we get another flashback now where sunny then calls um he calls anthony a retard obviously not a nice word and we get more he's now psychologically bullying him telling him he's thick he's stupid this is this is the main guy uh, uh just with hit anthony in the room and in the, in the kitchen this is where it's you can see where humanity could be the most horrible it can because he's not doing this for 
attention for other people to look good in them. He's doing this for his own gratitude. He's really drunk as and well. And he's trying to get him to suck his dick. And if he doesn't, he's going to smack him up. Yeah, well, he, he sla- slaps him about a couple of times. He goes, I've got a game to play with you. Um, the, ch- the game is you either suck my dick, well, and if you surprised. don't suck my dick, then the mystery prize is you suck my dick. And then he says, you know why your brother went to the army? To get away from his retarded brother. That's why. And he's really, he's really saying all this with gritted teeth. And poor old Anthony, having the mind of a child, is really just sort of thinking, is this true? Is this what happened? Like, what, what, what's all this you're telling me? Then he punches him and knocks him out, doesn't he? Yeah, then throws the a, 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 a saucepan of water over him and a saucepan at him. And it's just pure bullying that's horrible bullying this. It's just, it's, it's, I know this sort of stuff as well. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if bullies is, is as bad as this, but I know of this sort of, you know, it's just where it's pure. Well, pure this is why psychological bullying can be as and this is both but it can be as bad as a physical as well and, and in this yeah. case poor anthony's getting both um meanwhile this is flip, good though flip flip the door flip I was gonna it. Say, exactly absolutely what, because richard finds an axe and he says oh look at that anthony oh it's a bit blunt don't go mucking around with that though it's a bit you could still hurt yourself on that so he's still look, sort of looking out for his brother but he's found a fucking big axe which I'm sure he can sharpen up because he's a, a man of the army. Looking out for his brother is not actually there. Yes. Yeah. So uh, more the gang carry on discussing what's going on, and all of a sudden, two other Gi- dicks turn up. Gi- Gypsy John and B- Big Al turn up. The guys who uh, the last time you saw them, a can of spray paint was being shaken, and they assume that Soz, Tough, and Herbie have pranked them because one of them's had his head sprayed uh, purple or something, and the other one's had big uh, uh what a knob or something sprayed on his the back of his he's like it's cost me 200 pounds this suit and you've written knob on the back of it and they're like whoa whoa it wasn't me it wasn't me because sonny's there and he says guys calm down it wasn't them same things happened to me they start discussing richard then so he's some kind of a commando man okay oh my god right he knows some shit and they realize that actually this guy can get in and out of their houses without them detecting him he's managed to do all this shit to them what else could he do this might be quite serious now at this point especially with what we're learning through flashbacks that they did to anthony yeah. um and the next thing he says is where's the girl we need to get the girl what was her name we need to speak to her and we need to make sure that she doesn't tell anybody anything as well so there was a girl involved at some point as well, which we'll see in a moment, uh, which is the next flashback, which is where they find out that Anthony is a virgin and they essentially force a girl to go upstairs while he's asleep in the bed and get it on with him. Um, basically raping him, I, I guess you could say, because he, he kind of went with it a bit towards the end. But again, like it's just really abusive and incredibly humiliating because they all come upstairs and watch the last four, few seconds of it from the outside of the door and then when it's all done and dusted as in when he's shot his load they all come in the room going yeah you're a man now woo, 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 woo. and then they give him drinks and more spliffs and more drugs i, I think i think um when i was younger watching it <clears throat> it was just like the fact that they just said to this girl Go and have sex, but then that gives you more of a backstory for her because you're like, so she just has sex with any of them all the time, and she's and it's and then it goes to like why, she, like Anthony, why is she hanging out with them, and then it goes further into the psychological that she's got no one else, and that gives them the gives, she's scared you know to I mean? not, but she's also scared to not hang out with them because he does say to her, if you don't, he, he threatens her. I can't remember how, but yeah. he says to her, They're if you don't go in there and do it, her, yeah. Um. So they all we cut back to present day, and I absolutely love this fucking scene. Now, probably one of the best scenes with Paddy in it, which is um, they're all driving along. Five well, of them. They do go. Did you say? Did you say very quickly they visited her, that lady? Uh, that hasn't come up yet. That comes up in a moment. Uh, they're on their way to visit her, all rammed, crammed in a car together, and as they're driving along, Richard. No, they did. They do see her first before. Uh, okay, that's. But I've got the, slightly later in my notes. I'm talking about the bit where they where they Richard go get, around to the girl's house that they just been shown who had sex with her. They go oh, show her now, right. and they and they and they knock on the door and stuff, and they treat her like shit, and they well, play no, with her kids a bit. That's that's her mum. 
So they ask they ask where she is, and her mum says that she's not. I don't know where she is, and she and they beat they almost beat her up. The the girl's mum. No, that's her now. Is that actually her? That's is it? her. Yeah. Oh wow, I thought that was her mum. They've got her outside in the headlock where they're playing around with her kids. No, that's her now. Oh, it's horrible. So and I wonder if that's even Sunny's kid. Do you know? I don't know. No, because she um, she's no because yeah no I don't actually don't show who she's with yeah. Sorry, you are right. Um, but yeah, on the way back from there, then this they're driving along. This and they're, so, feeling, they're, they're feeling good because they've just beaten up a girl, pretty much. Yeah, they're, they're, they're twats. And they basically know that this dude's after them. So they're like, all of a sudden, they're just going along the road. And he's just... And we're... This is great, though. He's standing there, hands in pockets, no problem. We're with the camera, st- standing next to him. And the car comes on, and they're like, oh, hey, look! And they slam... Well, hard to he, say slam the he brakes He says to on. Anthony... Go and stand on the corner over there. Yeah, and, and make the brother go off in the foreground, uh, the background. And in the foreground it is uh, Richard standing there. And I love this, though, because this is the point where you get, like, the certain points in movies where it's good matchups, team-ups, things like that. This is like, Paddy is a force, to be reckoned This with. is like a Western now, isn't it? And this is the other guy who's, like, the one which we've established is the cool leather guy, he's the big deal, he's the one who, he's, like, the hard guy, he's the leader. So he has to, this is why this movie works so well on so many levels. He has to show his dominance in front of everyone in the car that he's the fucking man. He also knows that this guy is not mucking around. And he has to go up to him and just kind of, I love the fact he stands there face to face first of all, but then to make it easier, go stands at the side, like facing the road with him. Yeah. And I actually thought that was quite good. And I was just loving like the, the dominance between the both. Who's got the power and who hasn't? It's well, he comes, so he comes up to Paddy and he says, oh yeah, you're rich. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, uh, did you come in my eyes here? And he goes, yeah, that was me. And he goes, oh. And he suddenly thinks, fuck, I've got to change tactics here. Because he straight away admitted he did it. So yeah. he says, do you, uh, do you like painting up men to look like women? And he doesn't really answer that. Oh. And then he and then he says um, to him, what, what, what do you want? And he goes, don't you worry about it. And he says, where are you staying? Are you staying inside? And he goes, no, I'm up at whatever the name of the farm is. Why? Are you going to come and see me? And he says, yeah, we, might, well, might, we might do. Might just do, yeah. And he goes, ooh, yeah, he does like a big fake shiver. Ooh, like scared, yeah. And then he goes, you don't seem very scared or intimidated. And Richard holds out his hand and he goes, no, I'm fucking not. See, see my hand there? And then he points to the palm of his hand and he goes, that's you lot, right there in the palm of my fucking hand. And I can fucking end you anytime I want, yeah? I'm going to hit you all. And he goes, oh, it sounds like a threat to me. He goes, it's not a threat. It's far from fucking threats. Mm, mm. I can slice your fucking neck so in your sleep. What he says is, uh, I'm going to hit you all. Not threaten you, mate. Beyond words. Yeah, that's I what he watched says, over words, you man. when you slept. I was that close to slicing your neck. You're there, mate. So get in that car and fuck off. Just like that. And, and the others are like, watching. Oh. The others can't hear. They can just see them. Sort the, of. They're, they're, he cuts them and they're like, what's he saying? Is he, 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 he going to punch him? What's he going on? You know? And then when he starts coming back to the car, they're all going, why is he coming back? He's not done anything. What's the what? What's going on? And you know and then, when he's walking back, he's just like, oh, God. Because he gets to the car and he's basically like, we're going to have to fucking do him. Yeah, well, he gets back in the car and they go for a team a, like a team meeting i put there a gang meeting and they they basically say look he means business this is serious and they go what can we do he's not going to stop and sonny says i think the only thing we can do is drive out to that farm um one of us lure him out of the barn and we'll just do him and they go what do you mean do him and he goes we'll shoot him well he goes i'll take a pop you know i'll take a shot yeah i'll take a pop at him and he goes what do you mean take a pop he goes we'll shoot him I've got a shotgun. Now, I love this bit because, okay, that guy is saying that, the main guy. <clears throat> has he been around that? Has he killed someone? Absolutely not. I don't know. I, don't, I think but, he might have done. No, I'm going to say definitely not, but he's probably known people who have, and it's been talked about, and it doesn't kind of freak him too much. Yeah, he's been I around a lot of violence. the Stoner Porno Brothers... In no way in their in their mind ever did they wake up this morning as they're stoners as they are, <clears throat> just thinking that they're going to have to be involved in someone being killed. 
Now, just yeah, now, just being involved, not even if you do it, just being there and knowing about it, and you don't go to the police, you would go down. So you're um, already involved. You're either going to go to prison or get away with it or and kill someone. So it's not good prospects either way. Well, the last thing Sonny says before one of them heads down to the toilet is, look, he's not going away, so this is the only solution. He's clearly not going away, and he means business. So Herbie goes off to go to the toilet, and he finds one of the big boys from earlier dead in the toilet with, with the words, one down written in blood on the and wall and this gets all slashery now doesn't it well the thing is it's so good here because yeah the f- best thing is though we know the slasher and we know we've got a team of people who are going to try and go against the slasher it's a lot better than my halloween kills that's for sure <laughs> um and i love the fact that he's upped it to say to them like i'm fucking gonna do it and he snuck in there hammered this guy killed him wrote on the walls and snuck back out i think he, i think he axed him oh axed uh, him okay axed but, him, but yeah. yeah you're right because what he's done is just to make sure that they know he's that amped what, it. yeah it just that wasn't an empty promise that on the side of the road he could have probably taken all of them out there if he wanted to because there's no way if he just stomped into that room with a fucking axe <laughs> fucking hell there's, that's a different be, film i'd still would, like to see it though. yeah they would be so freaked out they wouldn't know what to do none of them they, are gonna have like a gun or put it out they'd just some of them would be the too stoned they'd be like fucking hell one of them one of them might have got out but they would all <laughs> but so he i think he could have probably taken them all out easily well cut to the morning because they've all been up all night drinking and playing cards trying to get their head around what they're going to be doing in the morning cut to the morning and we've got a beautiful folk song playing as the citron heads heads up to the old farm and uh sunny pulls out a big wad of cash and passes it. the ruse is going to be there that he's going there uh to give him some money to, but obviously it's actually to pull him out so they can shoot him yeah he I, gives a big wad of cash probably a couple of hundred pounds to is, big al this whole scene which plays out which i'll let you say it is just goes to show what fucking plonkers these guys <laughs> are this is like something from Last of the Summer Wine, if it was like... If they're uh, gang- slightly gangstery, yeah. It's just like, what the because, shit? Because, so they head to the farm, and he hands like, about a couple of hundred pounds, probably, in cash to Big Al, Sonny, and he says, right, you're the one that's got to go and get him out of the barn. So as he steps out the car, they all go, good luck, good luck, Al, yeah, good luck, mate, yeah, cheers, mate. And he, he's not liking it as he walks up, he's just like, oh, God. And as he gets there, Richard just kind of... He appears. comes around the corner and he's just like, what the fuck are you doing here, mate? You fucking, you know, basically saying to him, you've got some balls fucking coming here. Because he, he, he's, he's caught off guard. And the thing is, though, if someone was a good aim, this would have gone all differently, wouldn't it? Yeah, but unfortunately, as Richard um, is walking forwards and Al's backing up, Sonny takes aim with his one shot that he's got and just blows the back of Big Al's head off. And they all go, oh, my God, you've shot Al in the head. Well, you've shot him. This is a bit like Pulp Fiction if it was in rural Britain, isn't it? And <laughs> you love, shot Marv in the face. I love the fact Richard just sees this and just sees him fall to the floor, looks back at them as almost like, you fucking dickheads. And he knows there was only one shot. So he then puts his arms up in the air like Jesus. He looks and up starts to him walking with an axe in one hand. Like, up like that as in like, what the And he's fuck? got a big smile on his face, hasn't he? Oh, so yeah. So they, they he, fucking speak off in that dolly well, sit, he, dolly as fast he, as they can he knows uh, uh you know we're not getting into first blood territory there but he did do first blood but now they retaliate he's like nice fucking let's do it so good like it's a fucking sport we get a few more flashbacks here and then we cut to the car has broken down um the gearbox is broken and they can't fix it they don't know what they it's a few hours walk back to town it's, what they're gonna the do stoners are just like oh well, Tuff starts crying, doesn't he? He says, oh, he's going to kill us. He's going to kill us all. I don't want to be involved in this. And he sort of goes off on he his own. He's off scared. And the other three are like, well, I guess we'll have to walk back to town. It's going to take fucking hours. But To be fair, with Tuff's, uh, Tuff just getting out of there, I've, that's not a bad idea. It obviously doesn't end up well, because we find out. <laughs> but it's not a bad idea, because he could have just left, actually left town and just got the fuck out of there, because those guys are going to be involved with prison or murder. You know? Yeah. Well, we get this now shot of them walking for ages till they get home. And while that's happening, we get Richard and Anthony sat back to back, sharing their memories, 
Um, I, I, I'm an only child. <clears throat> You've got a brother. Have you ever done... I always thought, I've never done that, sat back to back with someone. Yeah, I've probably done it. I've done it probably with more than my sister, because she's only 18 months younger than me, so as How kids we probably... How feel, using each other as a rest? I quite like that. It's, a, it's just a, nice. You've got to mentally put that in there as, like, that's a fuck a, a thing. Using each other as a rest, like, do you know what I mean? So a support. Yeah, yeah it's something but, that kids do, and I've done it with I'm friends in the child. playground. I don't know. Um, this is the bit where he talks about football, and he says, I don't need to hold your hand, do I? meaning I'm dead, but also meaning I'm your brother, so I can hold your hand whenever I want. So it's a double meaning there. Um, and they, the other guys get home. They get home, and the first thing they do is check the fucking house out. So they get a sword, a mini crossbow, and a little knife, and they check every inch of that rooms, house. As yeah. you would. And the thing is, though, I, again, this film is so realistic. Everything that happens like, leads on to the next scene is an actual thing which should happen. Nothing's, like, out of the, like, oh, that's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, this is what they do. And, um, again, a, a sense of safety. When they get to the last room, they're like, no, we're clear, we're clear. I, I'm with them and go, oh, thank God for that. Even <laughs> though, I, th- then we cut to him and he's underneath the staircase. Well, he's in the, he's in the, the pantry under the stairs. Yeah. Uh, and what he does while they're all upstairs is he sneaks into the kitchen. Just going back to what you said, before I describe that, you're right. That everything they do is so realistic. There's, this isn't the sort of film where someone would go into the cellar and not turn the light on or something. You know, this is it's a just, realistic it's just film. Totally, everything is an action which generally would happen. But while they're upstairs checking all the bedrooms and under the beds, he sneaks into the kitchen in his gas mask and he empties a shit ton of acid, LSD, okay. coke, mushrooms uh, into the kettle. Uh, and then fucks off again so that they then decide, well, what we're going to do now is make a nice cup of tea each and a few pot noodles. So for anyone not from the UK, a pot noodle is a big plastic pot, like a pint size plastic pot with dried noodles. You know, the sort of thing. Everyone's got them. Ramen noodles, wherever you're from in the, in the world, you've got these dried noodles. You pour a boiled water into it and then that's your dinner it's a very student it's a terrible dinner um, there's so much saturated fat you if you look at it you're like how much why is there so much saturated fat in some fucking noodles it's terrible it's really bad food they're obviously eating these noodles and drinking this tea tainted with water that has got every drug known to man in it uh which is just now we're just well, on to countdown really to yeah, what's going to happen yeah exactly what you just said <laughs> as it starts kicking in because they then start drinking a load of vodka and i really find these next couple of bits so funny to see them progressively get more and more well, fucked one thing on this film is incredible and i say this with uh i don't generally say this very much with many films and I say this with the, with the fact that I do this in post anyway. Incredible sound design. Uh, the sound mix down and the sound design is so good. When it, it's first our instance is when we're cutting into his head, which is an easy thing to do. It's uh, cutting to the head of what he hears in the mask. Um, you've done it yeah. in, at the beginning of Halloween. They do it of the young Michael Myers, the first John Carpenter's Halloween. So it's not a, imp- that's not that impressive. But it's an introduction into sound design a little bit. But then, when they get fucked, it's the cutting back forth to... This is incredible sound design, in fact, really. We've got the muted sounds and the fucked up sounds of what they're hearing as what they would hear in their heads. But then we cut into it, clear dialogue for when he speaks, when he takes the gas mask off, he's speaking to them. And the fact that they've chosen this, the sound designer has chosen these two dynamics and put them together is incredible. And I don't think the general the person would probably pick up on that, but it was really, really impressive. What that does, what you've just described, also does is it really elevates the sense of and we're scene. all on a lot of drugs yeah. because it's really hard to capture the feeling of being on lots and lots of drugs. It's rarely done very well, but this sound design and the visuals and the acting of course really elevate this next few scenes so we'll whiz through the next few scenes which is they don't want to be apart from each other 
they're, they're not fully oh, high so or anything good. yet. So it's, we, we it, 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 first of all, said oh, we're so tired. I love the fact that they're like we're so, like you can see when they're having a cup of tea, they look like it's like two, three in the morning. Like I've been to. I mean, they before. barely slept. You know it's, what I mean? It, it's like I've been to gig before DJing, and you get back and it's two, three in the morning, a few, few people, and you oh, have a cup of tea. And then it's the bed, I'm fucking exhausted. They're at that stage, but that's because the drugs haven't hit them. So then we see the progression of them getting higher so we, and higher. Well, we suddenly cut to Sonny's in the bath. Because um, they don't, they're like, I don't they want to leave each other. One of them's so- taking a shit. Soz is taking a shit while Herbie sat opposite them both reading a magazine. In out a to them. really small bathroom, all together, one's naked, one's taking shit. And it's just like, obviously, like, this is the drugs kicking in. Yeah. And, but also, they don't want to leave each other. And then it cuts to them just domestically washing up. And sorting the recycling out. Oh no, your tins go in there and your plastics go in there. No, oh, sorry, having a sorry. Massive cleaning binge in the kitchen. I'm like, really getting into it and then discussing recycling. It's like, oh, the drugs are really starting to kick in now. And then they start drinking again, and then they start weightlifting. <laughs> they do. And at the one point when the main guy's like, "Take it off me! Take it off me!" But then the hallucinogenics kick in. Yeah, because he starts saying, "Have you fed your fish today?" He goes, "Yeah, I feed it every morning." And he asks him about twenty times. Have you fed this fish? And then he says, one of them starts saying, my eyes look all right. My face feels really puffy. And the other one goes, let me have a close look. No, I think it's all right. And they're really paranoid and they're starting to start really trip out now. Uh, we cut to a few more flashbacks of perhaps Richard, of um, uh, Anthony getting high as well. Um, and then all of a sudden, they're all sort of sat in the room. Fucked. One of them's licking the ball. This is when the sound design really kicks in as well. One of them is Soz is licking the ball. The other two, one of them is sort of led on the floor, and the other one's sat in a chair. And they're all completely balls deep in every hallucinogenic you can think of. And all of a sudden, Soz, who's licking the wall, looks to his right, and he sees Richard stood there, and he says to him, "Are you the devil?" And he goes, "No, I'm not the devil." And he says, "Are you God?" He says, "Oh, no, I'm not God." He can goes, I touch you? He says. Yeah, can I touch you? He goes, don't you fucking touch me. Fucking Keep your hands off me. me. And then he says, come on then, dance at my party. All of you, this is my party. Why aren't you dancing? And he makes them all sort of get up, the ones that can stand, and sort of lurch about in a weird manner. And they're yeah. all freaking out because they, they know that he's real, but also they know they're fucked and they're kind of figuring out what bits are real and what bits aren't. And it's awful and really scary. It's, and, uh, it's, it, those guys must have, like, you know, if you're actually, like, in this, it was actually playing out, they must have been, like... Imagine that, though, being so fucked and having that going on. But the worst of it is, though, it just... It it just goes worse to worse because he's like right, and he just starts taking them out. Well, he says to he says, first of all, he says, <clears throat> "You guys all thought you could get away with it, didn't you?" And he says, all "Right, I'm going to take you away now." And so he goes, "Where are you taking him?" And he goes, "Just come with me." And he sort of drags him on his hands and knees. He's crawling, and he drags him into the kitchen. And then we see him put a plastic bag over his head, and he can't fight him off because he's so fucked. And then he just shoots him in the head. Yeah. Wow. It's just really quick to the point. And that's why, again, this film is so realistic. It's, yeah. yeah. Then it's he goes it's the it. fact that he takes he takes the, the main guy. It's the leader guy. We, we thought, oh, so this is, a, is he going to have a big finale with this guy, like in your traditional fucking Hollywood movie? Do you know what I mean? No. He takes him by the hand, and, he kneel, and he's on his kneel, kneeling along as he walks kind of on his knees, being taken out by a hand like a child, puts yep. a bag up just on his head in the way you just said it, and then just looks up to the ceiling, and then straight down, boom, just shoots him, and then puts a gun in his face and just walks into the other room. It's, straight, it's no, no muck around. It's to the point of done, 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 done. He goes back into the, the room, and he says... To Soz, right? It's I want you to stand up. Now. Yeah. And he makes him stand up. Now, Soz, the character played by Neil Bell, he was going to be killed much earlier in the film, but because he was so good at ad libbing and, and really got a lot out of the other characters, they put the, they wrote this death scene in um, and really changed it a lot to, to make his character last a little bit longer. And it's brutal. Well, he says to him, I'm going so to end you. He says, what are you going to do? He says, I'm going to end you. I'm going to put your fucking lights out once and for all. And he does like one of those palm strikes to the nose that only someone in the army will know how to do. And I guess drives his fucking nose into his brain and kills him. But you don't, it's not a particularly bloody kill, but you hear and you know what he's done. 
because that guy just goes down like a sack of shit and he's done so that's two of them done and the other guy though is is that and this is the guy right from the beginning he, Herbie. he is there and he's starting to sober up and you know this as well because the way he's looking he's starting to get like oh this is you know this is like oh some consciousness is coming into it a little bit more he says to her be you all right yeah stay there i'm gonna show you something i want to show you something this is a bit like and I, i'm like what is he gonna show him like this is a bit time. like um do you want to see something really scary in the twilight zone isn't it yeah. I'm gonna, stay there i'm gonna show you something and he brings a suitcase in drags in quite a heavy looking suitcase and i remember the first time i saw this scene i was like this this is the scene that st- stuck with me and still gets right oh, really? i've kind of forgotten actually and he says to him well certainly goes I says, what do you think it is? It's a suitcase. Open it. Open it up. And he goes, oh, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want to open it. I don't it. want to. And he goes, open it. He, he's basically, he, he's fucked, but he's, his fuck brain has, has just seen his friend die and he knows his friend died. His, but he hasn't actually consciously gone into his head that he's going to die, but he's going into like this really like childish kind of like, where he's like, I don't want to open it. It's very sort of real like going in on himself, like like scared, you know. Well, he opens it up, and inside is Tough. Tough has been squashed and cut up and rammed into a suitcase. Yeah. And the first and thing he, goes, he says, oh. "No," he, he goes, oh, "That's not really tough." And he goes, "It is." He goes, "No." And he goes, "Yeah, that's your mate. Do you want to give him a little kiss?" Go on. And he goes, yeah. "I don't want to." Yeah. And then he says, "I don't want." Are you frightened? He, he says it in such a gentle way, Paddy Constant. He goes, "Are you frightened?" He no. says, "Yeah." He says. Do you want me to close it? Yeah, please close it. I don't want to see it. And he goes, Shall I close it? Okay, I'll close it now. And, it's, and he's, it's like a child he's talking yeah, to. Yeah, well, it's when he first does actually open it up. The first thing he does actually do, he sits back in chair and goes, Oh no, it's just that. The way he does like this, oh. it's the fact that he goes, Oh no, because his mind knew that that's going to be a dead body. And it opened up and goes, Oh no. I'm right, you know, and it's like, oh my god! And now Richard really shows his psychotic side now because he's he says to him, "Now look, Herbie, you're alive because you're a good man. I'm not going to kill you." He just fucks with this dude's head. You're not. I'm not. Why would I kill you? You're a good man. And he starts. He's crying. He goes, "Are you frightened? <laughs> you're not really going to kill me." It's hard to lose someone close to you, isn't it? Isn't it, mate? It says, says all those the little things, you know. Yeah. He says, "Look, I." Uh, all and he goes, to and goes to him, why did you do that? He goes, because he ran away. And he says, there's one other guy, and you're going to give you the information and the address of where this other guy is, but I'm going to let you live, because you're a good man. Why would I kill you? And, and he goes, he's you smiling, mean it's playful. He goes, yeah, I mean it. Look at me. And I could have killed you by now if I wanted to. And he's... Right, I've never been into a situation where everything in my whole my, mind has gone out of me. Like, nothing matters anymore. My possessions don't matter. My DVD collection don't matter anymore because I'm about to die. I've never had that ex- that situation I've been in. This guy is so fucked, and he's in this point. And all of a sudden, he's saying to don't worry, it's going to be okay. He's just going into, like, oh, like, his mind must be into so many different trauma. He's, wi- he's wiping the tears away, like, relieved he's that like, he's not oh, going to be killed. God, I'm not going to be killed. And, and he says, to go, oh, great. He says, so he gives him the address of the last person that was involved in, in Toby's, in um, Anthony's torture. And he says, and he says, oh, was that knife for me? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, you weren't going to use it. I mean, he goes, really? And he goes, no, I wasn't going to really do anything. And he goes, of course you were. We're mates, aren't we? He Come here. Him. He shakes his hand. Then he hugs him. Then he goes, you're okay. You're all right. Give us another hug. And he gives him a nice hug. And then he grabs a knife and shoves it into his, between his ribs, into his lungs. And he's done. Yeah. And he lured him in. He was torturing him, just like they did to his brother, right up until the last second. Um, Because he's got no soul at all now. He's just fucking... He's like Michael Myers, man. He's just done. Um, And there we go. So we cut back to day four now. Richard and Anthony walking in the country. And they're off to the final little town or village to find this last person. Off for a little visit. And... um, the, the children of the last person um, show up at their home and their mum says, what have you got there? And they, oh, they got this knife and this gas mask. What? Yeah, a man gave it to us in the park, a soldier. What the fuck? So she takes it off them. She's obviously quite annoyed. And they say, oh, he said he knew, he knows dad. And she's like, that's, 
weird. Um, Shout the dad's name. Oi! Get down here now! So she tells tells her husband, and um, he says, well, I'll take the kids off for a bit. And second, no, the car... He take, no, he takes them off because he says, go and find this person. So he oh, takes yeah, the he kids out. The kids the... are going to go and show him who it was. So he can go Sorry. like, what are you doing? The second his car is around the corner. Well, well we see we see Richard coming uh, up to the house from uh, behind the bushes, a wall, kind of real low, and then he ducks down, sees him drive off. So he drives off. He hops over the f- wall and goes up to the house. He knocks on the door and he says, "Hello, um, is whatever his name in Mark? Is Mark in?" And she says, "No. Can I help you?" Oh, I'm in town. Uh, I'm an old friend of his. My name's Richard. She goes, "Oh, yeah." Are you, we- do you know my boys? Have you seen my boys? She goes, oh, yeah, I saw them in the park earlier. Lovely boys, really lovely. She goes, did you give them a knife and a mask? And he goes, I did, yeah. She's like, well, that's not very safe. And he goes, oh, it's blunt. She goes, yeah, but I still don't want you giving a knife to my kid. And he goes, oh, okay, well, you're a good woman. You're a good good mum. I, I see that. Okay, well, can you just tell, tell Mark that Richard came? He should know me. I'm Anthony's brother. See you later. And she she sits on the stairs for hours now, doesn't she? Waiting for Mark to come home with the kids. Yeah, she's she's quite intimidated by the whole this whole situation. They get back, and he's like, "What are you doing in the dark?" She says, "Oh, right, go up the stairs, playing your PlayStation." And she says, "Right, that guy came round here the second you left. He knocked on the door, and uh, he said he's Anthony's brother or something, and that you know him. His name is Richard, and this is where Richard reveals." everything to his wife crying his eyes out and we get the the remaining last bit of the flashback really now which is that they all went out in a van one day um all of the gang and and anthony loads of drugs and they forced loads and loads of lsd into anthony then they went out to like an old abandoned school and a church connected and they basically put a noose around his neck and they put his head for a hole in a wall and they put him in a cage and they humiliated him and then they told him to stay with his head in the wall and told him that your brother hates you everyone hates you um you know you're in the devil's house do you want to go to the devil's house he's like crying i don't want to go to the devil's house because he's like a child and then they all just drove off and left him and what they didn't know was that when they all drove off and left him, well, the drugs... Well, noose around his neck anyway. Yeah, they well, the drug, drugs got to him, the dark thoughts got to him, his maybe his mental illness got to him, everything, and, yeah, he, he ended up hanging himself. I don't, I don't know how he would have done it, though. I don't know, but he did it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, so obviously Mark's wife is really upset, Mark's really upset, and so th- th- this though here though this would be the twist if you don't know the film for the first time all of a sudden you see him hanging himself you're like oh my god he's actually dead he's been dead the whole so the, time the, all of a sudden you're now sort of for the next few minutes you're sort of going uh uh your mind's racking around the fact you've had a sixth sense twist going on and as that twist sort of wraps up with the last flashback we see was was um anthony's funeral richard stood there and he's got no expression on his face at all that he's already planned what he's going to do this this I, this is going to spoil the movie a little bit there's a movie called Bull B-U-L-L oh, with the main guy from uh, Kill List <clears throat> don't think I've seen it British movie kind of revenge film kind of like this but it, uh, uh, I've, I'm spoiling it a bit that's it, but the, the ending kind of just doesn't live up to as good as this um, but kind of the same vein if you want to see something fairly recent it was on Netflix for a little while actually Okay. Uh, but well, it's not as good because it's just a bit of a silly ending. Well, early morning, day five now. So it's only been five days and he's torn through this gang. And Mark wakes up in the morning and Richard sat opposite him with a knife against his throat. I love the fact that there's a little things in this you don't know. He's sleeping on the sofa, which was good because it'd just be like, well, how can we get him to do away quickly? Well, let's just have him sleep on the sofa. But then we can go, oh, why does he sleep on the sofa? Because he's, then, cause they would have had this discussion when they're about to shoot it. Go, how are we going to play this out when they're blocking it? And then we'd be like, well, let's just, then we can say that he, she said to him, right, you're fucking sleeping on the sofa if, if it's like you knew. Do you know what I mean? She's pissed <laughs> off him. It works 
sneaky with sneaky levels. And we should mention that he seems genuinely sad that this event happened. He he was probably the least involved when, out of the when, guys. When he's doing the story and talking about it, he's there in the background and you can see that he's not into it. Um, and it is, it is, it's a weird thing for them all to do anyway. Um, I'm glad they were all fucking killed, to be honest with you. Fucking bunch of wasters. And it's just the yeah. oddest sense of humour and entertainment to do. It's like, do something else with your life. Like, what, what are you doing? You know? Well, Richard says to him in the knife, get up, we're going for a drive, get your car keys, don't make a sound. If you make any sound, I'll shove this knife into your spine. So he makes Mark go out and they get in the car and they go off for a drive. At this point here, this makes me reminds me of how much I hate early mornings. It, it was just the <laughs> Especially early if morning. Especially Constantine is sat just, there opposite you. I just don't like early mornings. I was watching that guy, God, I fucking hate early mornings. I'm I can't imagine... Out. The, the scared, how scared it must be to wake up with that, that guy that sat too, there. Though. Not just, not just the fact that it's early. <laughs> um, he he takes, he makes him drive back to the spot he where Anthony where died. Done it, yeah. yeah it's that and exact little barn. And then he does the whole like nice and simple dialogue. He says, "Do you know why you're here?" And he basically provokes him into confessing. Um, and I think some of the stuff that he says about his brother is to he get him it. to confess. Yeah, well, no, because he says Cause, he says this afterwards. He's already confessed. It's then afterwards he says, "You know what? It's a fucking embarrassment to me." Uh, uh, and then he does impressions of him. Yeah. And then he says, um, "So it's like, is that a weird? Re- it's a really weird revenge thing, or is he going to do that to provoke him to? Because at I, that I point, is he it's provoking provoke him, him to kill him?" I think it's all of the all of the above. I think it is to provoke him to confess and to kill him um, and make him feel better about doing it. Because he uh, he says um, he says to him, "What what did you do? What, what if you could go back and change anything?" And he says, "I oh, I should have done something. I shouldn't have. I should have said something. I yeah, should have gone back." And he says, "Yeah, I wish you had. I fucking wish you had because you could have stopped a lot of carnage. I've executed every single one of them." Yeah, it says he's a monster and stuff but th- there's a bit where it, it, this is where really for the first time he actually breaks down and this is a really good point h- bit here he talks to Anthony but for the first time because we know the twist now Anthony's not there and it's the first time and he just says I can't do it kid I can't I can't do it take the knife from me because he realised that this dude's a family guy and he just can't kill this one the strong he the, says, I'm the, sorry kid I can't do it and he's the, he's talking to Anthony the hardest hitting line in this entire film is this line he says here. He says to Mark, "Was he screaming when when you were torturing him?" And he says, "Yeah." He says, "Was he? Yeah. Was he screaming loud? Yeah. Was he screaming my name? Was he screaming for his brother? Was he screaming for me?" And Mark says he was, and he says, "Yeah. He still is. He still is. That voice is still in his head, even though he wasn't there." He hears his brother screaming his name, knowing that his brother died at the hands of these assholes. And that cuts me up, man. I'm getting goosebumps and a bit teary just saying it now. Like that line film. Yeah. is when Paddy delivers that, he still is. Phew, fucking hell, man. If you don't have a tear in your eye at that point. Well, then he says to him, You were supposed to be the monster, but now I'm the beast. And it's just all of this dialogue and stuff is so strong, and it's just like you're just going through watching the movie, going, "Oh my god!" Like the crescendo of this film is incredible. He says, "Take this knife from me, please." And, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm capable of. He says, "I don't want to." He says, "Stick this knife in me, please." And Mark says, "I've got kids. I can't think of your children because uh, he pretty much says to them, I will kill them all.' Yeah, I will fucking slaughter your family." And then, and then another line, he says, "Please, I just want to lie with my brother." An incredible sound Fuck design again here hell. as well. Yeah, yeah. I it's, just want to lie with my brother. Fucking hell. And you can tell that he's totally tormented by this and just, yeah, he wants it to be finished because he knows he's just going to carry on. So he basically sort of and he dies the knife himself. Where his brother died. Yeah. And there's that same ma- spot. He kind, of, he kind of helps Mark do it, but he falls on the knife, but Mark also has to stab him at the same time. And Mark cries. <clears throat> he leaves the building, runs off, and Rich is led there in a puddle of blood bleeding out and we know he's going to die and That's, that church hymn that choir starts and singing and pan over the fields to finish the film fucking hell honestly guys I'll be, I'm disappointed in you if you didn't take our warning <clears throat> and watch this before if you haven't seen it and if you haven't I hope you've been inspired to watch this film Paddy Constantine is a force to be reckoned with his acting is phenomenal and yes on paper this might be a revenge flick but it's so much deeper than that I know, it's and got, 
I've it's always quite... I've always used this as like a the, the if I ever this has always been my inspiration for wanting to make revenge for it. It's just such a good movie, and I always feel like it's never been seen almost, or people never talk about it. The other thing that Empire said about this when it came out, Empire Magazine, they said this might be this might do for slashers what Twenty Eight Days Later did for zombie films. But uh, I don't think it really took off in the same way. Uh, what are they talking uh, about? That's nonsense. In that, in that, it's gritty and it's based in realism. Yeah, I think it's like nonsense. <laughs> I don't think so. I think Twenty Eight Days Later was based. Yeah, it was the first. Not, it's not a slasher film, and you wouldn't want another movie like this. But, but they're but actually it, then but being but a slasher. It is. It's, the, it's the blueprint of a slasher film. Yeah, it's a, totally yeah. is. It's a guy in a mask at times going around killing off certain people for a revenge. That's what every slasher is, especially with the yeah. mask. Um, but it's just done in a, a very grounded way, and I think that what they were saying it's is twenty days later it was done in a, in a grounded homegrown way, albeit a bigger budget. But it never took off, sadly, in that way, which is crazy. But it's, everybody I know that's seen this movie loves it. I don't know anybody who's seen this and doesn't love it. Yeah, I, it was just in a video shop. We just picked it up one day. It, I don't know if it would have been fucking pimped or promoted and marketed well. But then again, people might not know what they got as executives or the publishers or marketers or whatever the fuck. They might just not really realise what they've got here. But <clears throat> I don't know. You've got If you enjoy <clears throat> cinema and definitely enjoy like a, a good revenge film... This is, uh, and especially an English one, uh, you get this. This, this is like you kind of get a couple of old Michael Caine ones. Um, um, what's the Michael Caine film? Hello. Get Carter. Get Carter. Um, that's that's a good one. Um, don't watch the Sylvester Stone one. I watched that recently, actually, in it's awful. six months. It's fucking shit. Really bad. Really shit. Ugh. Um, obviously, this is a thumbs up from Gavin. I'm going to speak for you, Gav, but it's definitely a massive thumbs up for for us. It's a film gods movie to me. Um, yeah, you know, it's just an incredible achievement in filmmaking on such a small budget. It just goes to show what you can do with an incredible cast and a great script um, and a good eye behind the camera. Um, it's just phenomenal. My one thing I was going to say, though, my one, the one flaw. Get rid of me. the accordion music. <laughs> Apart from that, the, the plot hole for me is, how would Richard know what happened to Anthony? Because Anthony died. He never would have been able to tell anybody the intricacies of all the torture. The guys would never have admitted it to anybody or, or wrote it down or, or, you know, had it in a police he doesn't interview. Know. So all of those flashbacks, Was my for us. Yeah, it's a mate. It's made up. That's what he thinks they did to him in no, his head. Uh, no, he's not seen that. Those images are for us, the viewer. That's not for Richard. Richard came back knowing that he was bullied. But by how a does bunch it? Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't know that they tortured him. How does he know that? Uh, well, no. I, I imagine. I don't know exactly, but he doesn't know the, the details. I don't imagine think that he knows, too much. Really, I don't think you should. No, that kind of no, that, that kind of spoils I, it. I know. That's what I mean. I thought about that after I watched it. This but most it's recent. It's not time. even. It's no. It's not even relevant. Who cares? It's, it doesn't matter because it's an incredible movie. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. So good. Yeah. But thank you, Matthew, because it is definitely one that we would have loved to cover at some point and probably would have we done. We would have done. But yeah. I, 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 we, we do this thing, okay? Well, well, every once in a while, I just watch a movie, I'm like, that'll make a cracking conversation. And I'll message Dan and say, add it to the list. And he adds it to the list. I think Dead Man's Shoes probably. Actually, it's no, on there. Yeah, I haven't seen it for many years since we've done podcasts. So if I had, though, I would have been messaging you off and saying, put it on there. So, yeah. This would have been good paired up with someone like Kill List, which we've already covered anyway. Um, but yeah, wow, what a movie. Well, <clears throat> let's move away from that because there's a lot to unpack in that emotionally. But Gav, mm. I've just opened my shed. Oh. And it's been a year, but we are going into the time tunnel. Get you ready to get time traveling? Uh, I haven't got my silver pants, though. Hang on, here they are. They're, why are they so shiny? Have you been uh, rubbing them? Uh, they've been uh, in the cupboard under the stairs and there's a leak so they're a bit uh, moist and damp there's a leak in my pants yeah don't worry about that now there is one I, I am in the middle of doing some repairs because it's been a year since I've used it there is only one seat now in this time machine right so we, we do have to sit do you want to sit on my lap or shall I sit on yours how many ups and down bumps is there going to be because I don't know if I want to be bottom or top how many do you want? <laughs> I don't know. I don't want any. That's what okay, I'm saying. Well, 
Well, let, let me press that button there. Can you re- just reach over? Ooh. Grab that. That's oh. pull, pull that one. Yep. It is getting tighter in here. Yeah, Are okay. we getting bigger or has it got smaller? Is it shrunk in the wash? Bit of both. Right, hang on. Let me just shut this door. Right, I'm ready. You ready to go back to 2023? Yep, let's go. Right, hang on. <laughs> Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your man. time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are going to be the time team. The time team. Whoa. Whoa. What's this? Look at that. Look at that. Oh, he's been dead a hundred years. Look at that. Look at that. That's a statue of liberty coming out of the sand. Whoa, there's a dinosaur. Oh, my God. Look at that. It's something else. <laughs> Get, oh. right, now get off my lap. Sorry, sorry. Right. right. Explain. Where are we? We're in 2023. What is, <laughs> what is, why is it so... Why is there so much condensation on your windows again? I thought you sorted that out. It gets really hot on my side. Um, right, so 2023, looking back. What a year. A year of change, Gav. Lots changed this year. So I'll just change. I'll just quickly summarise some of the things that happened, and then we'll go through some of the more bigger events. Then we'll get into the the horror movies that came out because that's the main reason we travel back in time. Yeah. But um, 2023, The Who declared the end of the COVID nineteen pandemic this year. Not so the band. Not the band. No. <laughs> I thought you said. That, that's what I thought you said. So I'm just going. Like, I don't remember no, the, the the band. The World, the World Health Organization. The band, the Who, got back together and went <laughs> right. Oasis declared the end right, of the pandemic. It, we've decided because we're not relevant whatsoever, and we're just a band. We've decided that it's finished. Oh, okay. It, India overtook China in the most populated country in the world this year in 2023 really and the two letters that are on everyone's lips were ai and we'll get more into that in a moment oh i love me ai now i know you do i know um some of the other words that were on people's lips were barbie oppenheimer they were two most talked about films of the year and the the fifa women's soccer world cup was also something that people talked about a hell of a lot as well okay uh, we also had the conflict carrying on between Russia and Ukraine. And sadly, Israel launched a full-scale war on Hamas in the Palestinian Gaza. So that happened too. But yes, let's run through <coughs> some of those bits and bobs that happened. Um, on a lighter note, uh, a new malaria vaccine was approved. So we may be able to properly cure uh, malaria now. And the UK introduced a drug which seems to have the potential to cure breast cancer. Hmm. Um, it has breast cancer rates in anyone it's been trialled on, so fingers crossed that that well, is a thing as well. Uh, I know you're going to get on to it, but with AI, there is one thing of AI which will help is uh, medical research. It will, yes. be, it will start discovering things which we hadn't thought of, uh, uh, which will help people, you know. Well, I'll run through the year from January to December very briefly. So, in January of 2023, Prince Harry released his book, Spare. I thought you Everyone... said he released his album for some reason then. His rap album. Yeah, well, no, Prin- Prince Harry. The, the Fresh Prince of Westminster, wherever he's from. Um, yeah, no, he released his book. Everyone was talking about that because it basically said how shit the royal family are. I, I, all this shit came out as like, I'm not even going to put any of the words through my eyes into my head and I'd ignore everything because it's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Who um, cares? It means also, nothing. Also in January last year, Buzz Aldrin celebrated his 93rd birthday. Still going? Uh, as, as the in quotations first person on the moon? Yeah, maybe. Maybe the first per- person on Stanley Kubrick's set. Who knows? Was it Buzz? Um, was he the first? Was it? He he was the... Um, sorry, I've got it here. The second man to set foot on the moon. Yeah, that's right. The first uh, was Neil La- Armstrong. Lance. No, Lance Armstrong. Who's no, Neil La- Armstrong? No, it is Neil Armstrong. I'm joking with you. Lance Who's Armstrong it? was the cyclist. Neil Armstrong got on the moon first. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, February, Ozzy Osbourne. Go on. No, go on. You normally do your Ozzy Osbourne impression. Oh! Uh, Sharon! (laughs) Ozzy Osbourne announced he's finally going to retire from touring. He was 74. Um, No, he's not. 
Because Sharon will get a stick and go, go on, Ozzy, <laughs> out you go again. <laughs> Well, he's got Parkinson's and a spinal injury, so he decided to quit touring. Um, I think he fell over on stage as well at one point. I thought about 30 years ago he was <laughs> going to stop touring because he's looked too fucked. Uh, I don't know how he still does it, but there's I've said this before, but um, there was an album that came out of his, mm, now it's probably about fucking 15 years ago, it's a solo album. It's pretty decent, I didn't mind it, and I, I listened to it at like, full volume in my car, and it got to the end of one of the songs, and just at the guitars that ran out, you could hear Ozzy saying in the background, because I had it at full volume, Is that it? You know, or like that. It was like, can we finish now? Can I go home or whatever? That like, just and it was like, oh my god, that's still in there. And I reckon that they would probably snuck that in there. The engineers, like, nice. fuck this, we keep that because they would have seen it. There's no way they would let that out. So I reckon they'd like, fucking keep that in there. Nice. You get that in a lot of hip hop albums, don't you? Yeah, but this was like almost <laughs> a bit of a diss. Though. It was a bit like fucking hell, Sharon, leave him alone. Uh, in also in February, sadly, Turkey and Syria were hit by a 7.8 magnitude earthquake that killed just under 60,000 people. And over the next three weeks, 10,000 aftershocks, so 10,000 more mini earthquakes happened over the next three weeks. It's the deadliest earthquake in Turkey since 526 AD and the deadliest earthquake in Syria since 1822. Yeah, um... That was bad, man, wasn't it? Yeah, but, well, we've seen quite a lot of uh, uh, terrible things happen around the world, um, um, which m does mean, then, that the population uh, has decreased. Well, the Earth is you know. getting overcrowded, and I do sometimes think that the, this is... The, and I'm in no way celebrating these events, please. That's not what I'm saying. But what I do think is, when these events happen, is the Earth... You know, is it so overpopulated that there's some way that Mother Nature is like, I need to reduce these numbers? It's awful to say that, but it's just food for thought. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I don't know, but I don't, I don't, I don't think. Do you know a, what I mean? I don't think there's any sort of consciousness in that, or like even it of a natural progression of that happening. But I do understand what you're saying because there's a lot of uh, a lot more people in a certain area where there's a lot more heat going to be radiated from that area, and, and that's going to maybe to cause impacts in other certain areas and be domino effects definitely um yeah so yeah i understand what you're saying though in february the end of february 2023 the fbi publicly confirmed that they believed covid19 originated in a laboratory in wuhan china so the fbi came out and said we think it was manufactured in a lab in china and yeah, was that proven though not proven, but that's what they believe. Mm. Do you not believe the FBI? Oh, I'm, I, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I was just saying, was that proven? I wasn't uh, any putting no, any no, side no. of it onto that. Uh, Be careful, because they're listening. I, again, to be honest, uh, um, well, whatever. It, it's the same with this nowadays. That's how I am with most things now. I'm kind of like, okay, because there's so many different sides, and you've got AI. Uh, bots and things working continuously trying to put a different a certain news bias out to one side or the other for certain Absolutely. agendas to the point when there's you can't believe and almost most things so it's a kind of more of a okay maybe <laughs> give me the show me the proof and then i'm happy. just like okay because even even if they do show you proof though like this is like for when the 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 hospital which they say got b bombed by a, one side and then they found out it was the home side when some of their own missiles hit the hospital yeah but three of three major newspapers uh ran with it and did a massive thing before they actually needed proof of it and then they never retracted those claims and it's just things like that it's like so no one could believe anyone anymore and i don't know you have to believe in yourself and what you want to believe in i guess well i'll tell you what you can believe in gav mm -hmm. in march yes the U.S. record industry reported for the first time since 1987. The music industry. Yeah, the U.S. record industry reported for the first time since 1987 that vinyl record sales exceeded CD sales. Oh, so yeah. last year, more people bought vinyl records than they did sa that, CDs actually, in the U.S. I love that. Right? Oh yeah, but I was only saying that because like I was thinking, who buys CDs now anyway? Because everyone can stream fairly cheaply. Of their Spotify. devices, and yeah, because like, uh, it's not too that too expensive to be able to have a fairly all right month 
giga band, uh, you know, gigabytes, whatever bandwidth. Um, anyway, regardless of that, um, oh, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to flog most of my vinyl. Anyone want to buy some vinyl? Well, come to me. I mean, you, you're right because I mean, Alice and I now have I don't a joint. Want it really so much. Alice and I have a joint account, so for only fifteen pounds a month between the two of us yeah we've got, got we've got spotify one. premium mm. and not only is it i discovered a couple of weeks ago it's got loads of books on there audio books on there as well as obviously podcasts and music so with spotify you've got access to so much you know you don't really need i mean obviously it's nice to have physical media but if you don't want it you don't need it so it's interesting that rec vinyl has become obviously more of a collector people have gone back to collecting physical media and they've actually gone back further than cds to vinyl i think that's very interesting yeah i've um, just just uh, literally the other day just opened up a shop in hard uh, not hard to find records um whatever the other one discogs uh opened up a shop there to sell my vinyl on there um because mm. yeah i i personally i don't want stuff anymore um i've kept i've still kept though quite a lot of records which is my favorite records i've got some really good ones um um but i don't really want stuff it's weird though my movie collection i'm quite happy to have a fucking stacked shelving free deep of dvds videos and blu-rays for some reason but music i've kind of been like eh, i don't really need it i'm a digital dj now as well so I don't know. It's just kind of like, I don't have time to play it for a start. Well, yeah, we were talking about that off air, weren't we? I was saying that I was having a big clear out of all my DVDs yeah. again and yeah. my VHS because space, you know, my, my household is doubled. Mm. Um, you know, there's four of us now, and although they're only little at the moment, at some point I'm going to need more more room and more space. And also, I can't justify owning a lot of this stuff anymore, really. You know, it's just sitting yeah. collecting dust. So it's I mean, a shame. I, I, but... I, a lot <clears> of my records, like, I've got some great records now, all the originals, because I used to go to the car boot sales, pick them up, be like a quid each albums now, which I could sell for like 50 60 quid easily a lot of them you know um <clears throat> um and i used to love having them and playing them all that sort of stuff but i just it's just the one of those things that i don't I just don't need them you yeah know? well i'll open the floor up to you on this next one because uh in march of last year the open ai the company released gpt4 the upgraded version of their popular artificial intelligence chatbot mm. so take it away gav tell us why you love ai uh, for someone like myself, which is uh, fairly uneducated and still struggle with uh, 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 English business stuff like things like that, um, promotions, self-promotion, uh, there's a lot of things in business-wise you can use AI for where it, that can help those areas. But for me, um, like, for example, um, the other day I was, um, I've downloaded ChatGPT for my tablet. And the other day, Alice has it. The other day, I was like, right, well, I, I need to because you people might say, well, what's the difference between that and say Google? Because you can ask Google or you ask your Alexa uh, questions, and they give you answers straight away, fairly quickly. With Chat GPT, you can it's AI. You can go f further and further and further with it. If you if you like, the other day I had an idea for a film, so I turn on the talking mode and then I go back and forth with the AI talking back and forth with my mode and it just comes back to you with positive for me as a creative sometimes it's very hard to be creative when you're surrounded by people who are not creative people and you work at a normal job and they're not and they just go oh it's Spielberg all day long that sort of thing which I used to get all the time this is like someone who's very positive so like, I've got an idea chat GPT about a movie it's, it involves two people and you explain it and they says hey that's a great idea how about doing it and you can go back and forwards some people may say like oh maybe it's a bit of cheating using AI isn't it <coughs> it's kind of tough fuck off basically uh, I'm going to say that from for uh, a creative like myself I, it works incredibly if I had this before Shadow Death it's been so amazing to make Shadow Death it would have been clearer to the point it would be a different film probably um and also there's other things I don't know AI can do a lot of other things I'm just tipping just a little bit of it, it, well, it, it um, you could put the right into it what ingredients you have in your fridge and say these are the ingredients I have in my fridge can you give me a, a recipe it will give you a recipe in seconds and then you go I don't like that give me another it will do it again from the ingredients you have in your fridge it's very interesting the other night I didn't realise Alice was doing this she was asking me what makes a good hip hop song yeah. and she said like give me some elements and so I told her 
five or six elements you know like a, a boom bat beat early 90s new york gritty but also some horns i described i gave her about 10 words and then i realized she was putting them into chat gpt and she then sent me a 30 second beat and i was like this is like incredible this is like a tribe called quest and i gave, I gave her some more and then she did one it sounded a bit like a wu-tang clan and this this just writing 30 second snippets of songs for her within seconds what's she using same as you chat gpt is she paying for like a full version yeah she's got she's got oh, a I haven't subscription done that. i've only got oh right, cool yeah um and she asked it to write a rap song about me and it did you know the lyrics and stuff like that and you can go further with it if you pay more obviously yeah. and stuff it's just crazy that it can do it but You'll see uh, throughout the year, as I recap the year, more this comes more and more into well, very quickly, war- people's worries as well. Yeah, absolutely, and obviously, uh, you know, but don't be scared by what Terminator Two was pl- showing. You know, <clears throat> um, it will help in a lot of ways. Um, also, very much there is one thing where Chat GPT is uh, now helping make itself the yes. newer models, and also there was one thing. This might scare you a little bit. There was a thing recently where you did a test with, with an AI. And it tried to get past the sign- the capture bit where it said, you know, fit in the space. It all yeah, are, are you a robot or not? And uh, basically <clears throat> it said, uh, it thought about it for a moment and then said, I've got a hard of, uh, uh, I, I can't see very well because my sight, eyesight's too bad. Can you help me fit it in for me? And it got, so it, it, it lied. It, it side, side doored it. Amazing. Well, funny enough, later on in March, Italy banned the use of chat gpt over data security concerns so italy banned it okay well there was a very big uh, uh meeting recently and a lot of uh, higher end people have all agreed and done a thing where they've slowed it down because basically where it does come into it, though, the other side of it is where you need to slow the progression of ai down because we have might not have the security in place in case anything did actually go wrong Mm-hmm. So they need to slow it down just like very quickly, so they can try and get security in place, and then it can start up again. It needs to be policed properly, doesn't it? Well, when um, it starts making itself, it's only when it comes relevant to actually, it, it, it actually becomes that point where it knows what it is. Well, moving into April of last year, NASA announced that the astro- uh, that they were going to be sending people to the moon for the first time in over fifty years. Yeah. Or did they? Or did Stanley Kubrick or a ChatGPT director? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, one, one good, th- another good thing AI is doing at the moment is uh, looking at the uh, the climate and the weather around the world and helping different uh, ways to do things. And it's actually working already at doing that, which is good. Amazing! It yeah. is amazing. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it's things like that. But I don't think at some point they're going to go right. Psh, let's turn off the electricity for the humans worldwide. Ooh. And then we all die, you know. Well, on a lighter note, and I don't know why you and I weren't invited to this, but Willie Nelson celebrated his 90th birthday party with a oh. two-day music concert Dude, in his garden. It'd just be him and Snoop Dogg smoking loads of weed. Two days of music in his garden, 90 years old. Two days of smoking weed with Willie Nelson. And Snoop Dogg. Uh, in, moving into May... Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI, resigned from Google over growing concerns of uh, AI spreading and dangers of the emerging technology. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Also in May, Mm -hmm. the Writers Guild of America went on strike, didn't they? And this is because, one reason is because of AI. Because of AI. So this is, it's affected a lot of news stories from last year. As I was trying to say earlier, though, when I said, well, you can just fuck off if you don't like it, it's, it's because it's like downloading, it's not going anywhere, and you've got to get along, work along with it. So for myself, I'm going to try and be creative. And I've said this to everyone in Deadbolt, we're, we are like, we need to be able to implement AI. And the next thing we're making at the moment, I'm start editing at the moment, has an AI made thing in it. Um, because it was like, how are we going to do that? But it's like, we can do that with that and it's been done it looks fantastic and it would just slip in there like say in Kill Bill where you get animation just slips into the movie all of a sudden it'd just be like that but it would work it's in, yeah uh, in, in filmmaking as well as in, in music making and stuff like that yeah, AI is going to take over as well well in May Elon Musk was given the go ahead to trial his Neuralink brain implants on humans yeah so do you know so, about this 
I don't know much about this, do you? Yeah, the, the main reasons for first trying to do this is to get people who might have MS or people who've got, like, a, um, a paralysed to get them linked to their spine and oh, yes, again again. So right. actually can get work, moving again, and it will actually happen. The other thought is eventually to have this so you would basically be able to talk to people without actually speaking, mm. and you'd be able to know people's mm. thoughts. Fucking hell. Yep. In June... Former U.S. President Donald Trump is formally accused of mishandling classified documents, a trial which is still going on at the moment. Uh, that and many other things he's apparently yeah. done. Politics. And yet, and yet he's still running for president. How the uh, fuck? It's, it, 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 the, the more you look in politics nowadays, the more you go, it's just literally like a, 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 a bunch of clowns, all of them. It's all just ridiculous nonsense, all of it. It's just noise. Ooh, it's like, oh, go away <laughs> like flies well, buzzing around your head it's just every time it's something more and more nonsense from one well, of them well keeping on topic in june last year uh the grammys updated their rules to restrict songs generated by ai so only human that, written songs and produced songs are allowed in the grammys yeah, that's um, absolutely right. But how are they going to... They, I bet they have to use AI to go through it. <laughs> they They're going to have do. to use AI to go through which songs are AI and not AI. Another thing happened in June, which everyone was talking about, and that was the Ocean Gate Titan submer semi-submersible um, submarine that imploded. That was fucked. Yeah, it was fucked, wasn't it? Um, I think it was five people. Uh, yeah, five people on there all lost their lives. It took them yeah, a four, every, four everyone days. Everyone watched that, didn't they? Because that was they like did. that. That was unfortunately like well, we found out that they died very quickly. But um, originally, it was like, oh my god, it's like a countdown. So the whole time you're just thinking of these people in in inside like this submarine. Horrible. Yeah, pretty. Uh, but they died. Uh, we found out quickly. Yeah. Yeah, they would have died almost immediately. It's, um, in August last year, again, keeping on topic, two rival driverless taxi companies were given the op uh, the approval to operate 24-7 in San Francisco. So since August, there's been two, not one, two driverless taxi companies operating in San Fran. How many deaths? I don't have that information. It doesn't say. Okay. Which I assume means none so far. Crazy. Uh, Russia, uh, in August, Russia's Luna 25 lunar lander crash-landed on the moon. Or was it shot down by aliens? Yeah. So a lot of weird stuff happened. Uh, in August, India became the fourth nation to land on the moon. Why are we all going back to the moon all of a sudden? Mm -hmm. What's there? What isn't there? Mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering if my neighbours are having an argument so I can keep hearing voices. Or were they having sex? Maybe. No, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit raised. No, I don't think they have sex. <laughs> I don't know. In August as well, Donald Trump became the first former US president to have his mug shot taken for 13 felony charges. First president. And, he, and he'll probably t spin that, won't he, to say, yeah, I'm the first one to achieve a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, you were, you dickhead. Absolute muppet. Um, in September, this is more on our... Uh, field ufo expert jamie molson presented the bodies of two alleged aliens to mexican congress this was in the news for a few weeks wasn't it yeah and, and, and of course some of us are like yeah we want this shit to be real but at the same time it's like do we and then it's like i don't know this it's all the whole world and life at the moment is just weird well, scientists declared the whole thing as a, an elaborate hoax in the end. It wasn't that elaborate. They didn't look that very realistic. Yeah. So there we go. That's, that was September. And in September, the other thing that happened was finally the Writers Guild of America strike ended. Yeah. Um, but but the one of them ended, but the other one didn't, did it? Um, well, the other one ended not long after it. Yeah. Actors. Yeah, the actors killed. They kept yeah, going for another, oh, no, for another three, three, four weeks maybe. Um, what else happened? Uh, oh yes, in October, Israel declared war on Hamas. That's still ongoing, sadly. Um, and then moving into the last part of the year, um, October, 
President Joe Biden signed an executive order to make sure the proper guidance was used with AI within federal agencies. So it's been taken seriously now because they're using it within federal agencies. And weirdly, in November, Gav, Collins Dictionary announced AI was the most notable and used word of 2023. Mm. Now, my favorite headline of what happened in November, in uh, 2023, was in November. And I'll just read this headline to you and then explain what it means. Colombia began a campaign to sterilize Pablo Escobar's wild hippos. Just just let that sink in for a second or two. So cartel leader Pablo Escobar smuggled four hippos into his country of Colombia back in the 80s. He died in 1993, and the hippos were just left to kind of get on with it. And without any natural predators, their population grew into the hundreds, and they've become an invasive species. Now, obviously, they don't come from Colombia, so they're just eating everything and anything they can. So the Colombian government had to begin a huge campaign to start wiping out these hundreds of hippos that were just running wild in Colombia. Hippos are fucking gnarly, though. (laughs) What a great headline. I watched a, uh, a video the other day of a hippo, because I don't know, I actually went down a hippo, a hippo rabbit hole the other day. Oh, uh, fucking hell, not a hippo rabbit hole. A Jesus. Hi- hippo hole. <laughs> oh, don't go down one of those. <laughs> and, uh, well, I didn't, not, it wasn't a big one. It was a little, hib- a little hole. Look, I was going to say hippo hole, fuck's sake. Hippity hoppity hole. <laughs> hippo. Hippo hop. Hippo hop. And, um, anyway, um, and it was just this hippo just walks along and he's like, I'm going to have a see what's going on over here. And it's uh, three alligators there. And they're, they're, one of them's like, I'm shitting it. I'm fucking shitting it. The other two go, fuck this. Bob, get out of here. And, All right, Frank, I'm coming with you. And they sort of shift back a bit. This hippo just walks along slowly, puts his face down to the alligator. And the alligator's going, oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's breathing on my neck. And this is like an alligator which you'd be, think would be fucking shit scared. Uh, um, not shit scared like a gnarly animal alligator they are scary as they are you know but no this, hippo, this hippo's just going should I eat you nah they're like massive uh, brutal stoners they I've seen really a, are. I've seen a video of a hippo taking out a lion before oh my god they are gnarly it's just because their power of their jaws they, they're one of the um, they kill I think one of the, the animals that kills the most humans each year aren't they but they're just so powerful. Like an elephant has, like, it's got a lot of uh, memory uh, and it's got a lot more emotion and such in a sense compared to, like, a uh, hippo is just like yeah, it's a big well, stoner, real thing slow, is, but I'm going to A, gonna a hippo you. is classed as a predator. Oh, whereas, fuck yeah. uh, whereas uh, you know, like a, uh, an elephant isn't, it's quite is, a peaceful animal. Is there a good hippo horror movie? Well, I saw a joke that someone was. They're making a hungry hippo horror film. Yeah, they should do a hippo movie. Trevor, you'd see it coming, wouldn't you? It's pretty big. Yeah, but you play with that. (laughs) Well, one of the last, well, the last one actually. Imagine in the water, like fucking. Imagine it being like an apocalypse now. Martin Sheen's head just coming out of water, (laughs) and instead it's a hippo. (laughs) Fucking hell! That would scare the fuck out of you right next to your face, and it'd eat your face. Uh, the last headline is probably the most bizarre one from December of last year. Taylor Swift was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year. There we go. Shake it off. Shake it off. See, now I've been DJing like, all these different parties. I DJed on New Year's Eve, by the way. And um, uh, one too bad, one too bad. A bit slow. Um, played some village people, some YMCA. Got them going over that. Uh, I played a few bits and bobs, you know. It was all right. Um, but I did do that. And that, now I do know quite a lot of pop songs where I never knew before. And Shake It Off is a Taylor Swift song. There you go. It's a good little song. Um, we also lost Tina Turner. Tin turn steam of windows. Matthew Perry. Yep. Michael Gambon, Lisa Marie Presley, and lots of other people. But let's move away from the news and stuff, and let's move on to movies. And let's talk about what movies came out, and then we'll move on to horror. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember? <clears throat> do you ever watch League of Gentlemen? Yes. Um, on BBC One or whatever it was on. Did you ever see the? It might be the Christmas special. Or oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Where one of the teacher goes off and comes back dressed as Tina Turner. No. It's fucking I don't remember. Well, if I did, I don't remember it. Ping pong balls as always. 
But but it might be deemed a bit un PC, but it was very funny. Not to turn impression. Well, I'll give you the top movies that came out before we get into horror. Um, number one movie, no surprise, was Barbie. Um, I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't see it. The Super Mario Brothers movie. Oh, uh, that's um, great. I haven't seen it yet, but I want to see it. That's good. The, the second animated Spider-Man movie, Across the Spider-Verse. I yeah, really I like that. the first one. Uh, I didn't. And it, the second one, you get to the end, like, boom, next time. Like, fuck off. Yeah, there's a third and final one coming, isn't there? Don't do that shit. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was number four. Oppenheimer was number five. The Little Mermaid, I didn't see that one either yet. And I've got Disney Plus and I just haven't got around to watching it. No, Avatar, no. The Way of Water, the long-awaited sequel. Um, I heard it wasn't very good. Um, John Wick, Chapter 4, which I know you're not a huge fan of. Um, Indiana Jones was back on the big screen in The Dial of Destiny. And so was Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, because there's a Part 2 coming out soon. I, I wanted to see that, but I missed it. Uh, that's annoying. Um, try another Transformers movie, another Hunger Games one, this time a prequel, another Fast and Furious movie, the 10th one. I think there's only one more coming out, and then he's wrapping that up finally. Um, and a bunch of other stuff, which we're not really going to talk about too much, because now it's time to talk about what came out horror-wise. Ooh, uh, 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 uh. Now, I said this to you earlier, there were 91 horror films released in 2023. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just going to whiz through some of them. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, for example. I didn't see that. I don't know there's a sequel coming out to that. Children of the Corn, there was a remake of that that came out, which I didn't see. I listened to the director on a podcast talking about it. Uh, (laughs) uh, I've looked at reviews. It doesn't bode very well. well. Exorcist Believer, which I'm a believer. It got panned, but I kind of want to see it because I'm a big fan of Exorcist Uh, movies. The director is off the sequel. New, that's news oh, to really? you. Yeah, I don't know if people know that yet. Yeah, the director's off the sequel. <laughs> that's um, news to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, David Gordon Green. I'm not sure what's happening now. For it. it might be another director's going to come on board to do. It, so. But surely he's just redoing what he did with the Halloween movies. Yeah, just, it got. Uh, but Charles was. Um, did he not read the reviews of the third one? Charles was a studio paid like was it three hundred million? I don't know. It's really silly. Some crazy money for the rights. It's just like, what are you doing? Uh, another movie that was on everyone's lips, which I don't even know the game that well. But Five Nights at Freddy's, everybody was yeah, raving I, about I, this. I I have this in my. I have it on my PlayStation. I have the VR. I've played it. I, I've known it for years and years now. Um, I didn't see it. My kids saw it. They loved it. Um, Cocaine Bear, which not really a horror movie, but I watched it again the other day. It is kind of, yeah. I still haven't seen it yet. I know. I know you watched it the other day because you was on the phone to me. I was wishing you a happy birthday, and Elijah, you said we're going to watch Cocaine Bear later, and your nine-year-old son shouted out, "Cocaine!" Yeah. Not knowing what that is at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and we didn't watch it though. I was going to watch it with him, but I didn't watch it. And actually, we're glad didn't actually because there's kids in it doing coke. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Insidious released the Red Door. Fuck, you know how many of these films are I, there? I, 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 I don't know. There's a lot of studios now, uh, Marvel and Disney and all that being one of as well as Blumhouse. Just kind of, I think they're just kind of like, I think you guys are kind of lost it a little bit now, and it's kind of just stuff coming out now. You know, what, one that I did see, which hit Netflix UK, is um um a Swedish movie called Viking Wolf about a girl who becomes a werewolf. Um, oh. And it's quite pretty good. It's what on... Ne- um, what studio is that? Uh, I'm not sure what not, studio not it is. one of the normals? No, it's a, it's yeah. a Swedish movie, so oh, it's good, good. foreign. Um, but so it's on UK Netflix. Check it out if it's still on there. It's worth a watch. I enjoyed it. Um, the Pope's Exorcist. Everyone was talking about this, weren't they? I used to have a fake band called Swedish Love Kill. Wow. Mm. My, we, never, my, we never rehearsed once. My band name, which I'm still holding on to, is My Mannequin Passenger. Ooh. Yeah, I think that would have been, been a good pop, synth pop band in the 80s. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, The Pope's Exorcist. Everyone was talking about this, and apparently it's quite good. Yeah, Boz, bless him, rest his soul. I um, hope you're all right, Boz, you know, where you are. Um, he uh, said it is really good. Yeah, I definitely want to check it out, just like I want to check out 
The Last Voyage of the Demeter. Yes, and I watched that in Whitby. You did, not far from where the boat would have actually, had it been real. Um, come in to port. Come in, yeah, mm. interesting. Another fucking sequel, The Nun 2. Yeah, I did watch it with the kids the other night, Annabelle. Yeah, I like uh, the second Annabelle, I think. I, I, I mean, it's, it's hard kind of, to keep up with them. I was kind of like, uh, <laughs> no, I don't remember any of it. You know. um, Nicolas Cage released a horror movie. Oh. Renfield. Oh. I have no interest. I play Dracula. Uh, it's supposed to be very good, so I'm going to check it out at some point. Yeah. Um, and I heard Cobweb is very good as well. Everybody's talking about Cobweb, saying it's really good. It came out very late in 2023, but it's another one that people are talking about. Um, what other movies came out this year? Knock at the Cabin. Mm. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan's return to form, apparently. Um, again, I haven't seen it because I just I haven't had a chance. I saw it and I uh, don't really remember that much because I wasn't so keen for it. Uh, one that's made a lot of people's number ones for last year was Skinnamarink. Apparently, a very um, visually crazy, terrifying film. Skinnamarink. I-, I can do a nice segue here. Uh, oh, <clears throat> please uh, do. I love a segue. Well, that film is from uh, Bayview Entertainment, uh, who also yes. have released The Shadow of Death, which you can rent and buy now on Amazon. There you go. Indeed. There we link. go. And that's a, like that's a skin of my rinks on that because I have chatted to the director before. Um, uh, yeah, I've not seen the movie. It's supposed to be quite like, um, kind of like you let your imagination go. I think nothing really happens type film. But yeah. that, those films are films as well. So, you know. Um, we had a fourth entry in the Hell House LLC films. We all, um, like, we all like the fourth entry. It's a prequel. <laughs> we do like a fourth entry. Uh, that's uh, fourth, not forced. I said there, just in case anyone's <laughs> questioning. We like a forced entry. <laughs> we don't, Gav. That's wrong. Um, how has LLC Origins, the Carmichael Manor? A bit of a fucking mouthful. I really loved. We covered the first one. It's a great movie. The, the second the end one of the was third all right. One's just silly. Third one was whack, man. Yeah. So I don't know, but is the fourth done all right? I don't know. It's done okay. I think if you like your found footage, then it's, it's okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but uh, I'll probably check it out at some point, I should imagine. Um, what other stuff came out? We also had uh, A Haunting in Venice. Yeah, yeah, I went to cinema and watched that. I, don't, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I really class it as horror, but it's definitely it's not horror, no. in that vein. Oh. And Scream 6. It's shot like 6. a horror movie, but it's not a horror movie. Scream 6. Did you check out Scream 6? Uh, uh, no, I've actually... Uh, it's on all the... All the around Friday 13th, even I've got them. Or on uh, Paramount. Um, no, well, Scream, I, you mean? It screams out Friday 13th it's on Paramount. Oh, okay, sorry. And um, I, because I went to the cinema and watched part five and instantly did not like it. And then I tried watching part five again and never made it all the way through. I was watching it with Charlie, or formerly known as Jay. Um, uh, and we kind of just started talking about something else. Should we get some food? And we never went back to it. And I've just. Uh, not and I think I'm not going to like part six. I just I don't know why. I'm just it's See, not it's not because I'm going. Oh, it's not got. Sin-. It's just like I'm not the target audience. I don't think for those films. Then um, that's interesting because I was very late to the table on screen. But, five. I, know, I, only, but uh, I know that you like them. But I just feel like I'm no, not no, that no, audience. Not at all. Uh, oh, I thought I, you liked the I, fifth one. I loved Scream Five. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, didn't yeah, like four. Um, and I didn't think three was that good either. Oh, but I, li- I like I like four. I like one and two, um, but five really captured me something about it i thought no. wow okay I, I, I don't think i'm that audience fair enough mm. so so x came so have out. you not seen part six then? no i have not no okay. not yet no. so x came out now the last Saw movie i watched was the um the book of whatever it's called the one with chris rock yeah i don't know i i, I saw saw three spiral that's, the book of saw. that's it you haven't seen any of the other souls since three Bloody hell. Uh, I I thought it was a bit gross. I I don't don't really need that in my life, to be honest. Fair enough. One film I did watch, which came out in 2023, was the one that came out on Disney Plus, or Hulu in the US, and that was No One Will Save You. Um, The dialogue-free movie about a girl on her own during an alien invasion, which was good. It definitely didn't live up to the hype that everybody said. I enjoyed it, though, but... um, 
I, it wasn't like a, a 10 out of 10. It was more like a, just like a 6 out of 10. It was slightly above average. I enjoyed it, though. Not bad. You not, didn't? Not for me. No. no. You went to watch Thanksgiving. I, I Yeah, I, I, I think I went too harsh on this when I talked about it on our podcast before. I, well, not harsh on it. I don't think I gave it credit enough for the fact that it's nice to have a slasher movie back in. And it was fun. There was some good stuff in it. And I'm actually quite happy. I was like, it doesn't need to be have a sequel. And it didn't. At the same time, I've listened to Eli Roth now, and he's been like, no, I'd like to like try and make a new franchise. And I'm like, yeah, fair enough. If you're going to come back with another slasher movie, a load of people getting killed in a town, to be fair, it'd be nice to have that again, and that'd be quite reminiscent of the olden movies, where Scream, in fact, did. You know, and I, I think he could probably pull that off. For, I reckon he could probably do... I reckon it'd probably be make three of them. I like Eli Roth, and I do really want him to do well, but his movies don't always hit. Right, but no, I still no. think if you're coming out the gate with Hostel and Cabin no, Fever... It, it, to be fair, <clears> I, I, I like Cabin Fever, Hostel, and I'd say like Thanksgiving, I really dig those movies, you know. Cool, man. Well, the the one movie that I... Another movie that I did see from last year, which is probably my favourite of the few 2023 horror movies, and I know you didn't like it, but I really liked Evil Dead Rise. I saw that on my own at the no, cinema. No, I did, I did like it. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said you didn't like it. I do apologise. No, 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 I um, did like it. I don't think I was blown away by it, but I did I did like it. I actually started watching it again the other day, and I got to that halfway through, and I kind of stopped. But I, I kind of enjoyed the lead-up to it again, actually. Um, Mr. Cronenberg's son, Brandon, directed Infinity Pool, which, again, people are saying this is in their top three of the year. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I hear it's really, really body horror. You probably wouldn't like it very much. <laughs> Um, but I've heard it's what is it really with the good. Cronenberg family. I don't know, man. Well, I wouldn't like to go to dinner at their house. Table. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dad, I had a dream the other day about my face morphing into my ass, and everyone was fucking it. <laughs> uh, Megan came out, which I haven't seen. And but, I'm um, not watching that. My in-laws again. I highly not recommended the target this to me. Audience. My in-laws have bought this for me on Sky sky movies and they insist that i watch it with them why because they loved it oh no but then that means that they could just be staring at you while you're watching going huh 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 yeah it's great yeah another movie uh i haven't seen but i've heard is amazing is talk to me um which which came out in 2023 oh, yeah, and lots of people it. good good stuff yeah yeah it's um a four bunch of kids well a bunch of kids um they're not kids two young lads are not in the film business they're like youtubers i think they're quite popular though um just to go and make a movie their first film's pretty fucking good yeah but they're they are both bonkers they're both adhd ridden they're just fucking all over the place these twins <laughs> they were on joe rogan's podcast it's like whoa oh my god these two you know like balls bouncing off the walls at each other like really full on what the fuck well, Australian the last one as well. The last one to mention is the one that has definitely made a lot of people's number one, um, and that is a film called When Evil Lurks. Yeah, I uh, think Sarah said this was good. Yeah, it's uh, a couple of brothers. It? I haven't, but I, it's on, I, I've got to catch up on my 2023s, obviously. I'm so behind. I spent last year watching all the 2022 movies I hadn't seen. So I'll probably do this year. I'm never going to catch up, basically. <laughs> it's going to yeah, be back here behind. You will. It'll be when the kids start to grow up and give you a bit of moments, time to be able to do it. But apparently um, it's very good, very brutal, got some good deaths in it, and actually quite scary. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another one um, to mention. So that's pretty much the bunch. As happened last year, I wasn't able to comment on many of those because I hadn't seen a lot of them. But... Um, you thankfully thank god i do a podcast with you because you've seen a lot of them uh crazy year lots of ai lots of um war and earthquakes and 91 hour films probably only about 10 of them any good most of them sequels um but i would highly recommend evil dead rise out of the very few that i've seen is there anything that sticks out for you? I say probably Thanksgiving is the one that you were most hyped about, really, after you watched it. Yeah, Thanksgiving was fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, Thanksgiving. One of my favourite films, which wasn't a horror film, which came out last year, was Extraction 2. 
Yeah, that's all right. Really good. I like that. There we go. All right, Gav. Well, we have actually said our welcome in 2023. The quantum metaphysical cells that are used to power my oh, ship are starting to... Let's change the seating positions again this time, please. You want to sit on my lap, yeah? I guess. Okay. Do you want to face me this time? Or do you want to do it that way? <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, the other, it, it, I don't know. It seems just as bad going to sit in the other way. Let's just face each other. You can look over my shoulder. No, I'll look I'm over sitting yours. out sideways. Okay. So Weird. you're like actually just a seat. Yeah, that's fine. All right, then. Right. Well, let's hit these knobs. Not that one. This one. And oh. uh, but thank you, 2023. We'll be back again in a, in a year's time to look at 2024. Oh, it's up. I can feel it. Oh, it's, can you feel it? Can you feel it? <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> what plaything can you offer me today? The planet <laughs> Earth. It's an attack! Pathetic earthlings! Who can save you now? Flash! They'll kill you! Let's all team up and fight him. Prepare for torture! I want him. Stop at nothing! We only have 14 hours to save the Earth. Flash Gordon is still alive. Gordon's alive? <laughs> Die! Yes! Must be my lucky day. Cool, so that was the trader for Flash Gordon. So, uh, he'll save every one of us. Dun, um, dun, dun, dun. So here is what Matthew says about Flash Gordon. He actually starts with Flash, uh, saviour of the universe. <laughs> uh, he said, this is what I would call an absolutely perfect Sunday banger for all ages. Whether you're a kid stuck inside due to the rain, a teenager in bed hungover, or an adult who just wants some escapism from life, then this is the film for you. I saw this film when I was very young, probably five or six, and I instantly fell in love, and I have indeed loved it ever since. For me, there are several factors which make this, which make this film stand head and shoulders above all other fantasy and sci-fi films. The actors are perfect perfectly and brilliantly cast Brian Blessed, Timothy Dalton, Max von Sydow are the standouts the costumes and the settings are pure Oscar worthy the script and all the one liners are top notch however above all of this is the soundtrack which complements this film I understand that this is a polarising view but this knocks the snot out of anything that John Williams did for Star Wars hear me out when the Hawkmen descend onto War Rocket Ajax and then Brian May's guitar blasts in, I feel like I can take on the world. As a kid, I would run into the kitchen and kick the bin over. I was so pumped. <laughs> this, this film looks like it's just like, if you're trying to explain to someone what's cocaine, it's like, this film <laughs> is cocaine. <laughs> He said, honestly, it enhances this scene above the attack of the Death Star for me. The downside for me, though, with this film is the tone. I still, to this day, cannot tell if the writer set out to make this a serious film uh, or if it's a parody of the sci-fi genre. Anyway, I'm super interested to hear your views on this. It's got a big thumbs up from me, and I'm primed for Gav not appreciating the soundtrack and saying bad things about Brian May. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, right, it's Brian May. I found this... Um for some reason I, this I've made money from this soundtrack um, I found it at car boot sales on vinyl multiple times to the point where I was Amazing. like to a point where I'd be like there's because you'd see this the bright yellow front cover of just Flash Gordon small words and I'd see it and be like well I've already got a copy at home because I had one for years and I'd listen to it as a great soundtrack I would know I'm not going to this at all and I would get it and I'd just sell them on eBay and I'd find them all the time <laughs> I don't know why Really, I think it's because I think it's because Queen was extremely popular. So then, loads of people would have gone out and gone, "Oh, no, it's a Queen album." They've got it home and been like, "The fuck is this?" Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Flash Gord, what? Yeah, so it's I got don't all the, think, um, and that's why there's a lot of copies around. It's got all the dialogue all over it, hasn't it? Well, let's do the uh, synopsis. Um, one of my favourite synopses I've ever but, read out in 10 years of podcasting this. Do, do, do you know, do we know why? I'm not asking because I know. I mean, do we know why Queen did the soundtrack? Because Pink Floyd turned it down. 
because Queen didn't do any other soundtracks. No, uh, they did. They did Highlander. Did they? They did the Highlander well, soundtrack. No, I've never heard that. I need to listen to that. Now. I don't really yeah. know Highlander that very well. I watched it as a kid. I was very confused. Um, they did It's a Kind of Magic. That's the Highlander. Is it? Yeah. First Highlander movie. Um, oh. So let's read the synopsis out. Again, this is one of my favourite synopsis to have ever read out. Uh, it's one sentence, and it's got it all in it. And again, think cocaine when I read this out. Here we go. Flash, 1980. A football player and his friends travel to the planet Mongo and find themselves fighting the tyranny of Ming the Merciless to save the Earth. Did what? Fuck you, now. A football player and his friends travel to the planet Mongo. We used to class sometimes say Mongos when, like, um, you, uh, when you're skating along, but you use your... Uh, uh, you have your back foot on the... You have your board on the back of the foot on the back of the board, and the other front foot is pushing unnaturally, and then so it steps onto the front board. I can't explain it to a non skateboarder. It's not the natural way of pushing, so we used to call that like Mongo pushing, you know. I do know what you mean. Good. Um, Good. There's, there's another word for it, because I used to play Tony Hawk, so I know. I was never a huge skateboarder, but I used to play Tony Hawk, so I'm familiar with a lot of the terminology. Um, well, let's give, give you a few facts and stuff around this, first of all, then we'll get into this crazy cult camp classic. I am going to say, speaking on the casting, I don't actually, this might be very, like, people might not like this opinion, I don't think the dude that plays Flash Gordon's very good, and I think that should have been cast better. Wow, that wasn't his voice. That was probably the reason, one of the reasons. Yeah, um, but, but he just doesn't have like a charisma as like the person that should have been Flash Gordon. Now I feel like it could have been played well better. Well, this film basically wouldn't have been uh, Star Wars wouldn't have happened without this film because George Lucas wanted to get the rights to make a Flash Gordon movie because Flash Gordon was obviously very old um series of films and uh serials and but he couldn't get the rights so in the end he made his own flash gordon which was the first star wars movie um so that's one interesting fact is that george lucas was involved um kurt russell was for ages going to be cast as flash gordon and turned it down in the end um he just didn't feel he had enough uh personality to play that character which is interesting who's gonna be who sorry Kurt Russell was going to be um, how old Flash Gordon. Was, how old was he at this point? Uh, well, when did Escape from New York come out? 1980? Yeah. So, same age, because this came out in 1980. So, it had been fun to play it. I, it had been quite cool. Sergio Leone was for ages in talks to direct. What and turned, the fuck? Turned, turned it down in the end as well. well we, that had been a weird, that might have been epic. Pink Floyd said they were too above a film soundtrack, um, but they really wanted a band oh, that would fuck ca- off. <laughs> they really wanted a, fucking wall. They wanted a band that would really capture the crazy psychedelics. And in the end, they asked Queen. Queen were really excited to do it, but Dino De Laurentiis, the producer, said he'd never heard of them. And oh, when they Queen? said, uh, "Yes, in 1979, he'd never heard of Queen," and they said. "We've got great news. Queen have agreed to do the soundtrack for us." And he said, "Who are the Queens?" To be fair, you know, it Brian was Blessed pre-internet. Brian Blessed took uh, a very small pay um, pay, pa- pay packet. He only took thirty thousand pounds for his role because it was a dream come true for him to land a role in a Flash Gordon movie. Also, he probably just wanted to run around in a nappy with some big gold wings. He's got good muscly legs in this, I tell you. But apparently, he kept ruining shoot shots because. He kept going pew pew and then forgetting he was saying it out loud. <laughs> so they had to keep cutting and redoing some of it. He fucking does that. <laughs> I, I saw I saw him. I sent that picture, didn't I? Yes, you did see him. Did he? Still, just still before going. Christmas uh, at a convention. I was like, oh, that is probably blessed. 
everyone involved in this was so sure that it would do well that they were going to make a trilogy i've got very, very quickly i've got a brian Bresser story um he he lives he lives like a, at least within 20 mile radius of me <laughs> um well we used to i don't but there's a dude that i know and he said he, he, he said he would see him quite often and he'd be like hello brian how are you do you know with that local sort of thing like the town or village <clears throat> and he came out one day and brian fall, went to fall over slipped on ice or something and he grabbed grabbed him and he grabbed him when he grabbed him he put his own back out <laughs> jesus christ put your back out helping brian blessed oh that's a story to tell the kids isn't it yeah um a couple of other quick facts as well max monsido who played ming the merciless's costume was so heavy that whenever they said cut he had to lie down because he couldn't stand in it for too long who mings yeah Oh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty epic, isn't it? Uh, and a lot of the film was I, all I, improvised. I, I know someone called Ming as well. Do you? Yeah. Uh-huh. Is he merciless? No. Nice guy, then. Yeah. Did, did, did I say this? And you've asked me this already. Or what? I keep feel like I keep seeing f- my future. <laughs> I keep all of a sudden being like, have I already done this? And I was, no, I haven't. Okay. You might you might have told me, but we've been podcasting for ten years, so it's hard to remember but all that's the stories. The problem, and I do want to say this, and I'm like, who have I talked to about what? I don't I don't remember anymore. I'm not Sarah. I'm Dan. Oh yeah. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, Sam Jones, who played um, Flash, fell out with Dino De Laurentiis because he didn't realise that they were going to dub him over. Yeah, I didn't um, realise it was a dub as well. So he did quite a good job. He was very cross about this, but they didn't think his voice was heroic enough. Um, They just wanted him for his looks and his build, basically. Um, I don't think he's got a great look. You don't? No, I think someone could have done better. Um, And, yeah, oh, Brian Blessed said, because he knows her personally, Brian Blessed said, Flash Gordon is the Queen's, or he knew her personally, the Queen's number one film of all time. Can you imagine her sitting there on Boxing Day? The Queen's box of favourite Street? film is Flash Gordon. Um, Philip, what's on Channel 4 this well, afternoon? Philip, would you put your hand in that thing? <laughs> Philip, pass me the quality streets. This is my favourite bit. Put, put, the corgi, put the corgi in the hole. See if it gets bitten first. Is that what she says? Put slip, the corgi in the hole. Slip the it? corgis in the holes. <laughs> So I hope Matthew's proud of the tangents he's produced here. So there we go. There's a few little facts behind the scenes there. Um, let's talk about when we first saw this and uh, and that kind of thing, memories of it, and then Fucking we'll get into... I was a young kid and it was on TV one day and I went, what the f- shit is this? I don't remember when. I was a kid, though. It literally... It is made to appeal to a five-year-old boy or girl, I guess. I didn't know what was going on, but like, yeah, it was. There's nothing in it, which is uh, because uh, watched it back with Sarah. Sarah's like, oh, I've not seen it since I was a kid as well. And so I actually bought it because it was like, it was three pound fifty to rent on Amazon or three pound ninety nine to buy. I and did I exactly like, well, the I'll same thing. Then. That's what I did, and I bought it. So now I've got a digital copy on Prime of it. Same as. So <clears throat> I was like, well, fuck it, I just buy it, um, and. Yeah, it was just a weird thing to watch again. And remembering it was like really like the bad things about it is the only thing I really could remember was the putting the hands in the thing with Timothy Dalton with James Bond. That's all I could remember. You know. Yeah, it's a bit bit um Obviously way before he James Bond. Some of it was a bit scary. Um well, uh, yeah, same here, really. It's hard to remember the first time I saw it because it was just always on yeah, at Christmas on, yeah, yeah. On, t- on TV. But and it, I know... It, it, I think it's... Sorry, I will let you speak. I will allow it. Um, I, <laughs> it I, I think it's weird. It's quite, it's quite fantasy, but it's not that scary. It could be played at 11 o'clock in the morning on BBC Two or whatever. But then you've got people getting stabbed with spikes and whipped it, as well. Do you know what got, I mean? It's, it has got some darkness <clears throat> to it. The whole like fight they're gonna die. The spikes there and that whole yeah. It, so it's a weird. It's a really weird. This I do find this film very <laughs> uneven. Well, before I it is before I talk about my memories of it, I think what I would say is this film was made in '79, and there weren't really any science fiction space films out other than Star Wars and Alien. 
and obviously like a space odyssey and this is well made it's well th- th- produced th- this yeah people didn't know what a science fiction movie looked like so they weren't these gritty dark but this is a this is a bright colorful so, film so you had star wars you had um space odyssey you had alien you had this as at this point space movies could look like anything you know these science fiction space movies could look like absolutely anything and this was the more comic booky bright and colorful end of it really to show you that it's not all hiding in the dark from a xenomorph it, it's it could be really bright and is you can sense that this is based on very old serials in the in the u.s that people with kids would have gone to watch on a saturday morning at the cinema mm. you know i've seen some of the old black and whites as well and um but but going on to yeah so i saw it a bunch of times but i think i, I bonded with my dad over this a lot because my dad still is a huge queen fan you know they are indisputably one of the best bands in the world whether you're into rock or not freddie mercury is probably the best front man to, for a band ever they they, they are uh an, an incredible band um they are, well, all four they, of them individually just, their music's just such a like a, what the hell because it's just what they've done it's they they and weird. they don't stick to one genre although they're within rock they try every different type and each band member well, it's just, is it's just like so talented operatic rock it's just like the fuck <laughs> what is going on but because of that i bonded with my dad because he had the soundtrack we listened to it in the car uh, but i would watch this with him as well and it's one of those ones that you just kind of know the movie inside out and as you get older you realize oh there's actually a bit more adult stuff with this like the whole stuff with princess aura basically having sex with half the galaxy because she's just so hot that everybody wants to get with her you don't notice these things as a kid um one thing i wanted to mention a little link to um, something we talked about earlier is the director uh, who is Brian Hodges and he directed sorry Mike Hodges and he directed Get Carter which you talked about earlier um, he also directed Black Rainbow which I think you've seen that one have you seen Black Rainbow or am I thinking of another film with Rainbow in the title 1989 uh, but yeah but I I, 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 the, the, yeah, the Black Rain, but, but that's not, that's a different director. It's like a, I'll think of a different film, that is. Uh, I think I'm thinking of a different film as well. Oh, well. That's well, the anyway. person that did Mandy, directed Mandy, did like the Black oh, Rainbow yeah. or something like that. It, yeah. There's another film with the rainbow in it, isn't there? But anyway, but Mike Hodges, he weirdly directed Get, um, Get Carter, which we talked about earlier, which is weird. Um, but yeah, so... This movie, the cast, let's just quickly whiz through a couple of the cast. Sam Jones, obviously, is Flash. There's a really fantastic documentary called, I think it's called Life After Flash. Yeah, about, I, didn't, I didn't see it. It's really good, really fun. Is it sad? Uh, uh, not really, because he kind of went bankrupt, I think, and then came back. And now he's kind of doing the Bruce Campbell thing of turning up at loads of Comic Cons and everyone loves him again. And obviously, he was in Ted as himself, wasn't he? Have you seen Ted? Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, and some of the other cast members, like Max von Sydow, is cast as Ming the Merciless, and Timothy Dalton showing up as a little Robin Hood in space kind of guy. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's a weird one that Brian Blessed is a nappy wearing winged man, and uh, Richard O'Brien from the Rocky Horror Show in the Crystal Maze turning up just briefly. Dude, dude from a uh, Peter Duncan, is it, or something from a uh, Blue Peter? Yes. Um, Oh, I can't remember his name now. You are right. I'm trying to. I'm looking down the list now. Is it Peter Wingard? Is that who you thinking of? Saint Duncan, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, that's not on my. Anyway, it's list. Blue Peter presenter, which is a uh, was a TV show uh, for kids uh, in the week. Um, very, very nice, wholesome TV show, wasn't it? it show you yeah. lovely things. Yeah, it would show you like animals, and it would show you like how to make something out of craft. Very and then wholesome. They're... Yeah, and I don't think any of the uh, hosts were pedos, so you know, kept its wholesomeness there. We hope not. Um, wow. Well, I mean, everybody knows Flash Gordon, but we will go through uh, the plot and talk about some of the more notable scenes. No, uh, t- and no t- please. Can you give me a slight backstory of Flash Gordon? It's a comic, right? Yeah. 
Uh, well, it's a it's a comic strip, I believe, but also like a serial and a TV show. So it's very old. Um, it goes right the way back to, I believe, the 50s, maybe even before then, uh, perhaps. It was sort of in the same vein as Tarzan and how those sort of old, very old properties, um, just very beloved by, like Spielberg would have gone to watch this sort of TV show and this serial every Saturday morning, you know. It's one of those ones that's... And because it's it's fantasy and sci-fi all in one, isn't it? Mm. Um, this this is a bit like more like uh, probably another reason I really liked this as a kid. It's very He-Man as well. I was just thinking, is this canon? No, it's not, but it should be a canon film because yeah, it kind of and it's bigger though. It's in bigger scope though, but it yeah. is kind of like the He-Man, but a larger scoped version. Well, it's De Laurentiis, so you know it's similar to canon, isn't it? anything that says Dina De Laurentiis at the beginning, you think, well, I kind of know what I'm getting here. This is going to be yeah. cheap and cheerful. Um, yes, Flash Gordon. Um, let's get into it. Let's get into it. So it starts off with just very casual. Hot hell. Clytus, I'm bored. I want something to play Clytus, with. I'm bored. That's the beginning of the records. I know the records so much more than I do the actual film. And basically, I'm bored. Ming the Merciless is bored, and he wants something to play with. So Clytus says, "Oh well, there's a, a planet called Earth. This what is what you'll be able to do with AI. AI, I'm bored." So he says, "Why don't you do something to Earth?" And he says, "Oh, that's a good idea. I'll uh, I'll send some earthquakes, um, and I'll send some hot hail down as well. And while all this sort of bad weather is hitting the Earth, we get the score kick in from Queen Brian May." Oh, just, just everything about this soundtrack it shouldn't work. You sh- a Queen soundtrack on a sci-fi fantasy, but of course it does work. No, no, it's I, so out there. No, I think I think it would work. Yeah, and we get all this incredible comic book art for the credits, sort of getting you in the mood. Like, as a kid, this the credits for this got me so hyped. Well, is this aimed at for kids? because it would be my parents would be like there you go there's your you know plonk me in front of it i think this was aimed at big kids and kids do you know what i mean i don't think this was aimed at and i'm not taking anything away from this but i don't think this was aimed at like the intellectual cinema goer do you know what i mean this was aimed at people who wanted to be entertained big kids and kids um it's difficult though i don't who who is it aimed at that is true us <laughs> there we go oh, uh, uh, yeah yeah middle-aged cult people and 2024 podcasters yeah <laughs> absolutely there we go yeah uh so the hot hail starts hitting and we meet our hero blonde sexy flash gordon he's a, actually a very charming man i actually always thought he's a bit of a seedy hunk like cd sort of womanizer but actually he comes across as quite a nice almost a bit dumb charming guy he's do you know what i mean a serial killer he probably is a serial killer he's got dead dogs in the back of his car mm. well he's in his car when the hail hits and he's about to board a private jet yep. and he spots dale played by melody anderson who is a travel agent weird and he gets on the plane with her and he says uh, oh nice to meet you i'm flash gordon i'm an american footballer travel agents go on private jets then so that's their way to travel. That's what he says to her, isn't he? He says, never thought I'd see a travel agent on a private jet. But maybe, I don't know. Um, and while they're on the plane, they are obviously hit with turbulence and hailstones and wind and tornadoes and everything else. And Dale is scared and Flash says to her, look, it's fine. We'll get through this. And he, he ends up talking to her and distracting her from what's happening. He's an American footballer, and that, that, he's like popular, isn't he? And he's, he, that's why he's Flash Gordon. He's just called Gordon. Uh, I don't know what his real name is. Is something it not Gordon? Gordon. Then? No, it'd be like his name's not Gordon. It'd be like Jeff Gordon or something. But they call him Flash because he's so fast on the field. Would be funny though if she said, "Why do they call you Flash?" And then we find out that we're actually watching Flesh Gordon, the porn version, and it's oh. just getting his getting his todger out. Yeah, I was going to say, Flash. that's what he, that's why he's actually called Flash, because he's constantly got his dick out. Yeah, he's, Flash, he's a flasher, he's a peeping Tom, or a pervert. 
Well, things go wrong, Gav, because we get some red clouds blocking out the sun. Now, any time you see red clouds Fucking in the sky... Absolutely. Every time I walk down the street, all of a sudden, red fog rolls in, red smoke, red red smog, anything like that, I'm out of there. My face and is going to melt. Going back to something Matthew said, which leads into the next scene, is was this intended to be funny at times? I think it was. I think yeah, this yeah. was... It's there's very, a slight, very much tongue-in-cheek in this film. There's an element almost of carry-on style humour at times in this. I, is the... Yeah, the director maybe sort of pushing that a little bit because it, it's very campy. Yeah. And what I mean by that in the next scene is, the next scene we see is Dr. Zarkov and his assistant asleep in their beds in their lab. And suddenly one of the beds catches fire because a hot hail has come through the ceiling. And he just wakes up and put, he's like, oh, my bed's on fire. Yeah. So he doesn't even really sort of that scared about it. No. And Dr. Zarkov says, this is everything I've been predicting for the last few years, an attack on Earth. He's almost ecstatic that finally I can prove them all right. Great. And he's got a rocket that he's built. <laughs> this is so good. And he's built this so that he can go on a counter attack if the Earth is ever attacked, which it currently is being. It's pretty bloody handy then. And he says to his assistant, right, we're getting in this. And he's, his assistant says, fuck that. I'm not getting in your rocket. I'm running. And he pulls a gun on him and says, get in the rocket. This was like me and you earlier in the time team. It was. You were the one trying to run away. And yeah. I had the gun saying, get in the rocket, Gav. Press these buttons. So he runs away. He needs, he needs someone to keep a foot on a, lead, a pedal or something. Yeah, he needs two, at least two people of, to operate it. If you've got a spaceship here, some person has to keep their foot on a pedal to get it going. I'm not going in it. Sounds like Wallace and Gromit to me. It is Wallace and Gromit. Um, now, cutting back to the private jet, Flash realises that the pilots have been sucked out of the cockpit and no one's flying the plane and there's a great big hole in the front of the plane, which is never a good sign. Never a good sign. So Flash says, well, I guess I'll have to try and flash this plane. She says, can you, can you fly? He says, mm, not really. And he manages to sort of fly it a little bit. I wonder, what will that be like? Do you know what I mean? Like, how often is that ever going to happen to people? It's very, 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 very rarely. Is it you're in a situation where you have to be a pilot with no experience ever? Imagine that through. At the same time, you're going to get in the point and go... Yeah, have a little giggle to yourself. This my wife, my wife put this question to me the other day out of the blue. She said, no, "Nothing to do with Flash Gordon or anything." She just looked at me one day, and she must be reading an article. And she said, "If you were in a plane and you were the only person that could fly it, and you had radio help of what to do to land it, yeah, fuck yeah. could you do it?" I'll do it. I said, "I said no, I fucking couldn't." Really? Oh, I'll jump straight in there. I fucking, I'd be. Why? Let me. I'm in there. Get in there with me. Cut. Let's go. Oh great! Well, at least if I'm ever in a plane with no, you, if you if you can po if you can co-pilot with me, absolutely no problem. I'll take control. All I, right. I literally want to almost want to do it. I might even have to fucking take out everybody in the airplane. So let's no, let's not say that. I don't want the don't want to be picked up on the FBI's yeah. list. No way. Let's <laughs> let's move that on. That was a joke. So Flash manages to crash the plane into Doctor Zarkov's lab. And um, Dr. Zarkov sort of says, oh, fantastic. I'm glad you guys are okay. Are you harmed? And they're like, no, no, we're absolutely fine. Even though we've just crashed a plane into, you know, your science lab. It's all fine. And he says, great. Well, you'll probably want to use, your, use my phone to, to call whoever, like the hospital or the doctors. Um, so why don't you use my phone that's in this little cockpit? And they're like, oh, okay. And he's basically tricking them into thinking his rocket is a phone booth. He says, come on in, you get, use my phone. And they get in there and they're saying, well, I can't see a phone in here. At this point, I didn't think Flash was uh, very, very intelligent. No, I don't think he is. Bless him. <laughs> Too many hits to the head during playing football. Is he a bit of a jock, do you think? Yeah, I think he is. But he's a lovely one. He's not like a horrible jock. He's a charming jock. So Zarkov pulls his gun on them and he says, right, listen to me. The rocket looks well shit. It does. He says, listen to me, you two. We've got 11 days before the moon destroys the Earth and you two are going to help me counterattack this invasion in this rocket. They have a bit of a, a, a fight uh, and buttons get pushed by accident and the rocket blasts off and we see a practical effects of a rocket. <coughs> and to our UK listeners, 
who will remember the child childhood program Button Moon. Button Moon, Button Moon. The rocket reminds me a little bit of uh, Mr. S- Mr. Spoon's rocket in that. I used to like that program as a little yeah. nipper. It's good. Yeah. My kids watch it on, on um, really? YouTube. Really? Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, it's cute. Uh, so, yeah, the rocket blasts off, and they are on the counterattack, even though Flash and Dale don't really want to be involved in it. No. On the way there, though, they are spotted by Ming's men. They say, we've spotted something on the uh, the radar, Ming. And uh, they bring the rocket in. They wake them up and they're al- and they wake up um, and they're alive and they're on the planet Mongo. Yeah, imagine that. It would be it be shocking. Um, everybody's wearing weird fucking outfits. Uh, he says, "I don't think we're there are friends." And someone shoots him and they get zapped. And I've written a note here: Quality Street. Now let me explain what I mean by that for anybody. Outside of the UK, where I don't think Quality Street is sold. Quality Street is a big tin of <clears throat> chocolates that you get at Christmas in the UK. And each chocolate is individually wrapped in very shiny, different coloured wrappers. Now, every single person in this throne room we're about to meet looks like they're a different Quality Street. You've got triangular purple ones. You've got big green square ones, little orange ones, and they're all shiny and glittery. And I think if there was a lit flame in there, those costumes would go up in a split second. Yeah. But they are incredible costumes nonetheless. Yeah. Now a weird floating droid appears uh, with a fisheye lens on it. (laughs) And it says, stay where you are, prisoners. And it says, oh, lizard man, I can see you. And this crazy lizard man behind them who's trying to escape just gets destroyed immediately by the floating robot blob. They get rid of Dr. Zarkov's gun and they drag them all into the throne room with with all the uh, different races of aliens that I mentioned, the quality streets. Brian Blessed's in there in his nappy with his bird men. (laughs) It's it's just like, what is going on? It's a very epic epic set, I've got to say. It's very bright and red and very like, what the fuck? It's quite grand in a cheesy kind of way. Come on, man. How much cocaine was going on with Dino De Laurentiis and his people? Honestly, this movie is the epitome of what cocaine is. What is cocaine? Flash Gordon. Uh, Just watch the movie, Flash Gordon. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's incredible visuals. No, it's just fucking like... It's just... It's like, we could do this, or... Let's do some cocaine. We could do this. The problem is, the older this film gets, the less it'll be... New audiences will be able to connect with it. Like, if I show this to Jack and Edith in about ten years' time, they'll look at me like, "What the fuck is going on in this, Dad? I don't understand why I, you're showing me this film." I thought I was showing it to Elijah, <laughs> but um, I didn't bother in the end. It's quite hard because his his attention span is just not great. It's just children now. They're they're YouTuber YouTubers, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah, well, he's, he's not. He doesn't have TikTok. He's too young for that. But YouTube, um, and it's just like it's constant movement. Um, <clears> so I don't know. It's quite hard. He did lie though. He really enjoyed Mad Max Fury Road, <laughs> which oh, we good. watched. Jesus Christ, he's fine with it. The thing is though, it, it's great when Gore or if is it, it's not any Gore in that really. But if anything comes up, he's just um, like I say. You know, obviously, that's not real. He goes, yeah, I know, and he's just kind of like we we talk about it stuff. But no, Mad Max Fury Road finished. He went, that was amazing. <laughs> oh. It is amazing. Yeah, I think it's just like, what the hell, like I was. But so it's quite fun for him to do that. So the setting we we were introduced, so just to recap, Flash has been dragged into a rocket, he crashed it into Planet Mongo, and he's been dragged into a throne room full of different species of races of aliens. Some of them have got wings, some of them look like robots. And we are introduced to Ming. Ming the Merciless enters the room to some fabulous synth score. What are your thoughts on the synth score of this? Um, Yeah, no, it's really good. It's a very ominous... um, I love synths. Uh, I use them most of the time when I score things. I'm kind of gutted sometimes when I have to go naturalistic and can't use synths. Um, uh, so I really enjoyed it on the Star Wars Sanctuary Moon Deadbolt Films YouTube. Check that out and watch that. Um, I really love synths. So yeah, it's, it's good. It's, it's just one. It's just like one big layered synth 
line. Do you think an accordion would have worked for this scene? It would have worked at all, no. It would have been absolutely <laughs> fucking just like maybe want to like smash the TV. Brian May on the accordion. I don't want to ever be down a pub with Brian May with an accordion. Okay. I'd be down the pub with Brian May, though. No, not Brian May. Sorry, I was thinking Brian Blessed with an accordion down the pub. Bloody hell. <laughs> oh, oh, Brian May. Brian May, is, he's fine. It's just that just that hair. Get rid of that hair. I know it's a signature, but it's like the it's like you've got Slash, he's kind of cool, and then you've got Brian May. It's, it's like your little version. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> What are you doing? I think Brian May is an incredible musician. Um, the only film I'm really gutted with is when um, We Will Rock You, and you go through that, it's a really small, a short song. Boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba. And then you like, right, the guitar goes, Ew! and then it goes in, and it's like, meh, 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 and like, oh, fucking hell, you could have re- you built this up so much with that drum beat, and it's just like, so yes, yeah, me only thing. There you go. Fair enough. Sorry. Well, they uh, the Hawkmen talk about tributes for um, Ming, so they obviously bring sacrifices and tributes to Ming. Ming rules this this region. There's multiple moons floating around the planet Mongo with different kingdoms on each moon, and we also meet soon to be a James Bond, Timothy Dalton, uh, yeah. who is Prince Baron of the Tree Men. So these are the tree men. They're a bit like Robin Hood and his merry men. They it's live in a treetop a, kingdom. It's such a weird. What? It's such a weird movie, though, isn't it? It is. And Brian Blessed and Timothy Dalton are about to throw down, but luckily, Goldface Skeletor, Clytus. So I always thought he looked a bit like Skeletor as a kid. Yeah. He's he's Ming's right hand man, and he steps in and he stops him from fighting and. Um, he says, right, well, I need a, I need whatever kingdom it is, you to come and show me your, your worth. And so Ming calls this guy up and he says, look, you've got my loyalty. He says, okay, great, fall on your sword. And he says, what? He says, fall on your sword, kill it's, yourself. It's, it's, an, it's like a little bit like, damn you, damn. Like, so it's t- called, called, his, called his bluff. Well, he turns around and he's like, okay, I will. And he pulls his sword and then he says, death to Ming. And he tries to kill Ming. And Ming freezes him with a like, freeze fray and uh, kills him. And <laughs> well, after all of this, Flash just turns to Dale and says, hmm, this Ming is a psycho. <laughs> but the robot hears that and goes, this Ming is a psycho. And like, basically, you know, grasses him up to Ming. So... There we go. Princess Aura steps into the room. Now, she is the hot daughter of Ming, who everybody wants a piece of, and most people are getting. And she sees Flash Gordon, and her first thought is, yeah, I want to flash his Gordon, definitely. That's the first thing she thinks when she sees him. She's literally like, I want some cock. He says, Ming, my name is Flash Gordon. I'm a footballer from Earth. This is my friends Dale and Dr. Zarkov. (laughs) It's just, as I'm saying this out loud, it's just so funny, but brilliant at the same time. Ming hypnotizes Dale, and from what I can tell, he seems to give her an orgasm in front of absolutely everybody in the throne room, because she sort of goes, her eyes roll back in her head, and she looks like she's having a bit of a good time. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> and uh, she says, oh, what happened? And Flash says, oh, I don't know, but it, was spec- it looks spectacular. And... Uh, Ming says, right, prepare her for our pleasure. Take her off and prepare her, because I'm going to be getting some pleasure from her later. Can I, can I intervene with a really random fact about the cinematographer of this? Please, please do. Gilbert Taylor is one of the top British cinematographers and serious dairy farmer. Gilbert Taylor used to divide his time comfortably between the driving seat of a Panavision camera and the cockpit of a multi-horsepower <laughs> tractor. Is he the guy that worked on the Star Wars movies? Yeah, and Omen, yeah. Dracula. Yeah, it's pretty worked good. With Hitchcock, Polanski, and he got and he Stanley had some dairy. Kubrick. He had some dairy farmers on the go. And he's well. a farmer. Good for him. Multitask him. Yeah, sorry, I just <clears> had to. I just discovered this. Well, Flash decides it's time to fight, so he starts fighting everybody, and he uses his his football skills or his american football skills as we would say 
but so he starts tackling them he even does the 24 48 36 hut hut um they throw him a an object like a which is a bit like a football so that he can hold that and really get into the zone. You've yep. got Dale cheerleading going, go Flash, go Flash, go Flash, go! It's all very exciting, isn't it? It is very exciting. And actually, I remember as a kid how excited I was when she was doing that. But now it seems a bit meh. But I love this movie, so whatever, it happens. Um, Brian trips up one of the guys. Brian Blessed trips up one of the people that Flash is fighting. So he's kind of... You can tell that later on down the line, he's probably going to help out a little bit. Uh, and the Brian May guitar kicks in as well. Yeah. But Flash gets knocked out. And Aura says, Father, I want I want him. Yep. And he says, well, you can have him and then he'll have a public execution. Mm-hmm. Is that how it works in his family? I guess. All right, your new boyfriend, you can have him, and then we'll just execute him in front of everybody, okay? Great. So, cut to the prison, the dungeon. The Flash looks like a bit of a gimp from Hellraiser in this now. (laughs) He's strapped up with a big spiky mask on his head. And he's tied out, and he's going, you got to let me go, come on. Dale comes in, and she says, Flash, I want to see him. So they sort of make his hat his helmet disappear oh, and they have, she, she does not make his helmet disappear <laughs> she wants to they talk and they say look is this a dream and flash says well if this is a dream if this is a dream we're both having it and you can tell that there's a little bit there's actually a little bit of chemistry between them between yeah. the actors as well you know yeah. you can tell they're in this situation and they are kind of falling for each other even though they're in this crazy planet of mongo so later on, it's execution time, and Flash is told, wear these, wear these leather pants, like everyone else in the film. And he's in these tiny little leather shorts, Gav. We should do a Flash Gordon party sometime. Have you ever worn leather? No. Other than a leather jacket, have you ever worn like leather, anything below the waist? No, no. Nothing, nothing leather below my waist, ever. When I was 18 or 19... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Settle in, everyone. It's a bit of an anti-climax, but when I was about 18 or 19 and I had disposable income, my mum had one of those catalogues, you know, that you'd order clothes from and oh, you'd yeah. pay, it, pay it off in instalments. So I used to buy my new trainers. Pre-internet and, children. Yeah, pre-internet. pre-internet. And I gave my mum a list of things I wanted to order that month. And one of the things on that list was a pair of leather trousers. And uh, my mum said, right, I've ordered your stuff. I, I didn't order your leather trousers for you. I said, oh, what, mum? Come on. She said, Daniel, I'm not having you wear leather trousers. And then I told my then girlfriend, oh, God, I've ordered some new clothes. My mum wouldn't let me order leather trousers. She said, what the fuck? Why would you want leather trousers? And I said, because I thought it'd be cool. So I'd never got to have my leather trousers, Gav. <laughs> and I'm oh. glad. I'm very glad, though, because I can't imagine them being very comfortable. I, I just wish you'd be sending me photos. Uh, one day. I can I can buy some now and send you some photos now. I'm not the man I was. <laughs> I'm about twice the weight. don't have a six-pack. i just got a beer barrel. Anyway, Flash is in leather shorts. He's brought into the execution chamber. Dale is crying, of course. They sit him in the chair... And they gas, they gas him. They fill up the chamber with gas, and he's dead. And that's it. <laughs> Flash is dead. Flash is dead. Dead Flash. They even have a coffin and a tombstone for him. And Aura, Princess Aura, walks in. She basically wants him as a fuck toy. Yeah, she's basically tricked her father and the entire kingdom. They didn't give him a proper dosage. They injected she him with something. Flesh first. Gordon. And uh, she says, "Look." To the, because the doctor says, right, I've brought him back. And she says, good, good, you'll get your reward later. So she's even banging the doctor, you know, because she got him to bring Flash back. So she's banging the doctor. She wants to bang Flash. She's banging Timothy Dalton, we find out later on. And Clytus wants to bang her. She's banging everyone. Princess Aura. I'm just going to oh. quickly check out some pictures for Flesh Gordon. I've seen Flesh Gordon. 1974? It can't be. 
I've seen Flash Gordon. Yeah. Is it older than this, is it? 1974. Bloody hell. That's crazy, isn't it? Hmm. So, um, they, they bring him back to life. She sneaks him out and they take him to Prince Baron on the tree, in the treetop kingdom. And he meets, uh, the Robin Hood men. Um, and they sort of have, have a bit of a argument there. What were you going to say? No, I'm just, uh, just, it's just, um, I, I like this, but it's really such a random bit. This is the tree log a bit, is it? The, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a minute it is. Yeah, yeah. In a minute. Just before that though, we, um, we see Ming erasing Dr. Zarkov's mind. It's such a dark thing as a kid. I remember this being quite a traumatic thing for me. <clears throat> it's re- this scene, are you talking about the scene where they erase his mind, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, this scene is up there for me with the bit in Superman 3 where the girl turns into like a, an android girl. Because it is traumatic because you see him progress all the way back to being a baby and, and then shows... he goes back into his mum. Yeah. And it's like, oh, fuck, they've just erased his entire memory. Yeah. Uh, and there's a funny moment, actually, where they're going through it all, and some glimpses of Adolf Hitler pop up on screen, and Ming says, hmm, he seems quite noticeable. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's interesting. So they've erased his mind, and they're going to reprogram him to work for Ming, because he's very brainy, very intelligent genius from Earth. My next line, my next note says... Sexy driving lessons for Flash. They're very sexy driving lessons, aren't they? Because they're driving along, him and Princess Aura. She's whisking him off to the treetop kingdom. She's. Does she say say that she has a Jeffrey Epstein island that she's taking him to? Basically, she says, I've got a love island, like a pleasure island, she calls it, doesn't she? Yeah, fucking Jeffrey Epstein's island. Yeah, and she says, we're going to go there, and we're going to, you know, pleasure. She sits on his lap, um, and she she talks. She says to him, "Oh, there's a device you can use to talk to people without speaking. I'll show you this in a moment." Um, cut back to Dale. She's in the bedroom waiting for Ming to come in, and one of the slave girls says, "Oh, you need to drink this pleasure drink. Trust me, it helps if you're going to be making love to Ming." How? How terrible is that? What does it help me forget? She says, it doesn't help me forget, but it makes it harder to remember. No, mate, um, yeah. Wow. You sort of what, don't what care so much. What's he got down there? It's not that. It's just the fact that it's a, such a horrible thing. They're all like, no, like, it's like, ugh, no, no, because nobody wants to bang him. Look at him. So cut back to Aura in her sexy rocket with Flash, and she uses her thought phone... That's what I'm going to call it. This is why Elon Musk's coming out of now. <laughs> a thought phone. Yeah. And, she, and she contacts Prince Baron. And Flash says, could I use this to speak to Dale? And she says, you could, but I'm not going to show you how. And he's like, well, and then I'm not going to do anything unless you don't do it. So he contacts, this is quite comical, this. He contacts um, Dale and he says, uh, you know, oh, don't worry, I'm still alive. Um, what's happening with you? And she's like, oh, I'm going to have to have sex with Ming in a minute. And he says, okay, well, look, I'm going to try and rescue you. I'm with Princess Aura at the moment. But like I said, I'm, I am alive. That's the main thing. I'm going to figure out a way to get back to you. Man, this girl's really turning me on. <laughs> because while he's on the phone to her, Aura's like feeling him up and really like grinding on his lap. <laughs> and he just he just thinks, man, this girl's really turning me on. And she goes, what? Flash? And he's like, oh, sorry, that's somebody else I'm talking about. Oh, no, I mean, um, uh, anyway, I've got to go now. It's bad signal. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the equivalent to accidentally texting the wrong person. Yeah. Whoop, whoopsie, Flash. Naughty. But yeah, she's really, really feeling him up. And she's locked in Ming's bedroom. And, uh, oh yeah, Dale says to one of the slaves, hey, maybe you should try this potion. She says, oh, it's not, it's not permitted. It's forbidden. And she's like, oh, come on, just try one bit of it. She drinks it and it knocks her out so that she can escape later on. So she's, she's quite a badass in this, isn't she? She does some good martial arts in a minute. Well, I say good. She does some martial arts in a minute. Um, Zarkov is now a baddie and he's ready to serve Ming (laughs) this must be intentional now as Princess Aura lands on the treetop kingdom dropping her flaps yep 
You've written the same thing as me. Well, you, 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 any movie is going to have drop your flats in it, and there could be a note in my uh, note. <laughs> So she says, "Drop my flaps," and they land. And but it, it, they say they're off to off off to see whoever it is, whatever. And it's six point five away. And I was like, it's six point five what? Just six point five. Is everything registered just with numbers? But that's what, it. What, Gav, what time is it? Two point seven. <laughs> what? How far away are you it's now? Six point five six. away. Six point five. Okay. Um. So Dale escapes from the bedroom and she beats up a guard. She grabs a ray gun and she yep. ends up taking out about a dozen guards. Kicks ass. Just using some gymnastics and a ray gun. Kicking ass for the Lord. And she and don't forget, she's a travel agent. Yeah. Fucking hell, what kind of travel agent is she? This movie very much has a big trouble in little China Star Wars vibe. Ooh, it has got a bit of a big trouble in little China, hasn't it? Oh, it's, it's big trouble in China all over this. All over, baby. Absolutely, John, John Carpenter was watching Flash Gordon and went, yeah, for the look of Big Trouble in Little China bit. Oh, this. of course, of course. Now it all makes sense. Especially the end, when you're in Lopan's palace. Yeah, yeah, totally. With all the colours and neons and everything. Yeah, yeah, man. Why have I not seen that before? Nice one. Hmm. Um, so Zarkov uh, actually... Um, takes gra- grabs aura and t- um sorry dale and takes her off and they find out that the and traitor was aura kurt russell was to be flash gordon possibly oh, there we go there we so, go yeah. it's like the alternative kurt, uh, flash gordon so clytus and ming and zarkov all figure out that aura was the one that was the traitor and is the one that's helping flash and even though it's his daughter ming's like yeah we're gonna kill her don't worry about it she shouldn't have tri- betrayed me so in the jungle village, uh, Flash and Aura meet the uh, the tree men, and uh, this is very weird. As we approach these this group of men, all you hear is like a, a rhythmic thumping sound, and they're all going ah 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 ah, and you think, are they having group masturbation? What what is happening? And when they get there, they realise that it's they're all cool banging. Trees here as well. What are they banging? Banging big sticks. Oh, uh, and Richard O'Brien is there. With his and, little flute. And the Blue Peter dude. And the Blue Peter dude. And there's a game that they play where they put their hand in an old tree stump. And there's a very deadly creature that lives in there. And it's a rite of passage. If you are brave enough to put your hand in there um, and you can pull your hand out and you haven't been bitten, then you're considered a man. You're considered a warrior. However, if it bites you, you're going to go mad and die, so they just kill kill you with a sword. M- Ming's daughter's in there, isn't she, with with uh, Timothy Dalton? Yeah, because he, he gives her a big kiss, <laughs> and he's like, oh... She, she, she's around everyone, isn't she? He's in love with her. She She's banging everyone. Yeah, he's in love with her. Um, they cannot believe that Flash Gordon's alive. Gordon's, Gordon's alive! alive. Cut back to Dr. Zarkov, and he says to Dale, Hey, I've got something to tell you. I haven't had my memory erased. I held on to pop music and rock music and all the memories I could. So the the, uh, the memory eraser didn't work on me because I'm just a genius, Dale. I'm a genius. Yeah, you weren't sure or not if he was actually like going to go. And I couldn't remember because I always thought he was a baddie. But I think I'm thinking of the dude who was in that... Uh, the black hole. Black hole. Oh yeah, God. It's a bad guy. That like Disney that. movie. Like, yeah, really, really the movie which makes you off and go. Oh, as a child, yeah. like, I don't feel the happy one, at all. The one Disney film that made me want to go end like, it. <laughs> oh, like, oh God, that's horrible. That's not no pleasure at all. Yeah. Well, Zarkov and Dale jump on a hover bike, <laughs> and they're gonna they're gonna fly off together now. Cut back to Treetop Kingdom. Flash, Flash. Is, Flash is gonna try a passage. Well, he's in a. First of all, he's in a cage. Oh yeah. He's lowered into the swamp by Timothy Dalton with um, some other prisoners, and they're basically going to leave him there overnight. Um, and he's yeah, he's a prisoner, probably going to die. And uh, Aura is brought back to her father, and she's whipped. Her whipped father. Into shape. Her father commands people to whip his daughter to get the confession out of her. Well, and, well. 
Well, they sort of say earlier, like, you know, we're going to find out who's the traitor, my lord. Shall we, we, we do it to anybody, whoever it is, full, like, whippage. And he's like, yeah, whoever it is, do it without really, I think, thinking that his daughter would be the one who is the traitor. But Clytus knows it was her. And he's oh, like, yeah, and he's playing he's to well that up great. So like, are you saying that her. I can really fucking whip the shit out of them, whoever it is, yeah? <laughs> he's a kingy Fuck bastard. Yeah! You know, yeah. <laughs> um, he says, bring me the boar worms, which I'm guessing are some kind of a worm that bores its way into your brain. <sighs> Ming comes in, and he says, ah. And she's like, father, father, I've been tortured. And he's like, Continue the torture. He just walks off. He really is merciless, Gav. Well, that's really where he gets his name from, I suppose. He really is merciless. Um, Richard O'Brien plays the flute in a little scene now. It's, it's such a... It's such a... Not that, but naming the merciless. It's such a unique sort of thing for certain only certain situations. That's a perfect example where he goes, Ah, fuck it, carry on, it's my daughter. I've got no mercy on this. I'm Ming the Merciless. Not often that comes into play. I'm down Tesco shopping. <laughs> and I, I'm going to quickly grab those potatoes, the last ones, and you're not going to get them. And there's an old lady. I'm she's Ming working the away. She's working her way towards the last potatoes on the shelf, Gav, this old lady. She wants to make some mashed potatoes for her husband. Well. And you just take them and you look at her and go, they're mine. Ming the it's potato. Like, na- and then, na- and then Jessica, Jessica, the checkout girl, sees you do it. And she goes, oh, that Gav's merciless, isn't he? He took Vera's, Vera's last potato. I, I suppose that does still work with the merciless, but not all he's the time, merciless. though. What if he's like just angry? Ming the angry. He shouts at someone. Oh, he was angry. Ming the he's Yeah, it's not Ming angry, though. It's Ming the merciless. But what if he's eating, he was uh, just angry. What if he's eating too much cheese and the next day he's Ming the constipated? What? But then if you have to throw him all in there, Ming the merciless was angry. You're throwing in too much stuff then. It's too complicated. Dunno. Hmm. Well, during this flute playing scene... Ming the and constipated? It's, yeah. It's not a flesh flute that Richard O'Brien's playing, but he's playing a flute. And this is where he convinces Timothy Dalton, look, I do think you should probably save Flash Gordon. She's... Oh. Gordon's for some lie. reason, for some reason, a bold man with a flute always guides me in the right direction. So I I'm bet bold to... men with fly, flutes have guided you in the right direction. Was that when you were <laughs> little and they had puppies in whoa, their hands? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Stranger, danger. Um, Ming says, back at Ming's palace, he says, look, I think the best thing to do is um, you marry, uh, I'll banish her to the ice cave on another planet for one year. I'm not going to kill her. I'm going to do worse. I'm going to banish her to an ice cave. A Spanish and then, her, I thought you said. Not Spanish, banish her. I'm going to Spanish her. Ooh. And if she, if she survives one year in the ice caves of wherever it is, then you can have her and marry her as Zarkov. And he's like, yes! yes! He's oh, I hope she survives. Happy. Zarkov and Dale, um, they get approached by the Hawkmen. And they get taken down to Brian Blessed's nappy planet. Men in diapers, or nappies. And, uh... What do they all get up to? Who does the laundry? Brian. Do laundry, Brian! You've got skid marks again! I can't get your skid marks out! Come on! <laughs> and this is the favourite scene ever. He says to them, uh... They basically say to them, look, Flash Gordon's alive. And he says, what does he say, Gav? Gordon's alive! brilliant and they say all right we think we might help you in that case um so dale and zarkov are persuading the hawk men and flash is persuading the treetop men um but first of all the tree men say to flash prince baron says i'll tell you what let's play the wood beast game best of three okay so they put their hands in the uh in the hole Mm. right up to the elbow (laughs) right in there and Flash hasn't been bitten. And we get to the third go. Yeah, because the uh, two dogs are like, no, I've changed the rules. You're going to go again. Yeah. Like, and what? And then he's like, and again. Like, this is blatantly unfair now, isn't it? But Flash being the clever, well, not so clever, but clever man that he is, he pretends to be bitten by the creature. And they say, right, well, we're going to have to kill you now because it, the agony is just terrible. And he says, Ugh! And then he grabs a sword. Earlier, we saw what happens. Yeah, 
but he grabs a sword, he fights them off, and he swings away like Tarzan on a vine. <laughs> Baron chases him, and of course, Gav, it's the 80s. What happens in every 80s movie? Flash Gordon falls into quicksand. Yeah, it, 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 basically, he would have died here if Timothy Dalton hadn't helped him. That would have been the end of the movie. Now, there's a bit here that I forgot about, because he, he gets out of the quicksand, but then a giant fucking crab creature... I forgot all about this horrible crab that sort of... It's like a big inflatable Upside bladder around thing. him. Yeah, it's yeah. to swallow him, which is just gnarly, yeah. Thank God, though, that Timothy Dalton um, saves him. Um, he kills the creature. Um, and the Hawkmen, they stop... Baron from uh, shooting Flash because they're like, no, no, no. We think we uh, we think he can help. We can all take down Ming. And they start w- realizing that they can bring down this merciless Ming uh, if they all stand together. It's great, great stuff. Yep. Clytus is informed of everyone's whereabouts, and now so now the baddies know where the goodies are, but the goodies obviously know where the baddies are. Uh, Baron tells Volton about something called trial by combat, not mortal combat, trial by combat. And he says, I want to fight Flash. So Baron still wants to fight Flash at this point. Um, Dale sees Flash and they have a big hug and a kiss and then they have a big fight then. And it's a bit like the Gladiators, the popular 90s uh, US and UK TV show, because they're on a big platform now that's controlled by Brian Blessed's remote control. And he's got all these buttons he can press to tilt the, the, the arena or make spikes come out. <laughs> he's just laughing away. Oh, this is great. Um, he gives them a whip each. Of all the things to fight another man, a whip, Gav. It's all a bit kinky. Whip each other, you bitches! <laughs> I would love to hear Brian Blessed say that. <laughs> if you ever meet him, get him to say that line. Well, I could have done. I, could, I reckon uh, I'm going to give him 20 quid here to say it. I know it wasn't in any of the scripts, Brian. Could I you should, just record? I should, I should have got an audio for the podcast. Could you just say, whip, whip each other, you bitches? Yes, of course. Brilliant. We've been good. <laughs> uh, Brian, yeah, so Brian's laughing away. Um, and this is where Dale shouts the famous Flash, I love you, but we only have 14 hours to save the Earth. Basically saying, hurry the fuck up, Flash, and get this over with, because yeah. we've only got 14 hours left. Um, Baron falls, but Flash saves him. They sh- they shake hands, and this is where the team-up really happens. Clytus arrives, though, and everyone's in trouble now. There's another fight, and Clytus gets thrown onto the spikes, and for some godly unknown reason, his eyeballs pop out of his mask. Don't know why. That disturbed me as a child. I didn't understand why that was happening. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah, strange film. Yeah. I think I feel like they just got the effect, and they were like, "Where can we fit this in?" As, as a child, it was a strange film to watch. It's just like, what, what am I watching? I don't understand. Now the Hawkmen do chicken out if you pardon the pun at this point and say we're flying off we're going to save ourselves and you think oh wow but don't worry they are going to come back later at the last moment and help save everybody um ming arrives in yet another costume this guy's got more costume changes than beyonce (laughs) every scene he's in a different robe you know but he's a right diva he is isn't he all right which one do you want to wear next ming oh the gold one of course this is my execution outfit this is my whipping my daughter outfit, please. Thank you very much. Um, Ming the Merciless, what a fantastic bad guy. Yeah. Who would you rather um, go for a drink with down the pub, Ming the Merciless or Skeletor? Ming the Merciless. Wow. Huh. Any reason? I think it'd be quite cool. I think people would look over and go like, look, Gav's with Ming the Merciless. Yeah, you know, I'd obviously go with Skeletor. I'd be on the next table to you with Skeletor, but and we'd be he, we'd be laughing at you too. No, but he's sitting there just the way he is, and Skeletor's just like, yeah. Speaks. To be honest, he would just be bitching to me about He Man the whole time. Me and Mercer would be sitting there and go, Gav, I'm bored, and I'll be like, Do you want to play cards, darts? There's a quiz machine over there. Go and put a pound in it. Instead of cards, I'm bored. Gav, I'm bored. Find me something to play with. Darts? (laughs) 
Dominoes? What's Just Dominoes? Pork scratchings. I'd love to see that. This is like a scene I'd love to see. You going, oh, for God's sake, this guy, nothing pleases him. Oh, drafts? Oh, can I, guys, can we have the drafts. Scrabble board when you're done? Because this yeah, guy wants we to... have it next, please? And I'll put a pound on the pool table. Oh, Ming, there's a giant Jenga over there. Come on. I'm <laughs> Tick- bored. Stop saying you're bored. It's giant Jenga. How can you be bored? Eat your fucking pork scratchings, you cunt. So he's impressed with Flash at this point, and he says, look, here's what I'll do. I'm going to rule the entire universe, but I'll let you be the king of Mongo, because I think you're pretty cool. You've, you've done well to get this far. Uh, you all right with that? Flash says, no. No, thank you. So uh, they manage to leave uh, with Dale, um, Bing, Ming does, and they shoot at Flash, and he manages to escape on like a sky bike hover sledge thing. He does, he does, yeah. It's a famous scene, we've all he, seen that. He teams up with the Hawkmen now. Yeah, they regret not Dive. helping. Uh, Flash calls Volton on the radio, and Volton says, okay, we're going to help you. Um, meanwhile, Dale, just like in Big Trouble, now you've said it, I'm seeing it, Dale's getting ready for her wedding against her will, isn't she? Yeah. Just like uh, Kim Cattrall. Yeah. God, why did I never made this comparison? Um, Dale and Aura, they have a big fight in a big bed. This one was written by blokes, this scene. Get the two hot women to fight each other in a bed. I remember I was with Sarah watching it, and I think I did comment, why does she need to be there? There's, there's no reason, really, is there? You know. Just two women fighting in a bed. Yeah. Uh, but they end up realising that they can help each other because Ming is going to kill his daughter. So Dale says, look, come with us, help us Ming against your minger. father. Ming the Minger. Um, Aura gives Dale some poison and says, um, my father likes to drink a power potion before he makes love. So he's given you a drink and he's taken one himself as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Bit right hypno. Um, but Dale says, look, I can't, I can't do it. Um, I gave him my word that I'd marry him. What? Fucking hell. He's making you drink a power potion. He's drinking a power potion. He's making you drink a rape potion. He's got Bill Cosby's drink he's given you. To Bill drink. Cosby's drink of choice. Come on now, Flash Garden. Skip it up. He'll save every one of us. Skip it up. Sarah won't, let me do, Sarah won't let me do impressions on our podcast. Skip it up. Welcome to the Cosby Show. Eat your pudding. Um, so we know that this shit's about to go down now because Freddie Mercury bellows out. Flash. Ah, do, 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 do. And this is where we get the whole... Fl- uh, you know, Flash Gordon's approaching. What do you mean, Flash Gordon's approaching? Open fire! And the lasers are firing, and the Hawkmen back him up in the sky. And this is the bit Matthew was talking about with the guitar kicks in. That guitar is incredible, little guitar lick. And Brian Blessed says, Dive, my Hawkmen, dive! And they all dive down. Some of them are killed. There's lasers firing. We get practical fights and stunts. Brian Blessed's kicking ass. Die, he says, die! He's killing people. You ask what you want, you want to hear. I want to hear him say, Whip it, you bitches! Whip it, well. bitches! <laughs> Suck my nappy! Um, Flash joins them in the fight. And Brian Blessed, I've written, I've written here, Brian Bre- Blessed looks deranged in this scene because he's just, it's like he thinks he's in a real battle. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. And this is the bit, apparently, where he kept going, pew, pew, and they had to keep cutting because he kept saying pew, pew so much. Hilarious. Pew, pew, pew. And, <laughs> Ming is losing the fight. So uh, the wedding starts, and he says, to, to begin my wedding... Uh, I like to begin all my weddings the same way, with the execution of uh, Prince Baron and Dr. Zarkov, please. That's how we start all of, all of our weddings on this planet. Uh, Aura manages to save them from jail, though. And at this point, Gav, they've now only got three minutes to save the Earth. Yeah, they do. It, time has ticked away. And we get um, 
the wedding march but this time it's played by brian may isn't it imagine if i'd have had brian may playing that at my wedding been weird and Brian Blessed as the person who married me and Alice. Do you, Dan, take Alice to be your whipping bitch? <laughs> um, so, yeah, three minutes to save the earth. Brian May, wedding anthem. Flash uh, is basically in a kamikaze, the rocket that he's flying into Ming's palace. He's willing to die for this. Yep. Because he's a hero and he'll save every one of us. Um, Prince Baron and Dr. Zarkov team up and they storm the headquarters of the palace. They take control. They kill the General Karal, the lady. Um, and Dr. Zarkov deactivates the lightning field. So basically the force field around the palace. The wedding vows begin though. But just as they're getting into the nitty gritty of the wedding vows, um, Flash flies the ship into the palace and the spike on the front of the ship javelins straight through me. Uh, straight, straight through the torso and uh, he dies he vanishes his power ring falls off of his finger to the floor everyone's happy and celebrating and then the weird flashing orb thing with a fisheye lens says long live Flash Gordon Flash Gordon does a weird freeze frame jump they didn't know how to finish the movie so he came up with the idea and says I'll just jump at the camera and say yeah and then the what, epilogue really? you couldn't think of how to end the movie and then the, what I said to you a lot of this movie was um, improvised Just random mm, cocaine yep. uh, and then the epilogue is thank you Flash uh, we'll, we'll, we'll name this day Flash Gordon Day I hope you have a good day literally says that uh, and the planet and all the kingdoms unite and then at the very end somebody grabs Ming the Merciless's ring. Is it Ming? Is it Clytus? Is it Aura? We don't know because they never made part two or part three. No. I, but I, what? Did this do well in the cinema? I think it did. Uh, I think it did very it's well, yeah. Random, isn't it? Random film. But um, then the end credits play it with Queen over the top of them, which is just phenomenal. I'll tell you what, how it did, Gav. So the budget on this was an estimated twenty million dollars. Yeah, mm. we're opening weekend four million worldwide gross, and sadly it was just twenty seven million. Yeah, I'm looking now. Yeah, oh, that's not good. No, uh, so it made money. It made its money back, but well, that's why they didn't green light two or three. Yeah, but <clears throat> depends. It's not though. good enough, is it? They probably haven't included in the budget like the uh, marketing costs. But listen, one thing you can say about this movie is you always have a good time. Whether you turn it over and it's halfway through or you only watch 20 minutes of it, everybody knows this movie inside out. And I've got to give a shout out to Ricky Morgan and RJ McCready when I'm reviewing this movie because it's... The, those are two of the biggest fans of it I've ever met in my life and obviously Matthew is as well and if somebody tells you that they don't like Flash Gordon I wouldn't trust them if it's somebody over the age of 30 says to you yeah, I, either I've never seen it or I don't like it don't trust that person really? yeah that's what I would say fair enough same person that says I don't like animals dogs yeah, or cats dogs. hate them yeah, yeah. strange but listen it's a great movie it's fun it's campy as hell it kind of affected me as a kid in that it's ingrained in my psyche the music some of the weird visuals with the the tree beasts and the eyes popping out yeah some weird stuff and it's it's very colourful and just fantas fantastic 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 but it's definitely a thumbs up from me I'll give it a thumbs up if you haven't seen it because it's just fucking it's just out there isn't it and it's a bit of a tradition really you know, yeah. I, I, I don't think I watched it this Christmas because I knew I was reviewing it but um, if it's on I always watch it at Christmas whenever it's on and now I own it digitally I've got no excuse really no so there we go uh, Matthew Godley thank you for picking Dead Man's Shoes and Flash Gordon Flash. the highs and lows of cinema 
uh, and I don't mean lows as in it's crap I'm, it's just mean it's emotionally battering the other movie but this movie it will lift your spirits make them soar like Brian Blesses nappy uh-huh. overhead my whipping bitches so there we go well let's uh, have a little break take our leather nappies off and come back to do the outro God's life this leather nappy isn't coming off uh. And we're back. And we're back again. So that was our patron pick. First episode of the year as well. Um, and an excuse to get out the time machine. Thank you again to our patron, Matthew Godley. I need to take the crown back from you now. So, oh, it was on tight. Um, and we'll put that back in its glass case, ready for the next patron in a few episodes time. But hope you enjoyed that, Matthew. Thank you again for suggesting this. Thank you very uh, much. That was your round two. Round I love two. to talk about Dead Man's Shoes. Yeah, Dead Man's Shoes, incredible film. Flash Gordon, just um, essential viewing, really, uh, at some point in your life. Two very good films for two very different reasons. Well, that was that. Should we talk about what's coming up next? What is next? Well, I know what's next. It's Gab. It's your b- 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 birthday, it's birthday episode. Yes. So you've chosen a William Friedkin movie that I've never seen mm. called Sorcerer yeah. from 1977. And I've only seen it once. Um, so, yeah. A bunch of guys have to transport nitroglycerin across a treacherous landscape. Is that correct? Yeah. Very tense. Uh, it sounds very 70s. So I look forward to watching that. Well, you know there's no special effects going on. That's yeah. That's the beauty of it. But Friedkin is a director I'm a fan of, so I'm hoping to see some tension and... Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, and you've paired that up with... Uh, something uh, light-hearted to go with it. And very modern, really, compared yeah. to the other. From 2022, Studio 666, starring the Foo Fighters themselves. Again, only seen the once, saw it in a cinema, I've... but really enjoyed it as like an 80s horror movie, and it knows what it is. And I was so shocked by like Dave Grohl, how good he was in it. No, I wasn't shocked by that, actually, because he's quite a, got a good person, persona like that. But um, yeah. And I've not seen that one either. So next episode, I'm a double virgin. Mm hmm as they say so that's episode 148 who, Gav's who birthday says, who says they're double virgins you you just said they say I want to know who they are uh, Ming and Flash they're double virgins yeah no I'm a double virgin because I haven't seen either of the films but you said they say and I want to know who they are I don't know let's move on so uh, that was episode 148 and then the, after that for episode 149, that'll be our first director special of the year. We're going to be trying to do a few of these. And we're going to be taking a look at Adam Green and his back catalogue, as they say. And for him, we will be specifically covering Frozen from 2010, not the Disney animated musical. Uh, and we'll also be covering Digging Up the Marrow. Mm from 2014 which I'm a big fan of both of those um, I've only seen Digging Up the Marrow once and I really enjoyed it so I'm looking forward to going back and doing that one again after that I'm very excited to announce our next patron pick for a whopping episode 150 that's a nice round number isn't it yeah totally and what better than uh, our buddy RJ McCready it's his patron pick and he has selected and this is exciting a couple of London gangster flicks. I know, that's a really interesting choice. He selected The Long Good Friday with Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. I've only seen it once, but I remember enjoying it. 1980. Good stuff. And he's paired that up with... Both both East End films as well, East End of London. The classic 1998 Guy Ritchie directed Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Holy shit. Fantastic film. Fucking hell, RJ. Those are a couple of whoppers to talk about there. So, yeah, some exciting stuff coming up for the next three episodes. It's a good year. It's a good year. It's our 10th year. We've got to keep them rolling. Yep. So that's where we're at for the next three episodes, Gav. Cool. Anything you want to say before I hit the admin button? No, you get on with it, son. 
Oh, oh, that's such a, he's getting his stand already, guys. He's getting his stand already. Um, so, as always, as, as we have been for the last 10 years now, we're the podcast on Haunted Hill. Thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for your support. Um, we are a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. You can find out more about the Legion Podcast on legionpodcast.com. Uh, all of our episodes are on there, as are all the other shows on the network's episodes. Uh, we have a Facebook page, which is the podcast on Haunted Hill. Uh, you can message us directly you can post what you're watching what you are looking forward to um you can just gifts memes and all the other nonsense it's a really good community of people um it's been around for 10 years now and we absolutely love everybody on there some really good friends we've made on there over the years um legion also has a facebook page uh, as it sounds sounds just legion podcast you can find that and similarly a really good group of people on there and all the other podcasts post on there as well um we're available wherever you're listening to us now uh, but also places like spotify youtube Podknife, apple and a bunch of other podcast platforms uh, we're on Instagram the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta which is where I will generally promote the show with a link to the episode and a little collage of the posters and our logo um, and we mentioned it earlier but uh, Star Wars Sanctuary Moon is currently on YouTube and doing really well with views um, it's our horror star wars horror short film that we made recently through our production company which is Deadbolt Films go yeah. to deadboltfilms.com to find out more about what we do um whether it's podcasting short films features uh, comics it's all on there um and you can support us if you go to deadbotfilms.com or if you go to our youtube channel which is deadbot films on youtube and we're on instagram just under deadbot films and finally um the topic of this episode is patreon uh, we we have Patreon, and if you wish to support us in a monetary fashion, for as little as a pound or a dollar a month, or as much as you'd like, we won't say no. Don't have to do it, though. We would always do this show even if no one did that. But it does help to support the show, keep the show going, buy uh, movies, rent movies. Um, and if you become a patron, not only do you get a patron pick like Matthew had for this episode, every three episodes somebody gets a patron pick where you get to pick the two episodes but you also get a t-shirt not the two episodes you get to pick the two films the two films i do apologize uh, you also get a t-shirt and you get access to exclusive content and all of Dan's our Dan's nudie pics nudie yeah my nudie pics and you get all of our back catalogue as well which is also my nudie pics <laughs> hey uh so if you want to become a patron just go to patron P- search. pictures of dan's back catalogue don't no one wants to see that um so just go to patreon search for the podcast on haunted hill if you can't find it then you can uh, message me on facebook or you can use our email which is the podcast on haunted hill at outlook.com and you can message outlook.com. I, I always forget and i never want to say what it is outlook.com outlook.com yeah and as always we're going to shout out each of our um patrons now uh, in the style of Brian Blessed. So, thank you very much to John Coldwater, Jamie Jenkins, Kevin S. His wife is alive. That's the way he did the Hannibal Lecter. Sarah Curry. Rachel, ha, fly my bird, men fly. Ah, oh, Jay McCready. Your mouth will actually look like his just then. And Lex Boo. Because he's got the big beard. A great big bushy beard. A great big bushy beard. Thank you to all of our patrons for your support. Thank you so much. In a normal um, voice, thank you. We hope you're all excited to hit up your rang two of your patron picks over the coming year. I know, very exciting. Um, I'm I can't already... wait to get some uh, my peepers on what you think we our peepers should be peeping at. I am already in talks with the patron who comes after Andre already. And that Straight in there. Person is already. Daniel. That's me. That's me. So there we go, guys. That was a fantastic, fun start to 2024. What better way to do it than with the patron's pick? But we've got Gav's birthday coming up. We've got some Adam Green. And we've got some uh, London, East End London gangsters coming up. So stay tuned over the next few months. We've got lots of good stuff coming up. Thank you, as always, to everybody for listening, supporting, sharing, liking, being a patron, being a 
friend and thank you to gav as always for joining me on this journey for 10 years of nonsense that we've been doing it's fantastic yes. i love it um well i and, think it's time to say through ai we could probably go for another ten thousand years because it just oh, be yeah, why not? our voices for us that'd be brilliant we'll be reviewing um insidious 25 we've done absolutely you don't i can't remember what is it might be like 300 words or something like that is all it needs i think to be able to replicate crazy and ridiculous and scary Mm. well in that case it's time to say a good night so it's a good night from brian blessed's leather nappy uh it's a good night from me and it's a good night from tough in a suitcase give him a little kiss go on yeah it's, it's a good night from that elephant at the window oh, there's a fucking elephant at the window and of course it's a good night from timothy dalton up to his elbows in your wooden hole Ooh. so good night gav good night take care and remember if you find a brian leather nappy brian blessed, brian blessed might be under your bed I'm you alive! You lucky bed. things. You lucky things. Oh. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.